are going live. All right, hello everybody. I think this should be live now. So it's Fight Club finals time. Unbanned versus SBT. So many excellent players here. I'm here with Axwell, my second TO. Hello, hello everyone. And I'm here with John Alder also, who is going to be commentating with me for the first round. I think Axwell had some something to say before we start. I, I, I don't know if I have anything really special, but I just wanted to say every, hello for everyone and thank all, all players and everyone who has been following us this spring. Uh, as you, some of you might know, we did a, quite a big revision for the Fight Club format this year. The old one was great and this one was different kind of great. Uh, we This ended up getting way out of hand because we had 29 <laughs> teams and 119 players uh, all over the world uh, vying for the crown and chance to play in the finals and now we have are down to the top two teams and the deck lists have been open for one for this week so everybody has been able to uh, study them and the players have been able to practice the matchup so we should get really high level netrunner today now, i will be mainly uh doing the to judging uh, duty on the table so axu will be hosting the stream over here uh, good luck have fun everybody and always be ruffling <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be leaving for the finals table now. Uh, actually, you will join on the stream yep. uh, to, to the game once you're ready over here. Cool. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Alex. I cannot agree more. So, you hyped in general? Very much so. Thanks for having me. Fans re may remember me from such hits as last week's AMT. The ever um, popular. Yep. Or uh, getting absolutely wrecked by Lost Geek on Restoring Humanity. But I think that was on Bars. Oh, the last, la the last turn was so mean on that one. That's Lost Geek making it this far. So you cannot really be sad for, for losing uh, against him. For sure. I mean, both of these teams are you know, high prestige, very good players. You'd expect to see them in the finals. Yeah, basically. I think at least I had this pairing exactly like as my pick for the final table. Yeah. Who are we seeing round one? Uh, I think it's going to be Cable Currents versus Seat. And Cable Currents is corping first, so we will see, I believe, Ag Infusion against Loop. This Glacier deck again. Oh, it's not the gl typical Glacier list. It's with punitive Counter-Strike and Hollow Man. Yeah, I think it's... Well... I would say it's feeding off the uh, expectations of a soccer Glacier oh. Ag, but then again, with open deck lists and a week to prepare, as Zach said. So... Yeah, you cannot really get those free punitive kills out of archives anymore, if people actually know it's coming. Nobody equally if you can make it hard for Lou to run anywhere else. I guess it's slightly different to uh, playing against Mulch, where you might want to uh, yeah. use Hashiko to flip and get some value there, whereas Lou, they're quite happy not running archives if they've got nothing else to do. Yeah, I think Lope is going to just try to set up running those easy central servers, or at least uh, try to... It's online, but it's oh, in the casual cool. tab, is what uh, oh. I'm going to say. Yep, there it is. And I think we're ready to go for the first first match. And I think neither play. taking a mulligan. And Cable Current just keeping their hand. And uh, and we start. We are. So, do do you have a feeling? Oh, again, I have to mute the window. <laughs> so, do you feel Always like we're getting the punitive ever elusive punitive kill, or will I be able to deal with that threat? I know Jat has been putting in uh, a lot of. Uh, a lot of testing on this list, so I'd expect 
him not to be rash and run archives with no reason. Yeah. Um, the keep from Cable. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So we see a, a Spin Doctor first turn being run immediately by Lou. Yeah, Looplet's setting up decently. Do you really want to see that cookbook turn one coming down? Yeah, it's a great turn one from Lou. Yeah, you have get your econ build up, building up before Again Fusion actually gets a chance to build a threatening remote. Boomerang? Oh, we're just going in there. Oh, but that that's the eyes you kind of don't want to see here. I don't think you're too sad about seeing Vampire and Asa. It's, uh, you, know, you can break the relevant subs with Boomerang, lose two, let the runner have a discount for two, uh, let the mm. corp have two. Oh, back. yeah, you cannot even lose all of your credits because you just have one one remaining. And it's better than seeing an Anansi Oh, yeah, Anansi would probably be pretty sad. Yeah, you basically can eat two damage and still be ahead of Anansi here. So it looks like Ziat's deciding on the subroutines to break still. Yeah, it's it's a choice. You still have like two subroutines that you need to let fire, so do you let Corporation gain credits or draw cards? Yeah, with Cable on three credits, it might be a consideration just to mm. let him fill his hand up. Yeah, and as somebody said, said in chat, you cannot actually lose the two credits because you might not be able to trust the Rashida that's behind here. Yeah, we're seeing uh, a rerun might have been... Um, yeah, just maybe clicking yeah, on a different thing. Yeah, hasty and clicked the wrong subs. Oh, breaking both of credit gains subroutines. Okay. And <laughs> double strife. <laughs> Yeah, it takes care of Rashid. And yeah, interesting, like the credit subroutine fires before the net damage. So if if Xiat would have gone with the high roller, you can basically lose like one credit and t just take the damage. But I think this is a safer line here. And just thinking about the last click. Double strike button certainly feels good. Um, I wonder if, with no trashes and no solidarity badge on the board, you imagine Ziat's looking to refill the hand. Yeah, yeah you just got to get those draw. draws up. But Cable has like full hand of fires here, so we can maybe get the Econ bounce back. Although the list is missing YDLs. Which is the way typically this like restoring humanity version at least got their credit totals back at some point. Yeah, just installing, <laughs> building another threat on the server too. Could be another Rashida, or maybe a, at least like Charlotte. That's the new typical Chintaki threat. Mm. Needs the needs There's the one, one advancement copy. counter. Mm. There is one copy of your d digital life. Oh, there set. is. As you say, it's, yeah, it's the well, other copies have been swapped out for Hollow Man. you just hold the one copy for the punitive combo, basically. You kind of have to. Yeah. Or pray you see it off the uh, bacterial for mm. feeding the runner from archives. Yeah, pricing into... You're seeing another boomerang, boomerang? yeah. But oh, other, another choice is the bus, so, but I think this is decent, decent choice. Boomerang. Yeah, the price giving the price moshing boomerang and buzzsaw, so... Yeah, you doesn't I mean, find a was... knob, knob Kree, which is the like main thing you want to find, but yeah, I think you Buzzsaw, even after being installed with a discount, is what five to break Vampire and Asta. Yeah, it's you not... basically cannot break Vampire and Asta even with it. And going HQ this time, okay, spreading around the accesses, spreading yeah. the pressure, making cable kind of rest eyes, oh, <laughs> but hits the unlucky tribunal. Speaking of ice, here is tributary. Yeah, this is going to be so costly during the game. This is going to fire so many times. But it's firing and Cable isn't installing any ice, which suggests nothing in hand. Yeah, could be. I wonder if we'll see a second run here. 
So yeah, Can you let the corporation the just, just draw those cards for free, though? True, true. Yeah. It's a hard, really hard decision. But at least manages to find the hollow man from the deck, like one of the threats that allows the deck to actually score out pretty easily. The other thing, of course, with the uh, boomerang coming down on the vampy, you, I think the uh, corp would really, really like to have a Rashida fire here. And if that's not a Rashida in the remote, oh, yep, we're seeing a last click run on the remote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonder do we see, see a switch in the decisions of what subroutines are going to fire though? Yeah, looks like it. Just allowing Cable to take two credits out of Xiaopi's bank account. Oh no, the Void getting trashed. Yeah, this remote is just not getting built at all. Good start, it's a good start. There are two copies of Void, um, a virus, and an Adrian mm -hmm. size in this list. And again, a new thread going to server 2. Cable just firing. Every, every turn installing something there, making Xiaopi go and check it. And Xiaot doesn't have any like permanent econ up anymore. Needs to find an upgrade really soon. Every server yeah, is getting iced up already, so not getting those really easy virus counters anymore. He just took eight off the fermenter last turn. Mm -hmm. Wonder if maybe we could have let that keep ticking for another turn, but probably. I think you get purge and the... use it on even lower grid totals at that point. Yeah, always worried about a virus in the server. Yeah, that's another option. Seeing R&D run here, tributary moving over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the one problem with tributary that, oh, but it's not a problem anymore. I was just going to say that you cannot defend your central servers anymore too much. Yeah, tributary drawing a card and letting people re-ice HQ. Of course, on two credits, there's a thimble rig and there's three tattoo bowlers that Cable can still res. Yeah, already one Pronas are getting bot lost. Mm. One of the eyes that is pretty durable to bot lost, it still fires something, but you cannot get full value out of it. Yeah, I mean, it feels really, really good if you can botch this the tributary, so that each turn, if it moves around, you're still just breaking the relevant subroutine. Mm -hmm. um, but equally, with ag infusions, booping ability is the is it's colloquially known. Um, you really have to have some sort of answer to the big, scary rest iced. Even though mm -hmm. Vampire and is not as bad as an Anansi or a Sisentan to be pushed into. Just having some answer to if the Ag Infusion redirects you. So, nice to set that up early. Yeah, I think tri Tributary is one of the things that actually is allowing you to build these like really tall remote servers. Mm -hmm. Just getting those free ice installs. And see, th thinking here. Does he go after server two again? Have been has been running that consistently. At some point, there will be something that you don't really mind being there. And you just spend all of your resources getting in, not building your own econ. Yeah, cable carnage was only on two credits at the start of the turn. Subliminal took them up to three, but there's nothing that they're going to unless it's a it's a regenesis in the server. They could go broke getting up to four points, but leaving yourself unprotected. Mm -hmm. Possibly not a great idea against Lou. Yeah, and Cable is all, is able to dress some scary eyes already. With six credits, mm. there might be a size and ton or something firing here. Oh, finds the punitive. the HQ run. There's at least one punitive waiting there. At least one punitive in hand. Notably, again, no install from the tributary subroutine from Cable. So there may be no ice in hand, or maybe just nothing that uh, Cable was desperate to put out onto yeah, the board, or, but or you just quickly and yeah. costlessly. Could be that you need to fill your hand to take care of agendas that might be sitting there. Yeah. And going after server 2. 
We've seen some very aggressive lines here from Ziyat, but I think that's how you want to play this matchup, especially early on when if you let the Ag Infusion get a hold of board, you can really struggle to pull it back. Oh, and my virus. I ping them a virus early. That's nice. No no virus counters on the board that Ziyat cares about losing. Yeah, no, it, no, no full of charge blowout. Sleep or anything. Yeah, no danger of blowout later. The only thing to be afraid of now is when to check archives, but even then I don't think there's a yeah, real... Do you even to check, check archives, archives at any point, basically? You just could just end up trying to deck the corporation out if I can just go there. And Cable well, Current bouncing like 10 credits, 9 credits in a turn, and you're getting a free install also on server 2. Yeah, Hansei Hedge Fund... Suddenly, those credits aren't looking so scarce on the corp side. Yeah, I don't have the um, hypergeometric skills that Augustus does, but I know that he would say there are certain times in this matchup where it's worth Lou running archives if the read is a flood. Um, yeah, they're totally. Now good. that the 15 credits on the other side, you'd be. And you know there's one punitive in hand. Yeah, the archives is I now think you maybe go. You can maybe go check there after you get the one point already, so you just don't end up losing, getting hit by the six six pointer punitive. Mm. Yeah, like installs on server two again, making sure just go continuously checking that. Yeah, a steel skin out of hand first click. Lou is now halfway through his deck, and we haven't seen an imp yet. No imp, no knob grey, you know, like nothing yet. Yeah, gone through two prices, one moshing. So there's still more draw and you know, sort of search effects in that deck, but <clears throat> it's keeping the pressure up well, but and the blue deck. Fuck with him. Yeah, you are just playing the for the for the cards to find your key econ pieces early on. Had a good chance, like slowing down the corporation early with those ice rests. Oh, Audrey coming down. This mean this allows you to get through ice pretty easily. Interestingly, only two fermenters in this loo. And I think the, there's a one-off clot that maybe that's the uh, the oh, sacrifice just in case this was against a fast advanced matchup. So that's at yeah, least one dead card. If you card. can guarantee basically that you, it's going to be relevant. In it. Two of the four matches, I think you can slot it. But mm -hmm. unluckily, rolls the matchup where you really would want to, the third fermenter here. Mm -hmm. So the hard install of Audrey, letting tributary fire on this remote server run, and then going to use some yeah. combination of Audrey and the botch's counter to break most of Vampire and Arsenal. Yeah, tributary, the strength gaining subroutine doesn't change anything here. The break point. Trashing the final exactly the strike even. fund and the second steel skin. Yeah, tempo positive on the break. The wonders of Audrey. Yeah. And just using the one botulus counter. Let... Breaking everything except the draw subroutine. Happy yeah. to let cable slide up here. And we snipe the Rashida. That's nice. Yeah, just taking care of those Rashidas. Just keeping the remote clear every turn. Oh, second Simo chip coming down. We can see start seeing more of a shift into a central focus game plan here from Ziat, maybe. Guarding the Solidarity Badge. I guess that makes sense. There's only a one of Solidarity Badge in this list, and you can always get it back later with Labor Rights mm -hmm. if you need it. But I guess the, the thinking is that there's not going to be enough trashing to make it worth installing, but yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Almost immediately we see a response of third piece of ice on that remote server. Mm -hmm. And an extra install. I don't think server 2 has been empty except like the first turn here. And do we see a pivot into a central server, but if any central server is also double stacked with ice, To maybe uh, are maybe are maybe able to get into a HQ 
If you like Bocholus the tributary end, then just order it the second ice. Hmm. Like the third ice feels pretty nasty here, but tributary being yeah, able to just test. yeah, like tributary makes every ice like typically your play pattern against this loop deck is just like double icing central servers and every everything, so you stop the get runner from getting value from from those runs from those virus counters. But tributary the interesting thing about the tributary's tax. wording is that it can move itself to the outermost if it's the server that's run. So there's almost a temptation here to run the remote to pin the tributary to that server. Mm -hmm. Either let it fire or break it with Audrey if you need to, and so then pivot elsewhere. Let, Looks like we're taking the direct line here. Yeah. That would waste a click otherwise. And we have an imp that goes trashing whatever we find in HQ. Yeah, imp coming down is super important. Cable just thinking Cable about the tri thing. tributary switch. If you switch, maybe the opponent can get into server 2, and if you have something key important there, it could be a problem. As you said, neither of the subroutines on Tributary would stop the runner getting into server 2, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, it still adds up, though. Moving Tributary, getting that free install, maybe installing ice on server 2. So yeah, letting it fire. Doesn't have any ice here. Again, as you say, maybe there is ice in HQ that if there's other agendas or, you know, mm. just... Maybe a bunch of keep really those out, saves. That's I pad out the hand, yeah. Oh, Anansi. But... Seven strength Anansi. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a thankfully, spider. <laughs> this Lou doesn't care about ice strength. We're probably going to see... Some combination of Audrey and Botulus come down. Yeah, you still have to or pitch. Just... You still have to pitch three cards for order to make strength. Oh, true, true. You do. Yeah, the break point going exactly over. So just thinking, do we bot? We change Botulus? Do we just use Audrey? Or you can There's also another... just eat the subroutines. That is an option here. There's another sub, uh, another botchless in the heap, so with two similar chips, can get through this without having to recur the same one. But equally, eating the subroutines here is very scary prospect mm -hmm. against a deck that can punitive kill you out of nowhere. Yeah, it it is not an easy choice. Yeah, we take the botchless back. Do we see another botchless going on here in these eyes? He thinks there is not a snare in the deck, right? So you don't have to be afraid of that. No snare, no. And if we see an agenda, we're almost definitely imping it. I think no matter what Ziat yeah, is here, he's going to the... use the imp. So do we choose using Audrey? Yeah, just thinking about it. Letting it fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end, it doesn't really, like, you would lose three cards anyway. Losing not Korean labor rights. Like both, yeah, also Boomerang. Like, really key cards there. They're big hits, but there's two copies of each of those in the deck, so... No, yeah. See how he's not locked out of anything yet. And getting rid Trashing of one of those punitives. Good hit. But. Do yeah, you see but... a Regenesis scored here? Mm -hmm. Looks like it. There it is. There okay. And gets the Fuji. That, that's mm -hmm. the thing you want to see with that first Regenesis. Like bacteria are so good in this deck, so. Mm. Starting two more cards. 
slightly sad we're not restoring humanity at this point to get some credit drip. But yeah, I really, I think you really want the econ here. But... There is a at least one copy of subliminal messaging in the heap, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, decides not to run. It won't be long before those credit totals are looking healthy again on cable side. Yeah, it doesn't need much. Can see maybe challenge a different server at this turn? Run R and D. Oh, but yeah, then Aginfish just boops you into the. Oh. Running HQ Running again, HQ. keeping the tributary pinned there. Seems good when you can either. Oh yeah, you maybe could run R and D after this, making sure that you cannot get booped into the Anansi here. Interestingly, not using one of the Audrey counters to break the tributary. We're just going to put the same seven strength Anansi problem in front of Ziat. Yeah, you just, got a guess. You just check out here uh -oh. and go R&D. Yeah. Playing against the Ag Infusion ability. Yeah, like we said, pinning the tributary in place so that it can't move anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And what do we find here? Oh, Tan Servi, I think Cable would have loved to draw that card. Yeah, that is the second copy of Hansi we've seen. So a third, and there's some hedge funds, but you see the final copy of Simul Chip going down, of course, with labor rights. It's probably not the final time we'll see that installed, but... Oh, second hand set of in hand, though. Sometimes good players just find good cards. <laughs> That's the third, third copy of hand set review. Yeah. Up to ten credits again on the eye confusion. Cable just needs three points anymore. One Hollow Man gone, I think Hollow Man is the tool that you use to score out in this game. Or oh, both Hollow Man gone already. Both Hollow Man in the bin. Yeah, notably it's one of the few ways to fast advance a Regenesis without breaking the uh, cards added to Archives clause that many people forget. And so... Running HQ. Getting iced. Same, same trick as we saw last time, running HQ to let tributary fire so it stays in place. Yeah, but this time cable is allowed, to allowed can address one of the eyes here. We're Let's seeing see. a second copy of Vampire and NASA on R&D. Mm -hmm. But R&D is just 14 cards anymore. And there is still like 7 of Janus left in the deck. True. There's one copy of Spin Doctor removed from the game. Um, six face downs in archives, but those have all been uh, discarded by Cable. It's mm -hmm. unlikely that he would ever choose to throw a Spin Doctor away. Unless the hand is absolutely cracked without it. Breaking through the Vampire Anasa with Audrey. Trashing Imp and Clot. Yeah, has to use two counters. And imp, imp is going to be empty after this. I think she had nearly find an upgrade. Or you just have to use the simul chips to record the imp. No ag infusion here, letting she had access. Yeah, R&D. You, you don't have any real threats on the table that you can un ag infusion into. And we're seeing a long think here. I wonder if this is an agenda that we're out. Oh, or bacterial? Stealing bacterial, yeah, yeah but long think they're wondering whether it was worth imping the bacterial, but... The cable might not have enough credits to do, like, double punitive here. Yeah, on only three credits, and as you say, only 13 in deck, so if cable draws seven here and doesn't have the kill... Mm -hmm. Cephalopod Wizard in chat, absolutely loving the amount of Vampire Anasa we're seeing here. <laughs> Yeah, it's a decent ice. It, I think it's the bet, one of the better new ice additions for Yintaki. And now we enter the think phase. Yeah, this take this will take a while. You're resolving bacterial on Jane, it is so frustrating. But it's a pivotal m moment for Cable, you know, if there's, mm -hmm. if there's no YDL there, you are very unlikely to have the credits to yeah, otherwise go for you a kind of have to like click for credits only. 
So I have to have yep. one of the two pi two of the two punitives left in the deck and two IDL. There is only one copy of subliminal messaging as well, so that's not gonna help the econ. I think that was a draw four. Yeah, so it could be that you just pile that genders on the bottom of R and D and take the cards you need to HQ. Yeah. In fact, with pun one punitive already known in archives that was imped out of hand, mm -hmm. have to hit a very, very lucky set of seven there in R&D, assuming you haven't already discarded a punitive or a YDL. Yeah, or, or have them in hand already. Last click draw from Ziat. Uh, there is two yeah. steel skin in the ha bin already, so... Or just install, install, mm -hmm. starting so. Double install in the remote. There uh -huh. is still... So we've seen the Mavirus, we've seen one Anoetic. That could be the second Anoetic Void, or that could be Adrian Sice. Yeah, I think Adrian Sice into a Rashida could make sense here. That's like where my mind goes first. We've seen two Rashidas already, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there just is no other threat that you push randomly here. I think agenda, mm. just installing an agenda feels pretty scary. Ten left in stack was yet. Um, still no knob curry. No, not yet. And Xiat really doesn't have the credits to install it either. You just kind of have to hit it out of the price here. No, I know Paladin Puemu either. Uh, yeah, drawing a bit pretty econ light this game. We have just seen like a couple of econ cards only. That's the thing. A very aggressive start from the runner that helped keep the corp sort of low and slow, but didn't get the econ to back it up. On only four credits. The only ice that Cable could res here typically would be Tatubola and Thimborig. There is a second copy of Tributary, but obviously that's a unique piece of ice. But there are three copies of Anemone. And if there's a, an Anemone on Archives, potentially into another Fuji in the yeah, bin. Could be just three still out there. Yeah. But this time going HQ probably like for real. <laughs> When you have the three botulus counters here. Yeah, three botulus counters on the Nancy means that you don't care about letting the increased strength subroutine mm -hmm. fire from Tributary. Yeah, so we're taking the draw, draw now down to nine. Nine in R and D. No Quite install? Likely we could see a spin doctor in the server. No, I think we're just still thinking about the install, maybe. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Securing the remote server more. So, final imp counter. Oh, Regenesis! That's so good hit. That's a very big hit. Yeah, it just has to find one anymore. Can you yep. just run archives and win? That's not... Maybe this could well be a spin doctor in server two, but if there's three agendas in archives, that's not going to help anyone. Yeah, and we have gone through like almost all of the decks, so the agendas have to be somewhere. There is still a confusion ability, but yeah, but I can feel not adding up for too much here. It's it's just got, like, up or NASA hit or something. Yeah, two similar chips on the board. And then an Audrey counter. Mm. Choosing yeah. to boop into the Anansi, uh, sorry, the Vampire Nasa on R and D. Likely just wasting clicks here rather than doing any real damage. Yeah, it will add up a, a bit. Because you have maybe even letting this fire though. Thinking about it at least. 
It's a hard the decision. Other two, two net damage subroutine might be a bit nasty to take, but if it's not an anemone, I mean, even if it's an anemone on archives now, if there's a three pointer in the bin and no way of protecting it, that's game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. Still deciding, just <laughs> taking a while to think about this last last click, basically, or last turn. You can break the ice with like chipping on using order and chipping a second order here in, or chipping a botulus from. Oh, that would cost four cards from hand, though, right? That's not a uh, better than taking two <laughs> damage. Yeah, true. I'm seeing symbol chip pull the. Botulus from Anansi over to the Vampire Nelson. I haven't seen Do Cook put this? charge it, so maybe rethinking this line. Mm -hmm. Or maybe just still just deciding which subroutines. Yeah, one, sorry, one virus counter breaking the net damage, second counter breaking the draw. And to be used to order okay. also. No, it doesn't just the order. Continuing just the run. Happy to take a single on R&D, especially if we haven't used the imp yet. Yeah, you basically get one extra shot here. Two, two credits rest. from Vampy putting K bar up to six mm -hmm. means that so you can rest two an Anansi inside R&D. Not an Anansi. Um, an Emony inside R&D and an Emony on archives could start to become a problem. <laughs> Yeah, that would be six damage in total, right? I don't think if you don't use like any tricks. I was gonna say there's there's still a counter on the Audrey, there's still a similar chip installed. Yeah, but Audrey, Audrey uses one of the cards in hand also. Yeah. But uh, I think you can you can botulus one something. It is an anemone. An yeah. Hitting the second boomerang and the final imp out of hand. Yeah, I don't think you really care about either of those hits. No, the one you'd be really sad to lose is the second copy of Labor Rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is that safe, safely in the that. deck, probably, to looking at this line of play. And you maybe just not needing that in the matchup here. Letting the net damage subroutine fire. Mm -hmm. Trashing the buffer drive. Yeah, after the, oh, recursion hitting. And we get the one extra access here. Crashing an anemone off the mm -hmm. top. That and going into archives. Could be it. Otatubola. A phrase, frustrating piece of ice, letting cable crunch get the important credits here. Big thing is, will we see a spin doctor res from server 2? Yeah, that's three. <laughs> it's either game or there is a spin doctor just waiting there. It might be nine face downs that aren't our, aren't agendas. Get the get the breach. Get the weeder. That's the you game. You six to see points at. in archives. I think Cable was pushing for the regenesis this last turn or something. Yeah, that would mean um, if it's a regenesis in the server and then regenesis was stolen from HQ. That's a really rough spot to be in from the corp side. I think we're slightly ahead of chat, but they're catching up now. Oh, it doesn't tell. <laughs> Holds the cards down, face down. Yeah, see, it's managing to sneak that. That was a big swing in that mm. game where that second Regenesis got hit. Yeah, like you snipe the Regenesis and just get in there, just call it out. But equally, if that um, if Ziat chose to run archives even without the Regenesis steal, they'd have gotten up to nine points there. Yeah, but, but maybe it's just a call that you can't make really. And switching sides, going to be Arisana versus Ob, like the modern classic here. Yeah, a real interesting Ob list here. We did see um, later on. We will see. Uh, where is it? Still trying to find it. 
yeah, Lost Geek is on a fast advance Hollow Man version of Ob as well, mm. with a tributary half run. Um, lots of things that you would expect to see from last season, with some slight tweaks. Yeah, but this is a very different Ob list here from Seattle. Really in Hollow Man, letting you just faster yeah, advance agenda, content, turning my virus into an even speed. bigger threat. Mm. We're seeing an agenda suite here of triple Oaktown renovation, two basalt spires, three project atlases, and two hostile takeovers. Mm. Very, very different. Um, one hollow man, one tributary, and a drafter. So some very interesting uh, agenda choices here and uh, influence uses. Oh, border control. Just. Making sure that probably Rashid behind it will get to live. Mm -hmm. And sitting across from the table is Cable Carnage's World Tree Arasana on 69 cards, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks like a huge pile of cards. Not get, Doesn't get the turn one K, uh, World Tree out, but... It's a very, it's a similar this. list to the one uh, Sebastian K took to AMT last week, and but uh, notably a Trickster Taka on um, cable side. Very yeah. cool use of influence there. Just one extra piece of like credit gain for you. Well, it's um the wording on Trickster Taka is using programs. It's not like to use icebreakers, so you can use it to pay for SMC costs. Um, oh, yeah. can you actually use it to pay World Tree installs also? Yeah, if I mean, if there's something you're installing for four or five, but yeah, it's a, yeah, that's a really cool include here then. Combo. Good start for Ziat, getting a Rashida behind a board control. Yeah, I think this is the, yeah. exactly the start you want against World Tree, basically. Just ice up everything. Get the yeah. turn one to shoot going and Tyth only knocking a turbine out of hand. I don't think Cable's sad to see that go. Here we do see that Trixer Taka coming down. Mm. Yeah, so spend hosted credits to use programs during runs. Yeah, still has to find the main e e econ engine off the deck. Mm -hmm. And Ziat getting an ice on each server early is very nice for them. Oh, well, <laughs> we saw the damage it could do last uh -huh. game. Here we see the tributary again. Rest second turn, I think. Oh, but snipes the Atlas. The Atlas snipe is huge. Big. Fizerum Entangler coming down. Getting past that annoying piece of ice for only two credits. A ah, couple of corrections. We're seeing, we're seeing a confirmation from Cephalopod Wizard in chat that uh, it can pay for SMCs to credit costs, but it can't pay for install costs. And it can't pay at any like World Tree installs. Yeah, that makes sense because the cost isn't coming from World Tree; it's coming from installing the card. Um, I still, just go. I, nice I just pay. go with what somebody says to me. I don't think about it. <laughs> well, I, I've played the deck um, on Jaina, and the surprise on my face when I used SMC to install a world tree and I was able to pay with it, pay with Taka, I was like, oh my god, I love this. So, is he at down to two credits? I'm thinking at the start of the turn here. It did feel like a very uh, a good start, and then. Atlas Snipe maybe swings things the other direction. Tributary, you like to see that early, you like to have it resed, but Fizerum Entangler yeah, ma makes it a little bit tricky. Tries to fish for a purge. Like, at least it's like. Oh, Regolith is so huge here. Getting those credits yeah, up. Regolith in the server, clicking it three times. And I was saying, like, my virus is one of the things that lets. Ob perch pretty consistently during the match. Yeah, that's true. It's unlikely that we'll see this entangler stay around for very long, but 
equally, Arasana is entirely likely to find Simul chips at will to keep bringing it back. And I believe there's two copies in the list. Yeah, two copies of Fizerum. Yeah, that is Simul as self modifying code, so we might be seeing the world tree coming down here. Some point. Just drawing up, installing SMC and create a commission to double icing build some both econ. other central servers just doesn't want to let Borotri actually start churning out those credits and cards. Yep, I think that's absolutely the line you want to take in this matchup. Um, as soon as you give the World Tree list an inch, they will take a mile and they will keep running with it. Mm -hmm. And Regal is just sitting on three counter, three credits. I don't think you want to go trashing that, but... Dirty laundering archives. Yeah, Tribunal moving up. They're using the Trickster ca Taka you. counters to use for bypassing with the Phycelium. Yeah, yeah another use of Taka in this list. Now, if this is uh, board yeah, control, much. or there isn't a copy of Thimble Rig Ooh, in the Stavka. list. Stavka. Do we see another Fizerum? We could see self-modifying code fetching another copy if we need it. Yeah, or just eat the loss and lose your cards here. Yep, just, just letting it fire. Still gets the five credits, but doesn't get the world tree up and running here. I don't think. Um, I think Cable was on six credits, so wouldn't have had enough to use SMC to turn it into a world tree with that run. Oh yeah, could be. Oh, Afshar coming also coming down. He's checking an Afshar on HQ. Just trying to get a successful run this turn. Pressure yeah, those grid totals. Forcing Ziat to res as much ice as possible. Find out where the weak spots are so that you can poke them later. Yeah, trying to get a second hit Makes out sense. of R&D. Just find the second Atlas. This Atlas oh, only has... A single one coster. So, what we might see is Spin Doctor shuffling the Tithe, Tithe back, back into the yeah. list for the, the regular. No. Oh, there is a Malapart data. Oh, there is a Malapart. Yeah, one of the cards that, that. Like, this is your typical chain from Ob. Regular yeah. goes into Malapart and then your something else goes into the Tukan and. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I just didn't scroll far enough. So yeah, one Malapert, one Tithe. That's the only one cost slots. Mm. And Xiadne re really needs to bounce back from these three credits really quick. Mm. If there's something like an extract you, that you can sell anything in, into, that would be huge. Yeah. Well, the, uh, this may be the reason that we see three Oaktown renovations in the list. Oh, you could, could just push Oaktown here. Yeah, two clicks remaining could install advance on Oaktown. Yeah, and then you can even... Fizerum and Tangler else. does nothing against barriers. No, just in raw... Two raw installs, it's don't Installing two cards. Wonder what second card is. It could, it could be um, my virus that's going to fetch something at the start of next turn. Mm -hmm. Three copies of my virus in the list. Could be a two Kana in case Cable does manage to get in and we're trying to push out an agenda. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, if it's there's no there is no above the law in this list. Three two pointers, uh, sorry, three project atlas, three oak town, two hostiles, and two basalt spires. So Taka will live. Interesting. So an archives run just to keep the tributary pinned there. The same tactic that we saw from Ziat last game. Yeah, and also gets, RSM, uh, gets the SMC during the run as well. Yeah. 
Just turning... triple click efficiency, also pressuring the tributary. Turning an SMC into the cleaver in this run on the remote server. Yeah, do we see the pop? Yeah, there it goes. Yep. One click remaining. Like yeah, getting your Turo Magnet is such a challenge for Arizona. You just have to install the real trigger, the real card. Yeah, it's difficult because the Magnet obviously stops uh, Fizerum getting through, but yeah, it stops like Fizerum using it stops early, there's only one this. copy of Magnet in this list, and Ziat doesn't have an opportunity to find it later with a border control to redirect a, a Trojan, which might be key. But you can over it if you want to. Yeah, we do see a Rashida again. So, so yeah, bouncing back up to six credits here. And Cable current just... on just one credit here. But those are coming back with the icon from the draws and everything. So second piece of ice going down to five credits. You'll we'll be discarding two cards after installing two in the remote. So th three cards plus the Malapert in this remote. Um, mm -hmm. Tukana, Virus, Hollow Man are the other upgrades that we have. Hollow Man unlikely to do anything on a five credit total, but... Yeah, you, I don't think you install it yet. You can just save it after I have more mm -hmm. credits. Going after yeah, running tool. tributary. Oh, sorry, Cape Carnage running tributary. Mm -hmm. oh, running the Spin Doctor to move the tributary over and essentially neutralize it. It yeah, has to use the Spin Doctor away. Two unseen. Yeah, shuffling back the two oh, maybe unseen agendas. cards. Possibly could be the half run. I believe there's a half run in this list. Mm. Yeah. I uh, know there isn't. It's a uh, drafter instead. So. Oh, and bouncing from the sandstone. Wanting to get in for just one credit here. If yeah. server one is though the if there is some virus on server one just may, trying to get the regolith going, it could be disastrous here. There is only one copy of regolith, so um, Spin Doctor didn't put regolith back in. Oh yeah, that's t totally true. So will we see? We got just enough here for a Tukana triple advance Atlas, but I don't know if that's worth doing. Looks like it's at least a Tukana. Hostile takeover! Oh. Tukana hostile takeover. Yeah, getting you those credits almost for free. Yep. And it gets both the I mean, Malapart giving... and the Tukana trigger here. Giving Arasana a bad pub, especially World Tree, isn't brilliant, but bouncing back in the Econ is very important. Yeah, bouncing bat back and also getting two triggers here. Yeah. The card search from Malapert. Maybe you see like an extract being pulled. Um, for even more econ options. Drafter might be a nasty fire, uh, card to pull with Tukana. Yeah, it could be. The drafter on R&D could be a problem here, or any action R&D that cable doesn't really get so, through easily. There's no Ica in this Arasana list, there's just an Echelon. There is a, also a, a uh, Palangi though, if you want to turn the drafter into mm -hmm. a barrier. Oh yeah, that could be. Oh, there's yeah, a drafter on R&D, makes sense. The Prophet Axu was correct. Just paying one for that privilege of installing the draft out there. Mm -hmm. Of course, with a cleaver on the board, it's the only server um, cable can get into easily. <laughs> Could have get into easily. I think that yeah. dream is gone here. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just it. You want to protect the server that is accessible. Yeah, and I think kind of cable was black poking for just single access there. Trying to find the agenda density out of R&D. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that fun stops right now. The Malapert pull will be interesting here. 
Um, there's one copy of Audacity in the list. If we're trying to go fast, but have a full hand here and we've been discarding cards, so quite likely there's things in hand we don't want to discard. Yeah, I don't think you do. There is nothing that allows you to install multiple cards or use multiple cards as value, so... No. Um, Maybe get, I think like getting an econ piece here would be valid. Or yeah, I'd like, be tempted to get extract, turn yeah. one of these cards into something more useful. Um, also, it's an option to get a Rashida. To just jam into Shadow 1 again. I think you don't have a Rashida in hand. Oh, did we not see you? Yeah, you could get it with Small Opera, right? Yeah, it looks like, looks like Ziat just chose to uh, not use Malapert. Oh, really? It just doesn't want to discard anything, apparently. Oh, Drabino yeah, getting that, hushed from, <laughs> to Shadow Rope 2. Basically, nulli <laughs> nullifying that card completely. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Finding a Rashida would put a lot of floods into the hand, potentially. Mm. Hushing the tributary, running HQ, and using Pfizerum. It's a good yeah, answer to Ashar. Yeah, you your bad publicity here. Yeah, typically cannot be fully broken, but that doesn't matter if you're just bypassing the ice. Yeah, just, just skip everything. Mavirus, though! Oh, we see the answer from Ziat. It's a Mavirus in server one. And do you just... Can you get an ice on HQ again or something? Declining to use op. Doesn't um, use op at all. Maybe it just doesn't. Uh, nothing helps you too much, and you just want to keep density in R and D as good as you can. Well, it's interesting. The, the, most of the two costs in Ziat's list are yeah, upgrades. You know, Tukana, Hollow Man. Maybe the Hollow Man's in hand, but there is one copy of Descent, which I think if there's a danger of. Um, flooding in hand, you'd think you'd want to go and get the Descent, unless that's the ice that we see face down on server 1. That might be a big tell. Double ice that, on server 1 could be the he could be the hollow man here. Cable Carnage's World Tree Arasana only has an inversica uh, inversificator as its code gate breaker. Big six cost install. Yeah, you're not you're not installing that without some World Tree trick. Double install on the remote on twelve credits could be a Hollow Man. That it is. You see Hollow Man. Is it a big atlas or is it a basalt spire? It's the, it's a massive atlas. Two counters, I think. Big atlas. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. But I think mm -hmm. two atlas tokens, and you get your extra to <laughs> fires from both of the upgrades as well. Winchester protecting HQ further, and then you can get just an. Something like Audacity, maybe? Well, you can pull Audacity when you need it with the Atlas counter. Yeah, but you have an Atlas counter um, for the second <laughs> score that you're going to make. Mm. Yeah, the Audacity is coming to hand. There mm. might be a three-pointer in hand already, so you see I just needs one turn to score out the Audac with Audacity. And... There's only one Audacity in the list, so he would need uh, Basalt Spire to be stolen or need to find a spin doctor to recur that but with a malaport malaport data vault on the board extracting that turns it into a spin quite easily are we just using pinning the tribunal here well it's interesting we used uh cable Khan has used urban art vernissage to bounce the hush it does save you a couple of credits here. It lets it fire again. Okay, I think it's just click compression to make sure tra uh, Taka doesn't tag you. Uh, 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 
Yeah. It also does save some money for you, I think. And just clicking for credits during your turn mm. 10. We might see the 2-0 sweep here from Ziat. Yeah, except that shutting down the world trade deck completely. Yeah. Second piece of ice on archives. Yep, there it is. We're seeing yeah, score number three. And next turn is basically game already. Cable Currents needs to find like a clot, if there even is one. There is a clot in the Arasana list, but... Yeah, there we go. So Malapa adding Spin Doctor. I don't think there's a line that wins next turn, because you need to install Spin, Shuffle Back Audacity. And on one credit you can't use oh, yeah, Hollow Man. So two turn clock cable trying to probably find the clot, just trying to dig for it. We do find Muse. Is it Muse for clot? It is. Yeah, just trying to stay alive. Xiat can find the. If Xiat finds the agenda, he can like, purge. I don't think. I think just an immediate purge, like. Mm -hmm. You can also just click for credits and install. I believe that also wins you the game. Or, yeah, that's the pretty scary line, though. Yeah, I mean, with two... No, with two Atlas counters, you want to have the flexibility to find Audacity and an agenda. Extract just was click the card for credits and all. I think that's going to have a virus. Yeah, yeah, my virus and yep. the virus. That's almost definitely game. Clean lines here from the app. Yeah, cable just getting this game to run a bit longer, but I don't think he has like answers here anymore. I don't think there's... No, there's no pinhole threading. It would take a heck of a lot to get through HQ. Yeah, I think you can get a couple of access somewhere, but nothing consistently. Raw install an inversificator. First click creative. You just need the econ. Mm. Then it has to run server one to stop some stop like the thing from firing. Oh no, wrong server here. I don't think anything got, got revealed, so... Yeah, there's no, no reason this can't be taken back. Mm. I think both players are in voice chat, I believe, so they're just talking it out. So what's the line here? Is it... Overclocking HQ, hoping that the tributary moves over, you can push the tributary, you can swap it with the Winchester, but if Ziat decides not to move Trib... I wonder where, where Cable was trying to run. Maybe Faisalim Entangler the, 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 the Winchester? Uh, we've seen both copies of Fyserum. They're in the bin. Oh, really? Um, yeah. There's another Muse in hand. Installing. But then there's no... Uh, Cable never found yeah, like a... HQ. The Cable never found a console, so there's no MU to install it. If we want oh, to keep totally. I have to get rid of something. I guess you lose the cleaver, but... Fyserum still takes up an MU. Encounters the Winchester. Can we trick through this somehow? I think the, I think the hope was that tributary gets moved. Oh over, yeah, but... if you move tributary, you just can 
change that, but yeah, but yeah, just not moving it. Said, yeah, there's no no reason for Ziat to move it, and oh, gosh. we could try and pay through the trace here, but hmm. means that there's no Ertran subroutine anymore. But the program trash still makes it so you cannot get through here. But cables also trashed the the plot here, so yeah. I guess the, the 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 line here is to trash the spin doctor. Yeah, you have to get in and trash everything, so that audacity can't be. Yeah, and the uh, plot is even getting purged with the Mavara, so it doesn't stop the game anymore. Wait, we're paying through the. Is that not increasing the trace strings? I don't think, I don't think the there's any need to pay through the. This is this is wild. <laughs> no program trash. I can't. Oh, but see, uh, cable doesn't have any enough credit to actually trash the spin doctor anymore. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. There's no. There's one credit left on overclock. There's three Taka credits, but the Taka's not going to do... That's just going to be used by Inversificator to break the Afshar. Mm -hmm. One credit isn't going to be enough to trash the Spin Doctor here. Yeah, just not enough. Gets rid of the Movaris, but needs the second way to find Clot here. Three copies of Simul Chip in the list still to find. That can help keep the plot up, but you still need the you need to pay for Muse. It doesn't make the card that you install free, so mm -hmm. yes, cable spin. needs to I find think that's been after Econ. getting installed. Yeah, or does it going back to the deck and next turn is probably cable's final one. Has to find something to install the clot again with. Yeah, just drawing up, refilling the hand. Urban Art Vernissage bouncing the hush does give credits to install a similar chip. And the Muse. We need to recur it for clock block. Challenging the spin, we know that it's going to be used to put back Audacity. Yeah, getting Audacity back. Audacity border control, so not taking any of the face downs, indicating that no agendas have been discarded. Just then going after HQ, or server 1. Maybe just trying to hope that it's not in something. You can get maybe if you can get through here, you can kill the hollow man. I think this is just a desperation play with two atlas counters. There's a th oh, the third atlas has been stolen. There's only three th um, three, twos. three twos in the list. There is no above the so, law. Well, or is... There's no above the law. Ooh, so yeah, really? the only line Jiat has to fast advance a win in one turn is to use Hollow Man and Audacity. But I think that's it. I think that's game. Yeah, I just cannot get through that anymore. Fetch an Oak Town. Fetch Audacity. Install on Hollow Man. Yeah. Oh, Oak Town was in hand. Click Hollow Man, play Audacity. That's GG 2 0 for Unbanned so far. Yeah, Great game. Yeah, just clean the house here. Like, just managing to steal the game, first game, and then controlling the second game completely. What a way to start this off. What a final. And we still have like four games left here. <laughs> we still have three rounds of this to go.
some of the highest level netrunner you'll see. And next, next up, I believe it's Lost Geek versus Kikai. And I think we have a new new commentator joining up. Mm -hmm. Who is commentating for round two? Hello. Hello, hello. Hey. Welcome. Can you hear me well? Yeah, compl no, very nicely. Okay, good to be here. I guess I should go on JNet too. <laughs> uh, yeah. You introduce yeah. yourself to the stream. At uh, what? Do you want sure. to introduce yourself? Oh, uh, yes. Hello. <laughs> I am uh, I'm Bridgman. Uh, nice to meet you all. And the next game is not up yet, but and we can take a look of the lists. I believe I'm not sure which side is running or corping first though. Uh, our lost kick will corp first, so it's going to be similar fast advance orb against lat this time. It's just a basic control lat looks like it. Yeah. One catalog or oh, two Hermes instead. Yeah, this is uh Ben. Uh, ben has been. This has been a specialty for a while now. The putting Hermes in lat. Yeah, he's um, been a big fan of Hermes lat. I think he played it at UK Nats last year. He also played it at EMEA last year. I know. Oh no, um, CBI started this year. Yeah, it was UK Nats, and I believe he played it in some earlier rounds of Fight Club as well. Um, oh. Now you have some new nice cards, Trick Shot, Burner, both really sick. And Cataloger, I guess Cataloger with Hermes is kind of cool. Mm. Oh yeah, that should bounce stuff. And yeah, Cataloger is just a so good win condition, basically. Yeah, we see three copies of Trick Shot, one Cataloger, two Burner. One copy of Compile is an interesting include. Yeah, that's interesting. I remember I remember asking why the compile was in the list like way back. Um, I guess they just feel like they don't get SMCs often enough and, and the compile is like the fourth SMC. Um, yeah, is the plan to, <laughs> Yeah, is the plan to use compiler to install an SMC and then turn that into a real breaker? Rather than I think, finding I think a breaker. that's the the most common case. But like they will, I mean, I, I there's going to be runs where you'd rather like get the thing that you're looking for and then fetch it with SMC later. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's it's kind of flexible. I mean, you have some other stuff you could get with it. Like you could even get hush with it potentially. Mm -hmm. just <laughs> I don't know if you comp you play compile they resonant on C, you get like. Uh, you get hush from your deck, something like that. I don't know. KK also um, wanted one one copy of Imp, which obviously if you install the Imp, use it once, bounce it back to the top of deck. It's almost like having three counters on it. Yes, but it does it. No, I think it goes to the bottom with compile. Uh, it's not like with test run. Yeah, different cards. Or is uh, it... bottom of your stack? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something. Yeah. Exactly. So compile works better with a card like Spark of Inspiration because you get it on the mm. bottom, you can fetch it back later. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. We well, spark through your whole deck if there's nothing else left to install. Well, it, it, yes. Well, uh, I'm I'm saying because like you know the kit lists nowadays they maybe only need to play like two programs. Um, I mean, I've seen people play more than that, but you could just play two programs, and then <laughs> if the program goes in the bottom of your deck, you're actually happy because then uh, you can spark it from all the way down there. Yeah. Or you can even make sure that you spark the right program if you compile the one that you don't want to see early on. Mm. Yeah, true, true. Um, oh. Okay, well, so the matchup, what are, we, what are we expecting to be the main features of this matchup? The op looks pretty... 
standard, right? Yeah, it's pretty like similar to old Obelisk. Typical fast it, up with Hollow Man, such an like amazing threat in the deck. So it's some things to. Oh, sorry, go on. <laughs> yeah, it's mainly about Lat trying to control the game, making sure that the board state doesn't devolve into agendas getting scored out too fast. I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd... I've played Fast Advance Ob into Ben's Hermes lat a couple of times now, and it can swing either way. I think finding Hermes early is big. Um, oh, for sure, that's going to be big, yeah. Because if you can get like a free trick shot off, I think that that probably helps you a lot. Mm. I don't know, but well, things like that. You have trick shot just or burner. Like yeah, you just bounce the HQ eyes and you go burner. Yeah, um, a couple of really important high value events added into the game and like even compile you can bounce up R and D ice and go in there and get like small indexing out. So both players kept here. So the line of install res regolith, extract regolith for an ice wall may be a direct Hermes response saying, I'm gonna get the ice down, I'm not gonna Leave it face down. Yeah, just don't want to get blown out. Yeah. Whatever happens, I'm getting this turn one Rashida play. And if you're using the... Uh, if you're using the extract anyway, you can just basically pay two credits for the ice wall turn one, and it's good enough. It's, I was not in the game, so... Ice wall was... Like so it was then ran ice inst ball, install but... regolith, then extract. That was turn one. Oh, install regolith, see. extract it into an ice wall, put a Rashida behind it. Oh, and interesting. Instantly, second threat going into server two. Could be a second regolith. Or so second back? second uh, Rashida, I mean. That was interesting, because Lat could contest there. Doesn't that seem like it would have been worth it? Yeah. Lat could, but like with some tools like uh, SMC, that still costs lots of, lots of money. Yeah, that's true. But if you make a play like that, it seems kind of desperate, right? Mm. To you know, to if you if you're that, um, you know, you feel like you need to get the ice wall that quickly. It's probably because you're lacking other ice in your hand. I figure at least. Um, so. Yeah, it it might be like a low ice hand, hand, and then you, if you contest whatever they're putting there, it's like a Rashida or something else that you really want to trash, pretty likely. Mm. It was a keep from both sides, so it seemed like I that see. was what Lusky wanted to do. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, yeah. So it's okay. Kana trashed from the top. Server 2, not, Ra not Rashida at least. Could be an agenda still. Looks like it. Is an above the law to trash Nuka? No, we're seeing an Azeth. So that might explain why the early Ice Wall play, just trying to find a one cost of yeah, something rushed. trash yeah. with an Azeth in hand. There are three copies of Ice Wall in this list. What is worth. So it's probably no, it also sense. the um, Slash and Burn as well. There's also one copy yeah, of the new Sentry. One it's, copy it's... of Hammer. With no five costas to find, no envelopment. Yeah, you just test <laughs> all the all the new cards. Wild. It's kinda of like Jack Maid's uh Bob, but without like <laughs> like you have the same agenda suite is what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, a couple of different ways. So you're looking for these plays with slash and burn. And Cali testing becomes Hollow Man and a tributary. Yeah, it, it seems like all the ops will want to go for one Hollow Man and one Tributary nowadays. Because they're just so good. Ooh, that's a really good steal there. Yeah, sniping off uh, top of R&D, just getting those freebies. Continuing to get lat value, I think Kike has drawn with lat every turn so far. Yeah, you can't really stop the opponent from getting those. Yeah, this is... Is there a... There's no clot in the lat. That's that's important to remember. Um, 
so the the f like fast advancing out is always going to be a threat that you need to worry about. So if if the corp gets too high on points, uh, it's scary for the runner, even if you're doing well on board and and credits and stuff. But in terms of board and credits, the runner is looking really good right now. I think like corp doesn't have anything rest. Runner has a lot of money draw, uh, and SMC already. So the ability to contest uh, the remote and the ability to, uh, I mean, I don't know, force the spin pops, maybe. You you typically don't want to leave spin doctors around against all. Yeah, yeah. especially with two slash and burns in the list, you need to challenge the spin before it uh, becomes a freebie. Yeah. It, it becomes like scoring out a 3-2 for only, what two is credits. it? Two credits. Yeah. yeah. Can't really let the corporation have those. Other exactly. than slash and burn, like there is no like continuous fast advanced tools. If you don't have the remote setup, so that's like one audacity also. But that's like that. This is looking nice too. I guess this is only bad if it's a border control, because then you can like instantly pop and deny the the credits. If it's on Stavka, you can also break it, right? I didn't notice. Uh, Stavka. Oh, interesting. Well, no. Well, okay. I guess if Stavka goes to seven, so they trash a card. Um. No, just Hortum. Oh, but it's not. Yeah, still. I didn't notice. Wait. That it's... Do you? It doesn't cost almost at anything. It does tax you like a, a credit? credit more than you normally. Yeah, and uh, well, no, it. Yeah, I guess a credit, but it also means that if this card is trashable. Then it also matters. Yeah. Um, true. At like top. you would have more. Yeah, you would have a credit left on overclock. So if this is trashable, you're effectively taxing them to credits in this way. Yeah, it makes sense. So really interesting here that we're seeing environmental testing from LAT. Not only because there's three copies of it in the list, but there's only six targets. There's seven programs, three icebreakers, and six hardware. Yeah, and there was no Muse That's at a really all, good right? point. Like, typically Muse allows you to get two counters for one card, but... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's like, normally nowadays, like, with, with the ability to install so many programs with Muse and maybe Coalescence and stuff, you... Um, <laughs> you, you, you feel, like, very comfortable playing environmental mm -hmm. testing. Uh... So it's kind of it's interesting that it's still in the list, but with you get I'm... extra install with symbol chips, you get uh, the SMCs. It's just a matter of I guess drawing it early enough, and maybe if you draw yeah, it late, you don't make use of it. Three SMCs, three symbol chips, and there is a DJ Fenris, which <laughs> most of the time you'll probably see turn into Steve Cambridge for recursion. Yeah, it is still like slow six credits, which is good while you are setting up. If you have the money to actually install it, though. Challenging yeah. the spin, loss keep letting it get trashed, which is taxing the lap down to only two credits. We have our first turn with no lap to draw. Or we're we just oh, going to like advance. Gonna be yeah. audacity or hostile. Or oh, hostile, hostile yeah, makes, makes more sense. sense. Yeah. Uh, you're still sharing the lists on stream, by the way. I think. Hmm? Oh wait, no, sorry. I uh, my stream was behind. Yeah. So econ wise. I mean, as soon as this environmental pops, the lat is doing great. And you got the, the Nuka. So I think you can take, well, maybe, well, I think you're probably forced to take some time here to do more setup. So if the corp is able to like get to five here, even if they let you have a slash and burn, that could be scary for the runner. Um, so you really want to start to get those like trick shots and burners off. So you, you feel like you know what's coming up as the runner. Um, because you, you, if you can stop them from getting to five, you really want to do that. And if they get to five, you really want to control the contents of their hand with Burner, probably. Yeah, with Burner and Imp. Yeah, exactly. A oh, second one coming down. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, if, if you can just get another program or hardware down to pop that one. Yeah, you have like be... overclock in hand. I think this is pretty nice. You can just run HQ or and clear. Daily cast will take him up to three at the start of the turn, which mm -hmm. could be, you know, SMC for an Yeah, end. but you don't have any MU, and SMCing for a one cost thing doesn't feel too good. 
There is one copy of Stavka in the list and one copy of um, Hammer. Mm -hmm. As well as a half run. So even then, have to be worried about losing our rig. Yeah, that's important to keep in mind. Uh, the credit total you need to break the Stavka, but also um, the fact that if there is a three coster, the Stavka can become, can become unbreakable. So you, um, Although you don't you don't need to pop for echelon uh, until you encounter a sentry. Yeah, and after that you can just install a simul chip and stairs. Well, there. actually, I guess uh, half room can target SMC. I guess. Um, it's just to stop you from breaking, I believe. Oh, oh, it's like oh, right, true, true. Yeah, it's not you, or yeah, is it? I, yeah, because you can SMC, oh, sorry, you can have from like a boomerang to stop that breaking. Yeah, I think like Glovetnik ah, yeah, was the yeah. other card that actually You're, blanks you... the card. Yes, totally right. <laughs> um, okay, then, uh, yeah, yeah, it's looking. You can just hold on your SMC, hold on for your SMC until you hit the hammer, basically, or Winchester on HQ. And after that, you kind of need to have one. Uh, the simul chip in t on table just to stay safe from that blow up. Yeah. Or I can ru oh. run while so. nobody has any three coasters installed yet. Yes. Um, but also I hear um, so so in in terms of the game right now in generalities like uh, Ben has a bunch of money coming in in the future from the environmental testings. So if, if the breakers get out and you start hammering the corp uh, with multi-access, I think the runner is going to be favored. So probably the corp is like trying to go really fast from here on out. Already up to three points is a good start. Yeah. You're a trick shot? Being trick shot. Ooh, trick shot. They're combining r and d multi-access into the threaten of for spin doctor, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, nice. that's really nice because it's yeah. usually so annoying to have to, you know, spend time. Yeah, spend clicks and energy, going. everything. Yeah, you give the devil, and there it is. All this right, is the hammer. 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 Right. So you have enough to pop for echelon, and you can break this for three. Mm. And yeah, because the environmental testing pops, then you kind yeah. of just have to sit, basically check out. I don't think you can be brave enough to go through. Um, there wait, is like it's just one you? Stavka, but I think you have enough money to break the Stavka even if it's at seven, don't you? Oh yeah, that's no, no you half do. On it's eight, it's eight credits, like so I table. think you just I think you just keep going. Yeah, you have enough. Yeah, you have enough. So you just you, I think you just keep rolling because yeah, if they rest Stavka okay. here, you know they're not resting Stavka at another point in the game, so you might as well tank yeah, the cost. I think cost you're kind of happy with that. Yeah. And Plus, you really want to clear none this. Of, none of the barriers spin. actually do anything except stop the run. So just continue. Yeah, and yeah I guess the border control is annoying because they get some of their money back, but it's still not terrible. It's still just two credits. Yeah. Yeah. And Trickshot will still give the second run in that case. You don't need the first one to be successful to make a second run. And it just True. gets through. Oh, Snipes the hostile. Oh, very nice. Yeah, this Stealing is hostile so takeover. This is really, really good. Yeah, trick shot three three. paying off so huge here. Two Such more taxes, then you just go through server five. It is. I think it was criminally uh, underrated in the tiebreakers tier list. Uh, not by me. What I can <laughs> not by <laughs> me, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's amazing. Um, as long as you can make use of it, it's like it. It's overclock, but you get like an extra click, an extra credit, and an extra access. It's, yeah, it's, it's just the, like, the high ceiling on it is just so good. Yeah, I've seen a lot yeah. of shape of players use trick shot um, with a cataloger on the board, and you know, forsake the extra access you get from trick shot mm -hmm. just to use it as a you know overclock plus, and then cataloger to shuffle the top of R and D, and that's still you know. A very positive play. So, yeah, go ahead. What are the outs for?
Corp here because I feel Corp is getting squeezed. Um, how do you how do you get to seven from here? You can have to just fast advance one point and then hope Corporation doesn't hit your audacity. I think there's a likelihood that you might see a like board control push in the remote if KK doesn't manage to find either another SMC, a similar chip to recur it, or yeah, um, just straight find the Fractor. That might be enough to get to five points and then fast advance to seven. Interestingly, there's... Um, Hermes is the only MU granting card. There's no DZMZ or yeah. Cyberdelia or anything like that, so... That's a big point, I think, because SMC right now is... Although two are already gone, so the the well, also you might be. I guess you in some situations you might want a similar chip for an SMC, but you don't have enough members, so then you you would need to get rid of an important piece of your rig, which then you know then the inevitability of your build suffers. Uh, then you can't just break stuff for free forever. Um, so yeah, that's it's going to be I interesting guess. to see if you can assemble those last pieces. But there's also compile. And you could also just hard draw the cleaver, right? Yeah, with separate draw, it's not impossible to just find it normally. Oh, but we're fa fa fast and running out. Just needs to find one agenda yeah. anymore. Yeah, using slash and burn, so putting a face up agenda in archives, but yeah, just... it seems to be an Azif, so it's trashing the Horton possibly for a sandstone on archives. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, just and also keep... gets a sandstone, so it then wants this uh, slash and burn. He needs the cleaver. Yeah, basically this turn. That yeah, also just it. could be an like oh, that's then an agenda on HQ. Like any draw here yeah. almost can win the game basically. Yeah. This is actually um Yeah, I think I definitely think I was overstating how good the runner position is. Because <laughs> yeah, of that. Typically, you have like cloth threat here, where the game is already basically sealed. But without cloth, you can just get fast advanced out on. And notably, uh, Lost Geek on exactly four credits with the Res three cluster. That's Stavka half run territory. Yes. He does uh, does go down to zero if. That is rest, so at least you know they're not scoring out next turn in that case. But it's probably <laughs> too much of a loss anyway. Um, oh, there's the there's Cleaver. Okay. Can I go in with Borig? Checking HQ first. Yeah. So if this is uh, not losing basically anything, and you can still stay safe for F stop. I guess even if you get staff good, they're trashing the. Uh... Sandstone mm -hmm. on archives, so you can then just go steal the two yeah, pointer. Basically. Actually, yeah, it's pretty interesting because uh, at that point, all the protective eyes you have is the hammer and the stalka. And let's say you lose your board, you can still go on R and D and HQ as long as they're on zero. Oh, there's oh, just, oh that's this in hand. Your destiny in hand. Yeah. So that is scary. Last, last click, Ben can get up to five points, but has to run HQ, right? Yeah, you've got to, I think, hope it to hit. Doesn't really matter if Archives just has it, but... The Slash and Burn play makes a lot of sense if you've got the Audacity in hand, but I don't know if you'd do that play if you just have Audacity. Like, if you're just hoping to draw another risky. pointer. No, I think, I think you do for sure, uh, because... It, for, first of all, it forces Ben to do this and is mm. not going to find anything in HQ. So you're wasting all your clicks, is one thing. And But you also, if you don't do it and HQ is a run, then you risk losing your slash and burn. And now you can't even get to five. So I think you, you make sure you, yeah, you, I think you make sure you get to five. And then after that, you um, you, you try to get the three two out. Mm -hmm. So yes. I think in either case, you, you do this to put pressure on the runner. So now the question is just if he has it, which he may not have it. Yeah, and then I guess he wasn't in the agenda. Nice to check R and D to. Oh, okay. Advance! It, yeah, it's had there. It. Had it in yeah. Hand. Wow. Just has it. 
Yeah, he just had it. That was that was uh that was a really good hand. Damn. Wow, do you think you know I think if the game goes two turns longer, the lat's just gonna control everything, but Yeah very, very strong play. And that's so Lost getting the first counter punch for SBT. Mm -hmm. Now two one in the overall standings. Yeah. What's the dynamic of that matchup? Is like the um the ob needs to like try to punish the fact that uh the runner can't get all their tools out immediately. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> um <laughs> I joined as a player. Um I mean, that was a it was a turn eight win and the lat had a full rig. I mean no no console, but Yes. Yeah, that's the part but of interestingly, the plot, though. Interestingly, like you, you want the full rig plus like um plus an imp or plus burner or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's unfortunate Ben didn't see burner. That would that would have just mm -hmm. fixed that. Even seeing a Hermes earlier would have well, I suppose it would have uh, clogged the hand with some ice. But Yeah, it might have helped earlier on. Yeah, the first few scores and the steals. So the other matchup here, we're seeing R plus against Essa. And this it is in... the... It's uh, a I bit think of a different question pretty... from the typical like asset spam. It's just trying to use the hollow man fly on the wall stuff. Basically trying to be like a small Drago. Yeah, a lot of tag punishment in this list. Three market forces, three self-growth programmer. Only one oppo research. But there are three fly on the walls, two orbital superiorities, and one tomorrow's headline. So lots of yeah. agendas that we're hoping to score to give tags. Yeah, and those tags are going to hurt quite a bit. Like bouncing a begemot, bouncing a lamb is basically all of SS credits. The yes. that we're seeing and from you can also bounce uh, marrow. Mm -hmm. So if they take a lot of core, the marrow is bounced. You actually get down to a super low hand size, which could be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, even uh, <laughs> you could even see an orbital superiority kill in theory, but yeah, that could totally be an option. So, oh, just installs. Is this the <laughs> all the like? When I started playing, this would just be like install ping, install Rego, but can't really do the same line this... with just fly on the wall. I think this is a pretty typical um, NWE ESA list. It's two Begamots, two Lambs, one Buzzsaw. There don't seem to be any new cards from uh, Rebellion Without Rehearsal. Yeah, I think it's so just, just like the same ESA list that Lost Geek has been playing for a long time. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the breaking capabilities, it's not that great, right? Because Begamot mm -hmm. doesn't punish ping all that much. Like it's still one credit to break. Uh, Buzzsaw is great against the magnet, but not against the pun house. And then the lamp can help against like everything else, but you have to pay two first. So mm -hmm. it's three at least then to, to break something. Mm -hmm. um, and there is the risk of getting stuff bounced. But I yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, like, if you get both Lamb and Begamot, I guess you have a big rig, but it's also very expensive programs to install. Um, yeah, you uh, you yeah. both. Even then, I think you're going to struggle to get through the fun house, no matter what you use to get through. It's expensive with Buzzsaw, it's expensive with Lamb, Begamot. Yes. Um, two copies of Unsmiling Serevna that on res, you're probably going to be taking the net damage from because you're not going to let them tag you. One thing to point out, though, is that there's Bankar as well, and uh, R plus is a small deck, and you might also be drawing a lot of cards. You could actually like kind of get milled out. Um, they don't necessarily need to have the most efficient rig. They could like Bankar through most of the ice and then hit you with uh, Shastushka, and uh, well, there's Finality as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, Ben hasn't even iced R and D yet, so that's a big risk right now is getting hit with that. Um, 
So you One. really want to shore up the centrals uh, so that you can then safely push from the remote. There's one very important tech piece for the ESSA, and that's one copy of Light the Fire, which, when the Corp is spending eight influence on two copies of Anoetic Void, could yeah. be very key. Yeah, no sure. border control to stop the Light the Fire. Tomorrow's headline Definitely. being scored. I, I think all, um, one big thing is like, you, I feel like you are pretty much forced to clear as Essa in this matchup because mm -hmm. getting your ghost tongue and your marrow uh, self growth is probably yeah or probably even, bad even for anything you. I'd like market for your market forces or something it's going to be harsh yeah I mean they they do give the Essa trigger again but you also have to pay the cost again and then you get very low on cards or in on hand size eventually yeah, I think you want to still keep playing your cards you just can't really get too much Gormish eaten super early. You still need to play your running it. hots, you need, still need to play your finalities. Oh yeah, that's a good question, because like, uh, one thing with Ezra is like, you don't... Uh, ben was talking about this too, like you don't want to build it in a way where you, you take too much core uh, just by your own deck, just by playing the deck, and then you go too low on hand size. Mm -hmm. So I was trying some lists with three running hot, but maybe it was too much. This list is on two running hot. So how effective it is to bounce Marrow, the card giving the extra hand size, might depend on like how much core is in the deck in general. Because it might not be that big of a setback if it's just like, well, I just install it again. I can't get flatlined until the end of my turn. I uh, just install it again and get an ESSA trigger. Um, so it might be a little more tricky uh, in terms of like, is it always good to bounce the marrow or not? It might be there might be a lot of cases where it's not good at all. We're seeing one of the begamots hit the bin and Buzzsaw is already in on the heap as well. Um seven sabotage and we're only on turn three. Um most of this has come from HQ, with two of the seven coming from R and D. Yeah, it's pretty concerning. And Ben has not found an ice for R and D yet. Not really. Um, hasn't really gotten rolling quite yet. Lamb coming down. You definitely need more money and uh, an ice on R and D. I think as the core. Yeah, something like a fun horse on R and D would be huge here. Yeah, it's just you don't have you don't have a lot of cash to like support the rest. I feel like, but maybe if you can if you can do that, then yes. Okay, Ben just prioritizing the jam. Maybe this is like a really important card, like Rashida. Is that one getting bank card though? So you can get through one ice, but probably not. Or basically, well, you can get through both, but. <clears throat> At what yeah, cost? But, yeah, exactly. That lamb can be very expensive too. Oh, tributary again! <laughs> oh, that's every that's game. Cool. <laughs> tributary seems so broke. <laughs> We've seen one game without it so far. Yeah, that does a lot to make Bankar worse. It means like you, you at least need to waste a click to to have your Bankar do something. Mm -hmm. Bankar hit double steel skin. So here you would have to pay five, no, seven to break. You, yeah, like, lands yes, very you, sad. You just never do that. Oof. Very yeah. sad into my point. However, forcing but, this rest is good. Cost Ben three bucks, and then Busso is super good later on. Yeah, corp down to only three credits. Oh, just two scotch. Yeah, if this is, oh, and it's no rest. No rest is, that's, that's very bad for corp. Suggests that that's Can we get the maybe a funhouse or one of the Serevnas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is looking this is looking rough for the corp. I think. Yeah. So many milk cards. Hard in hand. Taking a single on already. Oh, and snipes the spin doctor. doctor. Cold, like. Oh. Although, if the spin doctor is in archives, at least you can shuffle it back. 
but if you're already if you, if archives is already filled with agendas then it's it's super scary here it's also just very scary to lose other spins off of r&d yeah, yeah. you really cannot start you really cannot just hit the like front top of r&d button anymore if you're no. a millisecond spin doctor, you kind of get milled out at some point. Incredible soul read from Lusky there to go and trash the spin doc. <laughs> soul read, just hit r and <laughs> Just like, I'll take a single hit. I'll trash one of the best cards in your deck against me. And yeah, Kiko just clicking for credits. Not what you want to be doing here, especially with server one installed. Yeah. It's it's super, like the, the the corp is just not getting rolling at all. It's mm. it's not having enough money, not getting enough ice. Oh, it's, it is it a is head an on, agenda. on point. So just flying yeah, the wall. Yeah, on the wall makes yeah, sense. Then... Not something you want to go down to zero to score. Yeah, but, but... you still pay like one credit, uh, or get one pay one credit for one point. So. Just yeah, and also the, the runner gets a tag they need uh, to clear, but. Uh, yeah, but as I own a 16 yeah. credit, so not too big. Yeah, of exactly. Problem. It's it's no problem for Lost Geek here to clear this. Yeah, notably, we've seen one labor rights hit the bin, and there's only two in the list, which you really want that buzzsaw to get through Magnet. Yeah. There's also Although... second lamb in the bin and one Begamot, so there is one breaker left somewhere in Nessa's mm -hmm. deck. Like even so, you're not in a hurry to contest anything until there is maybe like uh, an upgrade in the remote and enough money to use Hollow Man, because that's when you run the risk of getting Hollow Man into self growth. Um, before then, if a fly on the wall is scored, this is all that happens. They gain a point, you gain a tag, and they have to spend their turn doing so. Um, like it seems like this this corp list it wants to be the one. Like you need to get some kind of momentum rolling where you're kind of chaining these um, scores, giving tags, and then you're bouncing stuff. Uh, but it just never got rolling in this game. At least there's a lead on points. Um, yeah, uh, Koga asking in chat when is uh, the time call? I think 11 minutes into this, we're, we're probably fine. The rounds are, are actually on time, time? so no, it's just no, no, it's on time. Okay, good, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I like that. That it makes for very high quality games. So if we do have time for it, why not? Yeah, just yeah, I hope these... nobody takes it to extremes. <laughs> like me, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> Just I think the, these... the subtle jab. <laughs> oh, finality! Oh, finality, last click. Last click. Yeah, we have oh. finality. Oh, that's nothing that can tag you at least. Trashing two from R and D again. Whatever these two in hand are, then yeah, want to keep them. Tribunal switching up, but doesn't matter mm -hmm. too much. And Bankar, obviously on R and D oh. in advance. Yeah, the more I look at this, the the rougher this matchup looks for the corp. You just, you there's nothing with enough teeth to to punish the aggression mm -hmm. from the runner. We have a think here on the third card being accessed, Might possibly be a Bologna. Yeah, I think that's a thinker. Other than that, because you're scared of Oppo, I guess. Yeah, that's a possibility. Or oh, just fly on the wall. Oh, um, didn't steal the unseen. Well, or trash. I suppose yeah, it could have been could a. Be. Could be Hollow Man. Yeah, Hollow Man Rashida, only, maybe. It's only two to trash. I yeah, think you, yeah, maybe you're I like. Think, uh, yeah, it is still like two to trash, but you have spent like all played almost all of your econ already. Yeah, I think it would be. Oh, that that's a good point. But also, like, I think uh, at this point, is Hollow Man really something you want to deny? Because I think you're actually happy with the corp drawing a Hollow mm -hmm. Man in this situation. Like, they can't actually defend their remote. Properly, I think. Yeah, best part of uh, it's also it just a lot of money it. to rest. Yeah. Mm. So I think you're just okay with that. And also, there might even there's three copies of it. So you get rid of one for two bucks, and then they could just draw into another one. Oh, bravado! 
So we saw draw, draw. Oh, head could have been. Uh, is for, that the oh, card? This is that unseen. No, I think this is unseen. I believe this is unseen, right? Okay. No, no, it's. Uh, I think this is the card that. The... Just... Oh no! Yeah, sorry. Um, mandatory draw, yeah, draw two, and the final card was stolen. Bologna off yeah, the top. I think wow. it still is a snipe that agenda though. Free kick. Do we left. just sell on R &D? one of those checking archives? There yeah, it is. just running R and D. This is probably game. Orbital superiority. Points? Oh, just two points in there. Only two points. Well, it's not over yet, then I guess. But the thing is, even if you go oppo here, the runner can just clear those tags. So, yeah, hate to say it, but this is looking grim. There is still one copy of Spin Doctor somewhere in the deck or in hand. There's only two spins in archives. Oppo Research yes. also not in archives, which means and, that that yeah, might be in Yeah, both Anotic Voids in archives already. Hollow Man in archives, like... So many I, well, I gotta, tools. I gotta point out, too, though, that there's... I mean, there's still one copy of Labor Rights, and there's also another copy of Finality still in the deck. And mm -hmm. the Corp doesn't have... Doesn't seem to have an ability to to push anything in the remote. So, not really. Yeah, you it's like just pay one card in hand. Yeah, and, and even if you could push one, you still have to get four more points. So, it's gonna be it's gonna be really tough for Ben. Um, yeah, and your cards you can actually push are like orbital superior, to basically only mm. scoring yeah, a fly no on the wall doesn't do really anything. And, no shipment from Vladisabirsk because attack punishment, just uh, the self growth and market re uh, forces. Yeah. No, no fast advance option. So the, the corp would, uh, if, if you push an agenda, well, you, one way you can win is like baiting the, the corp into the remote enough times when it's taxing enough. But there's a lot of the cards that you would be able to bait with that are gone. I think there's this one spin doctor left, there's two hollow men, and there's one Rashida. Um, so if you do that, then yeah, you really got to make the most out of those cards or hope that they don't check when you actually push the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see Bankar on the remote here. You expect Tributary will pull over unless yes. but then it's to run R&D first to pin the Trip to R and D. How many ice? Yeah. We have so there's only one boss saw and it is in the bin. So if you're gonna break the magnet, it has to be with lamb. So it is pretty taxing. Um. Yeah, I think Lost K is probably just digging for the second labor rights to get that back into the deck. There's four ice unaccounted for, so. If you let the tributary draw, it's entirely likely a, a new ice gets installed in server one. Another thing you could do is just install the Begamot, then Magnet is three to break. Yeah, I think three to break is probably sustainable enough. Yeah. And you can just walk through this turn with... Oh, you can't because tribut Tributary is busted as card. I was thinking that they can just bunker through the magnet, but <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Thing you could do... one R&D first. Oh, yeah. there's the finality. Yeah. You could just let this tributary fire. Is none of the subs... Is, is that significant at the moment, I think? Yeah, not really. Just it basically draw a ca draw card. The sabotage was one from HQ, one from R and D. Only ten cards left in deck, and we're seeing. And there it is, just first card from top. Rough. Wow. That well, was after a. Oh, yeah, turn eight. That was both games. Yeah, that was a real uphill battle. The the first game was a lot closer. Yeah, the first game actually <laughs> was a game. This felt so one-sided here. And I believe it's like 2-2 I mean, two, two now. So It is 2-2 two, two now. After the first round being incredibly, I'd say, uh, thinky and drawn out, we had two very explosive games here for uh, round two. 
And next up, I believe it's Koga versus Jantuno. Yes, that's correct. Um, so what do we have in terms of matchups? We got PD versus Oshiko. Uh, and that yeah, Oshiko is, looks like a moshing. Uh, sorry, uh, was it an, uh, a mulch build? Yeah, mulch build. And then uh, it's Asa versus Steve. Mm -hmm. So the PD... Oh, it's a Tukana PD. That's that's un unusual. And it's all oh, right. I remember looking at this before. It's got next activation command to stop botulus and stuff. It's pretty interesting. That's yeah, an um, interesting list. I don't agree with it course... personally, but <laughs> no, that, that that's that's fine. But I think that could be an interesting interaction in this matchup. And uh, corporate hospitality is also interesting. Like it's you can recur maybe Rashida or something. And uh, put it back on the track, get the trigger, you keep momentum. Um, tributary as well. I guess everyone is playing tributary in every list now. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> and I think Which we're switching sense, commentators guess. again. So thank you for Jonald for being here. Do you have any shout outs or something you want to say? Uh, no, just happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for joining. And I think we're getting Jai into the call now. Jai. I see that. We're getting Jai up in here. Yeah, and I'm also just eating and during the stream this time, so you can talk with each other. Okay. Is that Jai? Hey, what's going on? What's hey, up, everybody? how's it going? Okay, okay. Got my my uh, daily hydration in, and uh, we are looks like we are back on schedule. Let me actually open up uh, JNet so I can actually do my job. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually that's a good point. Let me get some water. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is uh, this is your obligatory reminder now that I've joined. Now that I've joined the cast, uh, remember to stay hydrated, people. Uh, everyone except you, Axel. Everyone knows what your idea of hydration looks like. All right. Um, All right, let's do it. Yeah. Are we? Oh, it's already it's up already. Uh, so it's gonna be the Hoshiko. Um, it's gonna be Tuno on the Hoshiko versus uh, Koka on the PD first. This is the one we were just chatting about. The kind of uh, kind of off the wall PD with the uh, corporate yeah. hospitality and next activation command and to Kana. So a tributary as well. So you can, I guess you can tutor out the tributary uh, with Tukana, maybe part of the idea here. And then once you're there, you have a way to, uh, I don't know, <laughs> negate Bangar and do other things. It's yeah. just a really uh, strong eyes. Yeah, that's, I think that's about right. I think the most important thing to note about uh, Koga's list is that there are no uh, spins in here. I think all the all the influence has been spent on Tukana's border controls and tributary. Uh, so really all in on this um, on this Tukana plan. Uh, and I do think no, yes, there isn't true. there aren't even any sprints in this list actually. So there's absolutely no agenda control whatsoever. That's wild. Well, it's a good thing he's not up against the ESA. I guess. Oh yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> that's the one thing, right? Okay. Like yep. We have agenda. we have found agenda control. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yes. Uh, yeah. There's no. Um, oh, it does shuffle back uh, an Ikawa. Okay. But this is also. So one thing. So I, I remember when I was playing PD last year, I had a white yell and greasing the palm. So you had a big way to punish them, letting you draw a lot oh, of cards. Oh. Uh, here oh, we yeah. see only greasing the palm. So it can be a bit hard for PD, because once you rest the gatekeeper early, it becomes this very weak ice. And then um, like it's it's a very susceptible to Bassa, which is in Tuno's list. Um, yes. And it can be hard as PD to bounce back on money. Like if PD doesn't get Rashida, Trank, stuff like that quickly, uh, then you 
you can have a really time actually having enough money to rest your cards. Um, exactly. Which is kind of what we see here from Koga. Like this is a very, very slow start. Uh, and I think uh, you make a good point about uh, the weakness to the weakness to bustle once this thing is out. But uh, I'll also point out that uh, this means that uh, that Tuno can get in through HQ with an Audrey counter without spending any cards, which can be quite. Uh, yeah. I mean that, and over time that, that that like that like trash that that card savings does add up to a lot, especially if you're saving saving your resources for contesting the remote, as we see Koga starting to do so to build server one here yes and uh, another thing is um I, I think maybe intentionally koga is not putting anything in archives so we haven't seen hoshiko flip yet which can be a really big deal as well like if she, hoshiko never flips it's a blank id uh of course mm. you have to do a lot of playing around Ooh, uh, that oh, is, this uh... is really nice <laughs> that is not what you want to see no um, Okay, but you definitely you get this you get this conduit now. Uh, yes. Unlikely, yes, we don't see another rest here. Only so many three cost ice in the P. And deck. this also means uh, Hoshiku is finally going to flip. Yes, and oh, we um, do see a bust for this card, so uh, we can get through. Now we see that we can get to this gatekeeper anytime we want to, just by popping a sample chip. Uh, and you might as well because yes. you know this bust is not doing anything for the rest of the game. True, but we would also, since there's no cookbook, we would need to let the the draw subroutine fire if we're getting through the gatekeeper, um, at least if we're trying to do it on the same turn. Um, so, yeah, interesting. So we get the Rashida fire. Mm, much needed uh, for Koga, and let's uh, let's him uh, threaten to uh, rest R and D ice once again, uh, if if so required, if like. Uh, if Tuno is trying to threaten another another conduit run, although I think uh, Koga will be probably looking to defend the rest of his servers right now, considering the bustle on the heap and the other two rest eyes are all three strength or lower code gates. Yes, uh, yeah, exactly. Access to bustle already, and also there's no Mavarus in this list, so you don't you never get a purge for free. Um, it could also be trouble for the PD potentially. Hmm. Exactly. Uh, like an ideal turn here is is probably you you get to greasing the palm something out. You maybe defend the remote more, and you get like a track or something rolling, because you need more momentum here as the court before the run it starts to snowball. Uh, so this upgrade in server one. So that this deck has uh, two skunk, three trank, and two tukana. Uh, I assume it's not a trank. If not, I assume I, I feel like Koga probably would have jammed something in there already. So uh, probably one of the other two, which uh, which means it's like quite a good uh, pinhole target. And we do see that there's two pinhole. There's there's two pinhole in this Hoshiku list. Although possibly you want to be saving it for another Rashida, but it's hard to identify uh, like what's a, uh, what installs a Rashida and what's a What's a never advanced agenda in this kind of uh, HP list? Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, what kind of card this could be? Like, yeah, Tukana would be a good explanation, but Skunk, like Skunk, is also possible. Mm. I feel like if if it was Trank, it would probably have been Rest already. It looks like yes, Koga exactly. is trying to play around Lago, so he's like trying to avoid putting things in the remote to avoid the draw. Uh, you can't do that forever, of course, but if it's not too inconvenient, maybe it's worthwhile. Sure, yeah. Okay, and we see a direct install in server one, which means which confirms that it's not a trank. Uh, Lego yep. is going to mill a fermenter. Uh, and next activity command. So, okay, so I guess the read here is that we have um, <coughs> this is going to be some kind of Tukanan. To kind of seamless play. Yes. Yeah. And I guess I was wondering here if the next activation command is overkill, but maybe I guess the fear is that boss saw comes out somehow, maybe with the simul chip. And yes. And the the botulus can get you through the other eyes. Correct. Uh, I think I think without the second simul chip installed, that Koga probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't have been felt compelled to play this next activation command. 
Yeah. I wonder though if that's too conservative because you in that in that situation you are spending all of your stimulus chips. Um, okay, interesting. Okay, here comes yeah, the puzzle. It, so running HQ, I guess um, it gets you an access, it gets you the flip. Although um, maybe it's a bluff, but the read from icing R and D more seems like. Uh, you you may not have a lot of agendas in HQ right now. Correct. But, uh, but he has drawn a lot yeah. of cards without uh, without scoring any agendas. And oh, an architect improvement test. Okay, this is this is going to be pretty huge. And it's, oh, that is a snap tributary, yeah. a snap tributary install. And uh, no, sorry, this was a Tukana. This was Tukana instead yeah, of Tukana. ADP. Uh, so. It tutors the tributary, and now you get to look. So this is to you thin out your deck because you don't want to install the tributary with the deployment yes, set. Correct, because you and, always and, want to get it with correct, correct. Exactly. Yeah. So then you and then you get to look at the top five after, and the best thing you can hit is a brand, I guess. Uh, MIC is also amazing, but this is also a possibility. Just yeah, just installing. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll just get a Rachina. Why was this? Um... Oh, it's rest. OK, I see. <laughs> I'm yeah, so yeah. unused to deployment, so you have to rest it. Uh, it's only if it's an agenda, then you have to, I guess, reveal it to show that it's not yeah. restable and put it back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's correct. Uh, OK, so there is one drawback to putting this tributary on archives, which is that uh, we do see that Tuno has one, uh, one hush in its list, which means that if there is a hush that comes out of this tributary, it will be just stuck there for the rest of the game. True, yes. Um, yes, and uh, that's yeah. also a, the, probably the most effective hush target. Hmm. This looks like a good line. Okay, so was, okay we did pinhole this for Shida. That's pretty good. Yeah, the tributary is forcing a botulus to be spent, so you, you're getting value out of it. Um, But the Rashida getting uh, denied is annoying for the for the corp. Yes, mm, I think we also can kind of but, make some assumptions about what ice this is on server one. Uh, <clears throat> Koga ending on four credits uh, probably means this is uh, probably means this is a border control. If probably uh, in any other case, it probably wouldn't have been comfortable uh, trying to push this Rashida off of the ADT behind just a magnet with a bus on the board already. Yeah. I was just about to say that, uh, so even though the corp has been going slowly, I mean, so is the runner, because the runner has been spending a lot of time trying to deny things from the corp. And mm. the runner doesn't have points, it doesn't have money. Uh, but now, Fermenter is coming down to try to make up for that. Um, you probably don't purge at three, but if this uh, stays at four, maybe you get an opportunity to purge as the corp here. Yeah. You also clear uh, the conduit at the same time in that case. Exactly. Although last turn we did see the corporate hospital fetching the Rashida and probably installing what's that same Rashida in server one, uh, gambling that uh, Tuno doesn't have the second pinhole. Uh, there we go, Rashida. So you can purge here, but then you'd have to discard a hell of a lot of cards, and probably that's not all too palatable. But Coco down to up yeah. to nine credits, I should say. Yeah, so in this turn, you definitely can't purge. Uh, well, I don't, I don't think you should. But uh, it's interesting because last turn, if if there was a scorable agenda that's not Ikawa, you would probably have put in in the remote. I might be wrong about that, but it, it was a scoring window. Um, so it's interesting. Um, it might be that Koga actually didn't have any of those tempo positive agendas to to put in the remote. Oh, mm -hmm. and. Tuno hitting steel skin with the Lago, getting three cards is pretty okay. nuts. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a distinct possibility that uh, Koga, I mean, have, having seen the top five cards of R&D with the ADT, uh, needed to pop the Rashida in order to draw those agendas, uh, in yeah. order to make this push that we see here. Yeah, uh, and, then, and I guess the question then is, uh, well, OK, it, it definitely looks like it. It definitely looks like the defense on server one is going to be enough. 
to hold off anything? Because I would assume that this next upgrade is a skunk works. Yes. And it will probably be a bit too much to ask for for Tuno to be able to get through this um, uh, alleged border control plus a skunk, uh, like even with the number of cards in his hand that he has right now. Yes. Uh, okay. Raindrops. Because, the, uh, well, with this amount of clicks, there simply isn't enough money to, to get through a uh, skunk. You could do it with clicks. Hmm. That's correct. Uh, a fermenter was popped this turn, and probably you want to use the symbol chip to get a fermenter back. So one fermenter is installed just from hand. I wonder if the other one should be installed to get the other fermenter back, but it isn't. Um, so it looks like uh, Tuna wants to keep that for a future botulus. Right, that makes sense. Uh, and I, uh, I think I want to call out that Tuno is playing around this tributary uh, quite well. Uh, we see it only broke the uh, install sub with the botulus on that on this most recent HQ run uh, because the buzzsaw, I mean, buzzsaw just eats gatekeeper whether it's zero or two strength, right? And that, sure. afforded, that afforded an extra draw of the Raindrops cut stone, which is a nice touch, I think. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, interesting here that Kolga is taking a moment to think because we were expecting this to be an agenda push and this to be like a snap score. Oh. But maybe he's, uh, I, I don't know, maybe he's afraid of something, maybe maybe a conduit dig or something. Um, mm -hmm. Or maybe Very this beautiful. just isn't an agenda, which would be unfortunate, I think. Yeah. And I mean, if if that was a if that was the only agenda snipe from hand with the ADT of the single access on HQ, that's that could, this would spell trouble for the PD. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, as ev everyone who's ever played PD, like, is uh, like has probably experienced like the the worst feeling is when you know when you get a rush remote ready to go and you just don't draw agendas. But no, yeah. it's just a double. Oh, Lumino! Oh, oh my hey. God! Hey. This is absolutely huge. If there is. Oh, getting one on HQ, interesting, because I was about to say, if there is an Ikawa, you might just be able to straight up push the Ikawa from the from this position. But um, we still could. We have, we have this corporate hospitality. Uh, what are we? Oh, next activation command. Damn. We could see a gen plus NAC right now, actually. What's it? Oh, I see, but it's oh. not played. It's not played, it's just double installed. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, well, we know for sure that this server is going to have a skunk. Yeah. But so one question is why, why are we not defending the remote? Are we not trying to push this turn? That's, um, that's, it's, it is that's quite an curious. interesting question, right? Uh, yeah, because we know that there is an NAC available. Uh, could it possibly be? Uh, it's possible that Koga is playing around uh, the second pinhole. If this is, for example, another skunk install. Um, uh, yes. But if you're going for an agenda push here, yeah, I, I think it's definitely possible that both skunks have been drawn and installed. There's also a possibility that installing more upgrades to make it unclear which one should be pinholed. Um, yes. I guess it would be unclear anyway, because if one of this is an agenda, but at this point, it is like really hard to hit with a pinhole. But uh, but yeah, not putting the ice on server one, It to me, it kind of telegraphs that you don't care that much if they get into server one or not, because here here is the, the potential punish play if if this actually matters. And oh, it's yeah. a brand. It's not a border control. That was a, just a pure bluff from that uh, Rashida, from the Rashida install on the previous turn. So this is, I guess, is why uh, Koga is okay with this, because Bran is taxing. So what what do you need to do here? Well, uh, really, it's only two cards, and Audrey break, and you let them install a piece of ice, or or you click through the last one. And if you click through the last one, uh, you'd have to chip an imp if not an Ikawa is staying in this uh, staying in this remote. So uh, it does click through the last one. So if this is skunk now, you have to pay five to get in. And 
this would be really beneficial for Koga if it turns out there, there isn't an agenda here or it is ECOA. Because then you you're just so okay, I guess you can imp an ECOA. That's that's the line. Yes. I think that's the only that's the only line that's that continues the game. So it, so we will pay we'll pay five for this skunk. It's a just a Rashida, all right. But it's making that's more it. sense now. Because if this is yeah, if this is Rashida, then yeah, and tranquility. Wow. Mm. There's not enough money to trash both the skunk and the trank. You can trash correct. The... And the Tukana barely matters at this point, but it's still trashed. So maybe this is the time to purchase the corp, but then you don't have you might not have enough money to rest anything on R and D. So yeah, another one of those awkward PD positions where you're low on cash. However, if if PD can just get up on cash here and purge, maybe you're doing okay. Uh, I guess there's also uh, it's tricky, right? Because yeah, like if 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 neither of these ice on R and D are resible uh, from the three credits, purging is kind of bad because then you just uh, get run over by conduit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and you do still have this next activation command. Uh, and okay, it is, it is the purge. So that probably signals some kind of some kind of reservoir ice on R&D. And I guess drafter here will be the absolute worst case scenario. Yes. You, however, you can't do drafter into resting the trank. Uh, so you can't do that sick combo, but you can get a, a Rashida back. Um, mm. And also, maybe another important card from uh, from from the from the bin, maybe a hedge fund or something. Um, and I think the purge is probably correct there, because yes, you can replenish uh, virus counters, but only one at a time. And there were so yes. many on the board. Uh, However, if if it is drafter though. Yeah, this is an absolute blow up if this is a drafter, right? Because you get the Rashida back into this server one and you're back in the game. Yes, but also you can't stop the run. So could you just go through the drafter like a billion times and take the accesses? <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, no, actually, mm. well, you can't, you can't, uh, yeah, oh, it, it is, is drafter. the drafter. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. And you can't. You can't steal any ECOAs right now, even if you were to access them. Yeah, that's correct, actually. Uh, I, but I, I, imagine, I imagine that Tuno will not this imp and imp the first card that it accesses, which means that uh, the next uh, the next conduit run, you will be able to break this draft. It would cost you two cards because of the tributary pump, but uh, that's probably uh, acceptable. Yeah. Interesting that this gives uh, Lago a trigger too, just a side note. But yeah, here you oh, get yeah. the imp trigger, you get a virus counter on both of those. And for Mentor okay. to, yeah, some the, money that yeah. the runner will sorely need. Um, extremely needed. But if this Rashida finds a greasing the palm, you might, you might actually be able to just shove you here. Yeah, install a greasing advanced next activation command, and it's pretty rough. Yes. I guess you still need a bit more money, though, because... Um, yeah, uh, you don't the actually have enough to rest the tranquility and greasing, actually. Oh, yeah, you would have to click for a credit first. I think I think here you probably like never advance and try you know you force them to make the call whether to to get into the remote or not because you can charge the um you could charge the Audrey oh no it's he starts with greasing so no trank rest so he feels like he needs the remaining clicks for something else hedge fund and then yeah, yeah, so, so this, this is, is signaling <clears throat> double seamless which is extremely likely with nine cards left in R and D. Yes, um, but the but the nice thing is uh, it doesn't have to be. But I think the runner can get in if they need to. Uh, 
if Tuno wants to, you can. Well, I guess you can't both have two Audrey counters and an imp counter, right? Uh, so if it's an Ikawa, you can't. You you need to be able to imp it, or you need to be able just, to pop. Yeah, or unless you need to you pop the preventer. Exactly. Or or if you have to, like, you might have to just top deck a, a run through tributary and drafter and top deck a, a Tukana from archives to get your second Audrey counter. That's the only way, really, realistically. Like something of a one trash cost. Oh, but even then you then, need to uh, get in somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, like I, probably letting this, like, letting any drafter file on this board is like game losing instantly. So that's not really an option if you want to gain an Audrey counter. Yeah, you don't want Skunk to return at all, and uh, you could also rest Trank for the for forward fires. But also tributary is actually, it's actually live right now. Like you can't break oh. both the subs. Which is an that's, important note. That's actually correct. Oh, and oh, this actually is where breakpoints come into come into handy because so I think uh, one of one of Tuno's uh, like major lines I think is to get into HQ this time and try and imp try and imp one of the uh, two seamlesses that we I suspect are in HQ. But True. with the next activation command plus two strength uh, and the tributary plus two strength, uh, now gatekeeper isn't broken for free by Basso. However, uh, I think you can just run. Could you just run archives first? Because if they if they move tributary to archives, you don't care that much about the subs on that run, and then you can make the run that you actually care about afterwards. That's that's very fair, and uh, I guess then the the punish is if there's another ice install from the tributaries onto HQ. Yeah. One thing that I almost forgot about is the fact that uh, the activation command also raises the strength. Uh, exactly. I mean, you, you mentioned it with the gatekeeper, but like the magnet, you would have to break that with Audrey now. Um, yeah. Or no, and I think you'd need to because otherwise you're spending too much money. Like the bus saw, you would need to it spend is way too much. Yeah, exactly. Seven credits, uh, and you just I don't think you get seven credits and also the clicks to contest here. Like even if you pop the fermenter, you go to six. Um, I guess you could get to six, take a credit, run somewhere, and then yeah, you just don't have the clicks to also steal the Ikawa and the money. Uh, so this is like super. I think we're both really expecting this to be an Ikawa, and this looks like yes. a super nice line from from uh, Koga here. But um, one thing though, um, yeah, I guess one question is like. Yeah, maybe the only out if we're expecting this to be Ikawa is to try to get the seamlesses out of hand. Yeah, I like think that would be about. my intuition as well. You, I, I, I don't know if there's a way to crack this remote, even if you bait, uh, if you bait a tributary uh, onto archives or something. Yeah, uh, just because this brand is strength eight and can't be clicked through, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, probably what that means is. Tributary. Uh, well, you probably have to bait tributary onto archives anyway, and then. Uh, you just have to eat the sub and hope Koga doesn't have another eyes to stick on HQ. Question mark. And then you can break drafter with Audrey and break gatekeeper with Basol without breaking the bank. So what uh, was that line? Uh, like maybe you have to run archives to pull the tributary off, uh, then run HQ, break, uh, break Audrey, uh, break draft with Audrey, break, uh, bus with gatekeeper. Uh, but you of course need to crack this for better first. Uh, mm, and then yes. you're just, hoping, you're just hoping that there aren't any, uh, uh, any reservoir ice, uh, from this tributary subroutine. Yes. Um, you you still run the risk of there just being three seamless, and then another one thing I thought about now is is there a line where you you run archives, you get another Audrey counter, you pop the fermenter, and then you run server one, because you can you can boost. 
this assumes though that that the corp can't <laughs> install any useful ice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, which is a which is probably order, but... not. Yeah, that's that's a bad <laughs> assumption. That's a bad assumption. That's yeah. It, this is this is looking really difficult. Yeah, I, I do think I do agree though. You, it probably starts with uh, click one running archives or some or some combination of starting your combination of runs with archives. Maybe you pop the fermenter first. It doesn't matter that much. Uh, but yes, you do need to get your second audio counter from somewhere. If not, the tributaries will ruin you. I think. Yes. Yeah, and, and Tuno rightfully taking time to think about this. Because this is probably the last, <laughs> or could could be the last turn. Yeah, I mean, this would be a really sick like uh, off work office bluff or something like that, but it probably isn't. Yeah, if if it is, the the thing is, if if it if we're correct, then you can't get into the remote. I guess that the upside then is if they can get in somewhere else, then you're, um, then you're making them spend resources desperately getting into that, cracking the fermenter earlier than they normally would, and, and so on. Um, yes, I, we, do, we do see a, oh, it's click two run HQ, OK. Yeah. Uh, so this probably means tributary is just simply firing. Uh, yeah, it has to. And so you're paying four to get to the gatekeeper. Correct. Uh, and of course, this guarantees your HQ access. It guarantees A, your HQ access, and B, uh, that you're not getting into the remote this turn. Right? So these two things are confirmed by this click to run. Yes. Now you're 100% not running the remote. And you're either hoping it's not ECOA or that you they don't have enough seamlesses. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, so I think I think to know is is gambling that there's only two seamlesses and it needs to hit one of them uh, in order for the equal not to end the game uh, on the next turn. Uh, of course, there is the option of pivoting back onto R&D uh, if you don't hit uh, uh, if you don't hit the seamless on this on this one. And oh, we see actually that there's no no, no tributary action. move actually. Yeah, that's interesting. Curious decision by Koga. I'm, I'm not sure what that implies for the for the contents of uh, HQ. Uh, I think I think even if there is ice in HQ, Koga doesn't want to install it because you're risking them losing an agenda. I guess that's what's happening. Like you you increase the risk of getting an agenda stolen. I, and I think yeah, at this point he thinks possible. the only I mean, way to lose is this, is an agenda getting stolen out of HQ and then one out of R and D. Okay, okay, so, uh, so a seamless is step one hit the seamless. Yes, but is there, yeah, the third is the question. Exactly, is there the third? Because we've almost seen the entire deck. There's only nine cards left. Um, I could, <laughs> I could actually look up the odds of this <laughs> because we have time. Uh, yeah, we we they're pulling up the old hypergeometric calculator. Yeah. Um, so you're running three copies, your deck size is 44, and you, you will have drawn 36 cards. We calculate 30, the odds. 30, yes, 36. Uh, the odds to have three, yeah, the odds to have seen all three is, uh, around 54%. Oh, wow. But okay, uh, to know, going in. Going in and playing around the fact that there may be a third, uh, a third seamless going with the second imp. Crazy. Oh, oh it, it wow. hits the second seamless. Okay, guess the game is continuing. See, wow, interesting. I feel so. Yeah, not moving the tributary in like in in retrospect here seems like a mistake. Uh as probably i think uh what that i think the implication is that is that koga is thinking maybe that uh with with three seamlesses in hand with three seamlesses in the hand there's no there's no odds of oh wait hold on wait this is not an echo excuse me 
Oh. No. <laughs> Whoa. It's just uh, repeating. Okay, I guess we do this again. So there were three symbols. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so there were three symbols. So the dip was correct. Main difference now is you don't have the fermenter to pop now, so you're you're stuck at two credits. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you have any strike funds? Two of them are in no, three of them are in the heap. So you, no, you don't have any strike funds. I, I um, think I think this is why Koga didn't move the tributary because all the agendas in R and D. I think was probably worried about uh, Tuno fainting on HQ and then going back for a conduit. Uh, and maybe you, maybe you don't want to rest this uh, this second ice on R and D. And with eight cards and like assuming there's four agendas in R and D with eight cards, I think yeah. that's a very valid concern to have. Yeah, fair. Of course, uh, Tuno did find the line to punish imping imping two seamlesses out of the six card hand with three seamlesses. Um, that's like uh, one in six chance uh, by my napkin math. But Tuno found the line to continue uh, to push the game for one turn, but then Koga with the second next activation command, and now with the seamless, uh, you know, uh, pre pre play. Now there's three seamlesses in archives already. Uh, there's nothing really left to imp. It's now basically just either you get into R and D, or you get into remote, or you just lose the game instantly. Yeah, and you have to get into R and D twice, at least. In that case, yes, correct, because there's no because you are not stealing Ikawa. one. Yes, uh, unless you go credit conduit and literally just hit uh, oh, Ikawa yeah. Ikawa off off the top. Oh yeah, good good point. I totally forgot about conduit. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so you can actually see three cards. So if you if you get credit here. The thing is, um, there is another ice on R&D, and you don't know if you're able to break that here. That that messes things up a lot, right? Because what what ice could that be? I mean, we have seen only one gate. No, have how? Yeah, we've only seen one gatekeeper. Yes. So it could uh, be gatekeeper, which. I'm which yeah, I mean, none of the ice in this list costs more than six credits to res, and that's exactly the magic number because you can just triple advance Ikawa on three credits. Yeah. So I think Koga one hundred percent reses this ice, like no matter the no matter the situation. Yeah, looking at at the options, it could be Bran, Border Control, Eli, Gatekeeper, MIC, and Magnet, I believe. So, I think all of those is something you have to get through with. Audrey, because you can't click any of them anyway. Uh, yes. And in order to get through both Drafter and that ice with Audrey, you would need to first charge Audrey. So I think, in and, and the reason you can't let Drafter fire is they get skunk and you can't. Well, I guess you could lose two clicks and be okay with that, maybe. So you get credit. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is one line. I was thinking you could. You could just conduit for three cards here. Possible. Uh, I mean, do do we con do we not the conduit or still not be Audrey if we're playing around oh. this? Actually, no. You can't. You can't. Uh, you can't lose the two clicks because then, um, then you can't steal the the Ikawa. So this is yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, so you you charge the Audrey and then you go into R and D and instead of seeing three, you're going to see two, and then you need to see Ikawa and, and a two pointer on that run. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, and if that so doesn't happen, it's over. Audrey. Yes. So to know is gambling everything is gambling everything on this be there being an equal plus one on the top of R and D now. Ooh. Okay, two border controls in our game. And here we go. Yeah. But yeah, this is this is it. This has to be. I think this has to be the win. Yeah. Winning yeah, this is the only. This is the only line that uh, that doesn't lose. And yeah. Tuno has found it. And this is almost always a snap breast. Oh, it's a mid. Uh, oh, I think that oh. just ends the game, right? Oh my god! We saw god. the water controls and the bid. This was the last ice that 
uh, that means that Tuno can't win on this run. Yep. And that that wait wait wait. Oh yes, totally true. Yeah, because if if you yeah. go back in, if you if this trashes itself and you go back in, it it doesn't it, it doesn't matter because you can't steal the echo anymore. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Amazing game. That was so exciting. Perfect Ikawa project. Wow. Wow. Sick. Absolutely sick. Oh, I'm biased, what but... What <laughs> <laughs> an amazing game, in my opinion. Incredible game. Wow. I think on both sides. I think both both players yeah, played exactly. really well. I th- yeah, exactly. I think, I think Tuno did amazing, like, coming up with, you know, lines to save the game, to keep it going. Uh, but, you know, Next Activision Command, pretty good card. Uh, yeah, it was, it was launched, you know, it was crazy how that just turns the tables on the uh, on the mulch because suddenly yeah. you're, you're so reliant on Audrey, whereas usually you can punish these these tiny eyes. But suddenly Audrey needs to do all of the lifting itself, and and you you end up in a in a difficult position. Um, exactly. I will I will be here for the second game. I'm just going to take a very short toilet break. So oh, I'll be right back. Please, to all our dear listeners, please do uh, continue to stay hydrated. I am going to fill up my water myself when uh, when Aksu lets us back into the game. All right. What is happening? We'll see what's happening. We are back in the second game of uh, the Young Tuno vs. Koga, and this one is Acer Group. Uh, this, I believe, is the uh, Holoman, uh, Holoman uh, Acer versus uh, Koga's uh, Awaseras crew. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Ahuasera's crew, Steve Cambridge. Uh, this just looks like an ice destruction deck. Yes. Uh, and I've actually played I... against this deck. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yes. Uh, or did I? No, I watched a replay. Uh, yes. Uh, so I've seen it in action. I haven't played against it. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, although I, maybe this... Because um, basically, if you get the Ahuasera's crew, um and enough money you you kind of just negate ice um but maybe an asset build is what you need 
to punish that, go pretty fast. You force them to find their tools quickly. I'm not sure. Um, so how do we think this matchup will go? Um, uh, so it's interesting because intuitively, uh, stuff like our Sarah's crew is uh, pretty good against like the one ice remotes that Acer likes to set up, at least for its like economy assets. Uh, yeah. But of course, I mean, there's just always more ice and stuff like uh, we see that one powers that be in the deck can reinstall ice, etc., etc. Uh, of course, the obligatory one times tributary in every deck it seems nowadays. Uh, yes. Also, that being said, yeah. Hmm? Uh, go ahead. Also, yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I was just going to say that, like, uh, this Asa seems pretty vulnerable to do. Uh, skunk is the best way to like deal with that, okay. and maybe that's what we see here. Yes. But there's a lot of upgrades, so it's also hard to know which one you're dealing with. Like this could even be Bobo. Oh no, <laughs> am I seeing that? Uh, okay. So we can confirm it is not a Volvo, actually. Yes. Well, at least um. Yeah, it forces Tunu to rest an expensive ice early on. So that's mm. something. Losing the two clicks is something you don't want to happen, but still. Yeah. So this uh, upgrade on HQ is still could be um, Mavarus, uh, Mavarus, Skunk, uh, of course, and a Hollow Man as well. Mm. Yes. Oh, Zen, Zen this chip is early. Is, yeah. Early Senate ship is really, really good. Yeah. And it's a matchup where you can't be, you can't really be punished for the, for having the core damage. Yeah, that's, that's true. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is, this is very unfortunate for Koga because he just trashed a bubble off R&D, which typically you don't yeah. want to trash it off, R off R&D, but he was trying to deny Bobo, but then another Bobo shows up. For sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, but okay, it, um, yeah, the click compression. I mean, this is a lot of value from running centrals, actually. Yes. Uh, okay, Volga contemplating whether to compilation this card. No, no action. Mm -hmm. And running this walking prototype glass click. I suppose there's nothing that much that uh, that excludes you on this run. Uh, and prototype is the trash here. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. You're not so, worried about Gatekeeper or Drafter there? Yeah, I know, right? I, I guess, funnily enough, the Omicor being on exactly one counter plays around exactly the one Lycian multi munition in the, in the Acer list. Is that is only funny. one strength? It is only one strength. Okay, that's crazy. But but like I still feel like there's a lot of ice you wouldn't want to hit in Gatekeeper and Drafter. Ablative is okay, I like in is okay, and, and the expensive ice are all okay. Oh but um nom nom there goes a Mavaris. Yeah. And that's very cool actually. So normally uh normally Omokwa on the on the turn that you trash the math uh would uh would get purge and you wouldn't be able to get your counter but then you've compilation it you're not clashing it so you get you do get your counter and now uh and now we are in threatening uh threatening doof territory actually exactly yes i think that that's a good reason to charge these up um koga is the one downside is like okay you don't have a lot of cards and you're pretty broke uh i guess that's two downsides <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But um, if you get, what is it that you're missing here? Yeah, you want to be able to do, and you want yeah. Miss Bones to be able to trash all these trashable cards. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, we may see we may see just a run in HQ now. Uh, maybe maybe that will be last click. Uh, just to force, just to force the make, uh, just to force a uh, skunk rest. Maybe that's not good. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a bit tricky. Yeah, last click. Uh, I think last click um, is what you go for because paying three is not really 
I don't think you're affording it here as the runner. Yeah, so you, uh, you, but you just get you only the, one. The one crit, and yeah, you force a scum crest if it is one. Exactly. Um, there, there are two Mavers in the list, uh, so this uh, cupulation doesn't block all all uh, mid run purging, but uh, it's a lot less likely that the other one has already been seen. Hmm. For sure. Oh, we, we last week checked on server one, okay, not HQ. No, he, he has a, a click left. So, oh, yeah, that's, that's true. It's yeah. a Nico campaign. Okay, that's a, that's a good thing to hit. And we are last week, last week checking this. Mix. Okay, very nice. Yeah. So we will see if this is a, if this is a skunk or not. Uh, yes. I guess a nice thing about uh, forcing a skunk res on this run is that if there's a skunk on server two as well, uh, then you're going to get hit by the unit. Yeah, exactly. Or it will, but then you have to trash the one on HQ. So yeah, forcing mm -hmm. skunk reses uh, is always is always nice. Oh, and it's not a it's not a skunk. It's all right, not a skunk. So maybe is it a, this is the hollow map. A, yeah. So Vitruvius, okay. Oh, it's a second map. All right. Uh, okay. Oh, so the bad news. Glamorous. It's the second. It's the bad glamorous. news. We, yeah. The, the bad news is we got uh, we got perched. The good news is uh, I guess there's no mid run purges for the rest of the game. Right. But there is hollow man advance advance. Oh, simple advance off what off is very nice. <laughs> But yeah, tempo wise, okay. I was about to say it's a nightmare, but no, no new card was installed in server two, so at least we know they're not scoring um, now. Like Tuna is not going to score now. Uh, yeah. Next turn. Oh, Ooh. excuse me. Oh, and we can just. Is, we... Oh, this is big though. We're going to blow. Yeah. Uh, we're going to blow centrals right all, all the way open of this one. Uh, Crazy. and I wonder if I wonder if uh Koga pops the compilation now for this uh for the double access. Is this a thing? I mean, we do see the second the second math in the bin already, so it's an interesting question. I feel oh. like if Tuna oh, had it an it agenda, up, yeah, uh, Tuna would have put it in server too. Yeah, I mean, we do see an Ikor project which elect was elected not to be installed. Maybe, maybe we'll see it installed uh -huh. this time. Yeah, Ikawa is interesting. Oh, another HQ install. This has to be the scum now, right? Um, I guess I guess uh, Tuno just wanted to uh, stop the Omakua farming. Because uh now Mavaris is in archives. So if there's ice on HQ and R and D, you can stop the Omakuas from uh, and the leech from getting counters. Hmm. But that's because uh, this is the the whole point of the deck. Because you have the crew, you can you can um, punch holes in the in the corp defenses. Exactly, exactly. But I mean, uh, we assume this is. I believe all the uh, upgrades are accounted for. We see two Volvos, two Mev, uh, another Hollow Man, and wow, okay, that was a lot of installs. Oh, yeah, that's scary. That is really scary because the. Yeah, as 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 I said, like the one the main downside for the runner is it's so expensive to do all this stuff, like the crew and the time you're spending getting the virus counters. Um, so if the corp is going this fast, you 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 are in trouble because if you yeah if you don't find the time to get these viruses up and up, and you barely even have the money here to to break anything, um, yeah, then then it's a it's a super top spot. Yeah. And I don't think, yeah, there is, uh, that, yeah, I don't think there is any ice that's really threatened by just one Omoko and one leech counter, other than, of course, the Lyceum multi munition, but that's like whatever. Uh, there's a blade of barrier, but yeah. Mm. And, okay, hold on. We are seeing a spin rest. Okay, I think we are going to be seeing a working prototype activation uh, and bouncing this daily cast, which is like, absolutely devastating. Absolutely devastating for Koga's economy. It is, um, it is annoying, but also, at least nothing is being scored right now. <laughs> yes, and we do know there is still an Ikora project in HQ. Yes. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Um, 
Okay, just getting enough money to go for a gamble. Hmm. Koga needs to find a way to like run centrals. Because that's that's how you get the, the turtle up and running again. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's how you get all your run economy, your Steve trigger, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But now with double eyes on his yeah. use 17 credits for two no. Uh, yeah, and HQ looking so sealed up. I think the one point of vulnerability is RD right now. Until you can yeah. charge the turtle up, but then you probably need another crew for that. Yeah, so fully operational, and we are spinning it back. Uh, okay, so I think we can confirm this ice. This upgrade on it already is another math, as we've said. Uh, sorry, uh, it is another uh, skunk. Uh, but I yeah, think yeah, given all the upgrades we've seen, I think it's. It actually has to be that. Yes, by process of elimination. Uh, but yes. server two, I think we are finally seeing this ECOA push uh, 18 yeah. credits later. Tuna was very hesitant to push it right away. Kind of made sense, I guess, to like seal off the options for the for the runner. And now that like the runner doesn't have uh, good ways to punish, except, I guess, getting into R&D right now, um, yeah. Tuna is trying to push the agenda, or yeah. maybe Tuna drew an even better agenda to push. So this could be off-world, and then you can go for the Ikawa as the last one, which is the the very best scenario. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if if it's an if it's an off-world, you know, you just hollow man plus advance and then and then gem gem the uh, the Ikawa last click. But okay, boomerang. That's one way yeah. to crack centrals. Exactly. Another mix. It's not fun. However, this doesn't. That this doesn't. Well, no, it doesn't solve the issue quite yet for Koga. But it's something. It's something. Maybe you yeah. need to get the the other daily cast down here. I mean, entirely possible. But I think uh, right now the thing is with this. Question mark installed from in server two. Uh, two nodes threatening to end the game in two turns, just by volume yep. activations. Yes, that would be. Uh, that is definitely the <laughs> the main problem. Uh, yeah. So if this is off world, Penso, which is that Italian? I'm not familiar. I think that means uh, thinking. Uh, it's similar to a Spanish word, piensa. Ah. Uh, so I assume that's what it means, I'm thinking. Or you're thinking, I'm not sure which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> but a spin res yeah, here it, too, that's... It, so, yeah, it, no, it, it is a score, like a it is a score. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wait. No, it's not oh, wait, hold score. on. Oh! oh. Wait, so it is. Oh, it's a okay. Okay, so we have. How is that be fetching something? A math. Oh, that is nasty. Wow, that's that's just rude. That is just rude. I mean, we could gem the Ikawa again. Top play by Koga. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I guess, do we, yeah, I think to you know, just strongly considering this Ikawa install, just that just instantly ends the game. Uh, of course, it kind of doesn't have that many clicks or that many credits to work with. It's exactly just one credit. You have only one credit to work with, I should say, if, uh, uh, if you're going for this play, uh, let alone not having, not having the credits to, uh, to yeah. res, uh, to rest my virus, but yeah, okay. So this is this is the more conservative line, just fully operational, gain eight credits, pretty decent. Yeah, I guess no reason to rush. Uh, I mean, Bobo helps with the resting of the ice in front of the server. Um, so even if you're low, that's fine. But you need you need at least five credits to score out left over. So you can't you can't both use Maverus and score out them. So mm. this makes sense. Yeah. And it oh, and he was like... the, actually the, the threat for, funnily enough, the threat for text of Volvo 
uh, coming into play, re reducing the cost of Mavaris by two in the root of the server. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> before going on to HQ. That's very cool. Uh, OK, second crew coming down. OK, and yeah, I think I think this is very wanted by Google. You kind of have to uh, challenge HQ because you know that Igwa, if, if that Igwa enters server 2, it's probably just lights up. So you have yes. to uh, you have to make this play now. Uh, yeah, if you manage to snipe the Ikawa, that actually that actually makes a really big difference here, because it's certainly you're really turning the tables. Now now you're at five points. Uh, you only need one more agenda. Oh, and if if you get in here, you can you can use cupulation. However, there oh, that is, is Mavaris. Yeah. That is very true. So, yeah, so I mean. It is very likely of that you actually just don't get it in. Is, yeah, yeah. With the Volvo discount, it's almost certain that Tuna can rest two eyes on this on this HQ. Let alone, uh, like you can just rest this gunk if if you feel it's absolutely necessary. So so many yes. so many tools at uh, at your disposal to to deal with this. Uh, but okay, a bit so, Yeah, it it looks like even here, like the play is probably uh, you purge. And yeah, here we go. Oh. Oh, I think what's happening is that we are. Uh, hmm. I think what's happening is Tuno might be considering purging on approach and then using ablative to reinstall the virus in server two, or maybe in HQ. Oh no, you can't do it in HQ in server two, I guess. So that's yes. like, that's like a double lockout. That yeah. That explains the um, why the sequencing there matters, um, and and also it, it is it's really frustrating because with with the Mavers pop, in order to break this uh, like tiny ablative barrier, you would need to use the crew to take a tag. But there's still another yeah. ice on HQ, and basically everything is an issue. Um, yeah, I guess drafter. No, even drafter is a problem because if you then that lets you install Ikawa in the remote and you you can't yeah. you can't let so, that happen. So you can't you can get back one uh, Amoko counter, but things if you run back HQ, then the exact same thing is going to happen. You're going to get purged again. This will cost three credits, of course, uh, because it's not discounted by Volvo anymore. Yeah. Nice line though. Like this is, although the you you can't um, you can't steal the the Ikawa. You're on your last click. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, but it is a gatekeeper. And this is going to fire. Important, though, is um, Tuno does not have the ability to score up next turn. So at least we'll right. see one more turn for... Yes, uh, well, we'll enter the remote, but that's, that should be it. Uh, yes, and the, uh, I mean, the Mavericks here will seal the deal because you can't get into the remote, right? Yes. Uh, the silver lining is that uh, with this combination of ice on HQ, next turn you are, you, you can get into HQ next turn. Uh, but then by the time the equal won't, won't have been, you know, long gone by then. And that's a problem. Yes. And, and also I the think... corp has the tools to get rid of any extra agendas. That would be a liability with the spin doctor. And if you're forced to get into R&D, I, I think that it makes things difficult because you don't have any multi-access anymore. Yes, that, that and, only I mean, applies to HQ. Yeah, I mean, speaking of speaking of getting rid of stuff, the working program is 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 fully charged again. That crew is just getting bounced back, and yeah, there we go. Yeah, and that's gonna waste two credits and a click for Koga as well. Um, so you probably don't have the time to even to even yeah. use that. Yeah, and probably Volvo goes back onto the remote this time. Uh, yes, yes, there we go. Uh, and yes, so I'm not sure where Koga is getting <laughs> uh, getting these uh, central accesses from. I, probably the best bet is R and D. There's eleven cards left, and I could, uh, we just saw this gatekeeper activation. Yeah. Um... You need some miracle accesses here. 
but yeah. do you even have the clicks for them is, is the question. Because um, you, you can charge one time on archives, but if you then go R&D, Mavers can be popped. And if you're not breaking MIC, you're losing the remaining clicks. So that doesn't really yes. work. Um, so if there so, are any outs, I'm not seeing them at the moment. Yeah, so the, the only out is probably HQ. Uh, but I can't, I can't imagine, like, if, like, I think any ICA is kind of serious that you this even, even, like, you know, we've been memeing about Lysian multi the entire game, but a, a, <laughs> a, a, a Lysian rest here with a math pop is, is just straight up game ending as well. Yes. And on top of that, if there wasn't a way for Tuno to seal HQ, all of the agendas could have been dumped into archives and just shuffled back. Yes, because you're not getting into R and D, I think. Exactly, because they're still spinning. Yeah. So this is just super rough, because yeah, even in the case if there was, uh, let's say there was like double crew, so you could get MIC down to zero, you could still just pop the MIC, and you wouldn't have enough clicks to steal two agendas. Um, yeah. So here, here is just, I think, mathematically impossible. Yeah. Unfortunate to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think it's it is actually mathematically impossible to get two crew down because we know one is on the top of the deck. Uh, oh, which has just been drawn. So yeah, there's no way. Uh, there's no yeah. way you can double install and run any Good server point. on this PC. Yeah, I forgot working prototype bounces to top of deck. That's that's really important. Get there the is, crew. The get the run on HQ. Um, the thing is, oh, actually, so one thing that in theory that this will not work because I think there's just too much ice. But if you do get in, even if it's the last click and trash the hollow man, then the Ikawa can't be scored on the next turn. So that yes. would be one way to buy you more time. But um, uh, uh, that would require having a pinhole threading, probably of some sort. Um, yes, uh, which yeah, is not, not in the list. Not that I'm looking at it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I think You're, this is just lights out. This is lights out, and that's going to tie up. Um, that's going to tie up uh, the match. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, maximum yeah. excitement for the for the final two games. Yes. Yeah, Could actually end in a to, in a draw yeah. and or a tiebreaker. I'm not sure what the rules are for that. If we, yeah. we have some tiebreaker uh, planned. Uh, I mean, if I had my way, if uh, if it was if it ended in a four four draw, we probably just you know we just say screw it and go again, <laughs> uh, go again same time same place next week. Yeah. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> or just be like, everyone's a winner, OK? Everyone's a winner. <laughs> and there it is. Yeah. The there it is. There it is. Well played. That was that looked very difficult uh, from the runner's side. Well played mm -hmm. by Tuno. Absolutely savage plays, just shutting down all the counterplay uh, from the yeah. runner. Yeah, very, very nice micromanagement of the, the upgrades, the, the MEV, the Volvo. Uh, like you know, uh, like resing the extra holo man to get the working product counter and so on and so forth. Very nice. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It was very, very precise and nice, and like not not giving Koga any outs. So that exactly. that was super nice. Very clean. Oh yeah, yeah. And they're siblings. Oh. <laughs> That's an interesting fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. Well, it's gonna it's gonna come down to Dare and Tempest. Yeah, I, that should be an extremely fun. And I think I think we do have some quite cool decks, uh, quite cool decks coming up from our final two competitors. Uh, looks like uh, Dear is on uh, Los, yes, uh, and R plus, and Tempest is on PE as well as uh, this looks like. Hoshiko, uh, looks just looks like this wreck Hoshiko of turbines. Okay. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like it's an R plus that that plays like econ agendas instead of uh, 
Crypto Crash, and then it has Hammer, I believe. Yeah, Hammer. Yes. And it's trying to, yeah, punish that. Um, yeah. Well, actually, it's asking if I'll stay on for the last round. I, I could do that if, if, <laughs> if I wanted. Yeah, I think three uh, people on commentary is fine if Jai wants to stay on as well. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's perfectly fine. All right. Let's, Let's go with this. Let's just. And we got okay, cool. one person dropping from commentary today, sir. Sure, yeah. Let's do that. So it I says... think which side is starting? I think. Uh... Dear will corp uh... first. So it will be the R plus against the Shoshi call list. Right. So good old. Just a <laughs> reg Hoshiko. Love to see. Yeah, it. super reg Hoshiko. I think there's going to be some interesting dynamics in this uh, matchup. For one thing, there's public trail, um, which is not that common of a, or traditionally has not been that common of an include. So that allows you to, if they run and they're below eight, you can trust off them or you can sub growth them. Market forces too, but that's that's not the biggest of punishes. So Oshiko needs to consider when to install resources and when to install high cost cards, and probably wants to get like their drip down very early, um, yeah. as a way to offset the the cost of things getting bounced potentially. And maybe you don't even install the maw because it's such an expensive card. And I I do think it is it is worth considering. Uh, just looking at the ice, uh, the ice suite in this R plus is very different from like traditional R plus ice suites that we've seen in the past. We see, of course, we mentioned the two hammer and we see the one Bran, one point oh, uh, extremely uncommon uh, in NBN. Uh, that's not as Mari, I would say, and even even in as Mari, you don't see it that often. Uh, but yeah, and a lot of this ice is just straight up un untenable to break without a turbine down. I mean, I look at this four strength hammer and the and the two mimics in the list. Uh yeah, it's not great, you know. And yes, you got two boomerangs. I know hammer has text. You can only break one subroutine or with non, uh, non killers. These are uh, so these are. This is interesting because I was actually I was talking uh, to to Tempest about this yesterday, um, and and actually hammer until you have unless you have a turbine down, you can actually just run through it because it or unless you have a fermenter or a turbine it doesn't like it gives you a tag but it can't trash a non uh, anything that's a breaker so your bus or cleaver mimic are all safe okay it trashes a resource um, and, uh, sorry mm. it trashes a resource so you kind yeah, of have to uh, yeah, watch out for it's going to depends on if you have an important resource down mm. or if you have uh, an important hardware down like if you install them all so this might be another reason not to install them all um, but there might be a few cases where hammer is like, it might be annoying, but maybe you're still okay with going through it without the breakers down. Now, if you do get all your breakers down, turbine and mimic, then you're breaking the hammer for only three, which is quite nice. But before that you can't break it at all. So yeah, yeah. it's gonna be interesting to see how good the hammer is here. Yeah. Hammer might be a bit more of a tech call against like mulch lists. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think, I mean, you know, in in the the RWR scoop season, we were looking at Hammer and said, "Wow, this is this is a pretty good ice, you know, tech against uh tech against much list, as you say." But uh, the, the subroutines teams themselves, uh, when they're not against much, is like okay. It's like only okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't do that much against red lists, uh, especially because like the the one tag subroutine is a bit uh, like random. Uh, but you know, R plus is you know a pretty good place to make that uh, tag up, which means something. And I look at it, and I'm reminded of uh, like uh, the other Wayden ice that uh, used to be uh, imported into R plus list in the past. If you recall, Mausolus back in the day, mm, when yeah. Drago was still out and about. And that's it reminds me a lot of that. Yeah, it's similarly annoying to break. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, one one big thing though is uh, positioning matters a lot because Banker can get through it pretty comfortably. Um, so, yeah, how if you can put it in a backwards position or not, 
which normally you wouldn't want. You would want it forward, but because of back R, you you know that that might change things. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure and you know. Yeah, D will make those adjustments accordingly. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, D. Um, so the the thing D, uh, D has going for them is uh, VSA is like kind of a counter to Bankart until the bus saw hits. So you have this window where Bankart isn't fully effective because it doesn't comfortably get through the VSA. Um, mm. So the, uh, the the runner starts getting really comfortable when you have Bankart and bus saw, and then eventually you need to find the rest of the rig to actually like break multiple pieces of ice. Um, but yeah, it's gonna if the runner can set up fully, it will be rough for the corp. So I think it's gonna be a matter of how much the corp can slow down the runner or like outpace the runner. Right. Because if you get to sit on this drip as a runner and establish this crazy efficient rig, that that might be trouble. I will note that the econ in this list seems a little bit light if I'm reading this correctly, it's, it's hedge fund, uh, one market forces, which is like not really econ, uh, yeah. a single mm -hmm. YDL. Uh, I, I totally so agree. You're also getting credits from all of the tags, so it kind of secures it a bit, I guess. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you, but uh, I still feel like there might be a risk of this, this list running pretty poor. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a price you pay for playing a lot of tagging cards and tag punishment cards. Like the extra yeah. slots in public trail, um, so you, it, at times you might have trouble funding that, and also you have Hollow Man, which is quite like, um, I guess your agenda suite is really trying to compensate for the lack of money in the rest of the build. So off world office to offset all that cost, yeah. so you can Hollow Man without mm -hmm. losing money, because otherwise Hollow Man would be really expensive to make use of. Um, but with this build, it's it, I I think that's the reasoning. It's like well. I'll get I'll get it from the agenda scores. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, basically, all the agendas in this deck are like tempo neutral ish to score. Balona gets your five prints back. Uh, hit yeah. line and fly on the wall with the tag and the uplast trigger. Yeah. Exactly. But we'll see how uh, how D uh, intends to play this out. Uh, I think the opening turns, and I, I think it will be determined quite by the opening turns and like what ice that they start with, uh, like starting with a ping versus starting with like a, a, a hammer, which isn't even ending the run, for example, uh, is going to inform like how this early game shapes up, as well as uh, we've talked about already, like what are Hoshiko's early game breaker solutions? Do you have the Banha? Do you have the Busso? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. There's uh, three bank uh, bank cards, so um, Hoshiko is likely to find one reasonably early, especially given that you have Marching Steel can draw too. Um, but if you don't find bank card, that could be a problem. Also related to what we said about Hammer before, mm -hmm. I guess you are you are afraid of the companions getting trashed because you you're relying on those for your like your. Yeah, it's like econ the inevitability. Of your yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, interesting. So D taking some time to think right away. Was mm. there a mulligan? Yeah, yeah both, both players are mulligan. mulligan. On both so places. interesting. Uh, with a, a list like uh, D has. It is very possible to get a hand that's really bad mm, if yeah. you get like too many of the of the operations at once. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if your hand is like you know two two self growth or market forces, one hollow man here, yeah, right. then it that kind of yeah. just doesn't do anything. Yes, but it looks like it's oh, way of course, better just than going that. Straight. Oh <laughs> my! Double yeah. install, double yeah. install. But can you actually protect um, both of those? Just four credits. It's, it signals. It heavily signals Rashida. Mm -hmm. And that the eyes probably and, something like ping and magnet could be. Yeah, presumably. 
uh, at least one I, ping. Well, I think I think what this does is it plays around boomerang. Um, mm -hmm. So if um, if you boomerang here, and let's say only one of the eyes is relevant, you only have fifty percent chance to boomerang the correct eyes. Mm. Yeah. Although I, it's it's it is kind of it's pretty interesting because I don't even know if you want to be that aggressive as the runner as to just instantly boomerang here, but maybe you do. Need to is stop it, on a shade that with that stun where you, could be an option. Uh, I mean, is there ever a world where you face check first? I mean, because the thing is, if let's say it's a VSA into ping, right, which is the uh, quote unquote natural uh, natural ordering, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you are only getting two credits back uh, from the R plus trigger if you're getting if you're putting two tags on turn one. Well, I would say given given that it's two eyes, I think you just never run this remote this turn. Uh, you're going to get the Hoshiko flip, probably, and then you're also getting as much drip down as you can, I think. Yeah, I think um, it's, so it's just gonna... picking up and getting that one check somewhere. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, yeah, I mean, you do, we, so we do assume that this is a Rashida that we are, you know... Yeah, I think it's like 100% about... Rashida. I mean, there is, uh, there is a world where, you know, you can... Uh, where D goes turn to... Uh, seamless advance, seamless advance, uh, market forces or something like that. Yeah, that is <laughs> yeah, possible. But that oh. would be a pretty custom hand to have like se <laughs> seamless market forces, ice, ice, and uh, tomorrow's headline in the opener. Yeah, tomorrow's headline or fly in the wall. So at least there are like two of each. So Tempest sees. Just a spin doctor. Uh, the spin doctor, which could be potentially be rough to trash on your first turn. Yeah, especially given that you can get off yet. Yeah. yeah. I think you kind of just have to leave it here. Yeah, it's pretty risky trashing this going low and then installing whatever you're about to install. Because. Mm -hmm. I assume Leopold is about to install some some companions. Oh, oh, it is a trash. Okay, a trash. Oh, that is a little surprising. Like I, I, a lot of the time, anymore. like you can can't play anything from three credits. Uh, you can play your companions. But. It, I mean, it, I think, it, yeah, it, it's a really interesting, I think it's a really interesting sequence of events from both players on this, just on this turn one already, because like the very fact that there was a spin doctor uh, in hand uh, after, a, uh, after a mulligan for D and they elected not to install it on turn one to, to get the draw to, if, with what looks like a, like a fairly uh, like average to below average hand. Uh, it's very curious, and then similarly, similarly, Tempest, like going for that HQ access, which is you know expected for turn one Hoshiko, but uh, not like decided to trash this spin doctor. I think is very curious. Uh, like surely you can't like. Uh, okay, Banhart, that's a really good start. I think more surprising was that uh, he trashed it and, and then was thinking for a while because I think if you're deciding to trash, you have to have already planned out the rest of your turn there. Um, but if this isn't oppo, I guess it's it's fine. But it looks mm -hmm. like a very unfortunate hand yes, we're not a for Rashida. the runner. Yeah, it's not a Rashida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really surprising. I mean, is this really? Could it really actually be the the custom so seamless? Uh, yeah, seamless like a he headline seamlessing a headline, or if you even let's say you get double seamless head uh, seamlessing uh, an off world is also great. So there's there's some options, I guess. A cred cred awful. Okay. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. This 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 is that this is. Card is everyone just like hoping that Tempest would like run it or something. 
I don't think so. Because if you hope they run it, you don't put two yeah, eyes in front. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I I, th I think there is a non-zero chance that it's a. I mean, given this given this line, I think there's a non-zero chance that it's a. Uh, it's an awful office, mm. and that will kind of explain why uh, D is so intent on protecting. It if it's the, the only icon, if it's the only icon that they have. Yeah, and so, still Tempest can really challenge it if it was that overall office here. I mean, exactly. That's it's, why that's it's... that's why it's double eyes in the first place. Yes, but we see double clear and fermented. Okay, I mean that's a reasonable response in general. Yeah, but getting the fermenter down early is super huge here. Yeah, that's a big deal. Seamless, but, oh, was... seamless. Is it double overall office? Oh, it is the overall office. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, so that that makes sense. Down. Yeah. So, wow. It, well, this was, there was a pretty sick mulligan. Like, just thinking about it, there's a pretty sick mulligan by uh, by the just mulligan into, you know, going for a double ice off foot office into seamless seamless play. And and the thing is, this has to go through, right? This if Because if this off foot office gets stolen, that's like the only econ that you're seeing in, like, for example, let's say the top 10 cards. And that's like really bad. And yeah. I mean, who who knows who knows when they drew the the uh, the oppo if it was in the opener or they top the kit on turn two after the uh, after the spin trash, but in either case I think uh, definitely not unhappy with that sequence of events. But now tempest running back HQ for the flip. The brand okay. Yeah, pretty costly here, Torres. I don't think you have enough credits though. Really open that at any time soon. He, just it looks like it. he just has incredibly slow start. It's no moshing, no sure gamble, no dirty laundry, no raindrops. Yeah, probably like, like break, yeah. some breakers in hand, maybe just like yeah. plugging it up. Like just looking at the list, what. The you you might be sitting on breakers, turbine, maw, and maybe like boomerang that you just can't make any use of. Mm -hmm. um, even discarding a a, a bank har. So it's super super rough for the runner. Yeah, hopefully. But, and and also for D getting this off world office uh, scored as the first thing is like, it's huge, again because we were talking about the lack of money in the build. Mm -hmm. So, uh, getting in, instead of uh, trying to have the money to defend the score, just getting the score out of the way to start with, and then that enables your other places is really nice. And now this is likely, it's it's looking like another shove backed up by Hollow Man, and if the corpse gets this going, um, then they can potentially start like you know playing tag punishment cards. Yeah, so, I mean, so we do we do know one of the cards in HQ is a brand, so not that many uh, options uh, for tech punishment at the moment. But of course, you know, the R plus can draw cards, so there's always that. Uh, and if, let's say, if the top three cards of the deck have self-growth program, uh, that's quite bad for this, uh, for this, like, three-counter fermenter if Tempest doesn't choose to pop it this turn. Well, assuming that the, uh, uh, D just installed an agenda that gives a tag, um... It, I mean, of course, another good option is just to score another off-world here. Scoring a Bologna is also nice. Like getting to five that quickly. Um, okay, Paladin comes down, daily cast. Oh, just the coming up. Yeah. And so making making the read that, uh, yes, this might be a tag, a, a tag agenda, but... Uh, but the odds of there being a tag agenda plus a hollow man, which is possibly quite likely, but then that in addition to uh, tag punishment, given that we know one of the cards in HQ is less likely. So taking this chance to get the gaming cards down before it gets bounced or resource trashed or something. So, uh, and of course, getting the flip back. So I think, you know, given maybe two more turns, Tempest can get back into like a reasonable econ position. 
yeah. but he has he to survive time. the next two turns first. Yeah. So, question if is if D will 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 give him that time. Yeah, it really depends on what in server what's in server one. Is it like Hollow Man plus tag card, but it doesn't look like it. I think that gets instant played if it's in there. Yeah, if it's like headline, you get that you get two buck uh two bucks back and you can trash Paladin and Daily Cast, probably. Mm. Yeah, or Although, if, if you have seen maybe, maybe like that you too yeah. low, I'm not sure. I I might be I might be tempted oh, to Oh whoa. Oh Maverus. So it's gonna be a pop after it ticks to four. This is actually quite expensive for so for the I corp to do. It looks like a Bellona then. Um, um, it, it could still be a headline. A headline if you trash daily cast, trash one house, or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah just hold it for next time. The clicks turn. left over to uh, to be able to play the tag punishment you have uh, could be a thing. Um, it it might be. Yeah, not sure. It could be also. Yeah, you want want the, the opportunity to play a trust off or something. Mm, trust up, but uh, but the Mavers getting popped is positive for Leopold. Like that, the fact that it's not a hollow man, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, if, that's that's for sure. If it's a hollow man and Tier just some jumps into a tag plus some credits or just five points, that would be so massive. Yeah, because I, I, I guess. I, I guess you can't contest that all here, but you can money up as the Hoshiko. Yeah, six credits with there be probably being a ping and a second ice that stops the run. Yeah, if, if yeah. you are to be aggressive here, you sort of you have to install the correct breaker. Um because and you don't know what the, the backward size is. Yeah, like okay. oh, getting a more dog. Oh, more. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe uh, the game is going slowly enough that this makes sense, actually. Yeah, I would just be uh, really afraid of the self cross program now. Yeah, this Super does afraid. boost. Just, yeah, I mean, you, you do but, have some odds of hitting the self growth. Okay, but market forces yeah. get hit. That's yeah. uh, probably so really we, good for you. Yeah. Getting the, the punishment cards out of hand. Okay, and uh, D is taking their time on this, so probably oh, it's a Bologna. Yeah, it's okay. a Bologna. Just something. To this has yeah, points. this has to be best case scenario for the Tempest, right? Yeah, yeah. This is this is uh, actually really good, and and also uh, there's no. No, actually, there is a headline is never advanceable, so you have to be afraid of that until until you've seen that card. Um, but yeah, I guess you're checking R and D now, and uh, just trying to just have be to able get to those more triggers. I think that's how you stay in the game. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, running R and D. This is crazy. We, we. I wonder if he's keeping the raindrops or if he doesn't want to use them on these runs, like the raindrops and dirty laundry. Because they're, yeah. they're like in total, there's six copies of those. But we, we haven't seen any. I think this draw this. just looks very clunky. That probably is like three or four breakers in hand. And yeah, maybe a twinning that you really just cannot install anymore. Oh, setting the link to two. <laughs> Yeah, I just I just can't believe how how unfortunate this draw is. It's crazy. Um, so D might still have an opportunity to just put put a headline in the in in the remote here and just win. Yeah, I don't really yes. see Tempest threatening but, the remote at all right now. Yeah, but the window is closing. Like, given one more turn, it's probably already getting a lot less likely. And I mean, so stri strictly speaking, 
technically, if if Tempus has a cleaver in hand, you can just uh, you can just you know install cleaver and run server one if it comes to it with a banner. Yeah. yeah. Because the only ETRs in the list are well, I guess Starlit Knight is ETR now now that we are on threat four. But uh, well, Magnet is an ETR. Rest. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple yeah. of Magnet ETRs. Yeah, like ping is the one that you expect in there. Yeah. yeah. Especially this with is like also Star ideal. One. This is also ideal for Leopold. Yeah, you know that you don't to... have to poke the remote because you, you can lose getting dragged through the, the remote a bunch of times. Like if there was a card installed now, Leopold goes for it and then it's like a spin doctor. Mm. You just feel silly. Uh, but now you don't even have to worry about that. So you can get them on trigger on HQ. You can develop your board further and make sure you can contest in a way that doesn't break you once um, once you have to. A lot of uh, Reg Hoshiko games versus R plus go like this, where it, um, especially with Ma, it, it's, uh, the R plus gets this point lead early, mm -hmm. and then the Hoshiko like you hit like a peak, and then the Hoshiko is sort of in control, and you're just like um, the R plus is scrambling to get those last few points out. But it becomes kind of an exciting dynamic, I think. Yeah, like scoring to from five to seven is the hardest 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 work. For the R plus deck here. Yeah. Now that now I'm, I'm... It kind of has set up already with this icon. That's yeah. so easy to just break everything. I'm, I'm praying here we can get this access on, on HQ with an event this turn. Yeah, I mean, surely we have we have got to have seen uh, raindrops or a uh, or dirty laundry at this point. It has to be, right? <laughs> if ever raindrops, I... do you just go R&D then? You could also like maybe go install bus saw and then and then raindrops R and D or something mm. like that. Yeah, that would be quite nice. Yeah, with two rat counters, it's kind of fine to get the bus saw online already. I guess. Uh, yeah, no hammer. Yeah, exactly. Hammer is fine because because bank are yeah. Yeah, depends of course on what you have in hand. If you have all of your library, oh. Just going HQ oh, with the drops. But it is HQ. Okay. A ping is the. So the ping was not trash. That means the ping is still in HQ. Uh, the ping, I think no, the ping, ping was, was trash. Yeah. The, the ping was trash. There was a. No, it uh, says random card, right? It That's always says random card. Uh, yeah, yeah. You just have to oh, check no, archives. Yeah, it, so you. So, yeah, a ping is one of those annoying things where you do have to check. Wait. It, so oh, it does say there was one, already there was one piece done. Okay. Yes, correct. From last and okay. small. I see. Okay, okay. So it's so, just the brand in archives. Brand in HQ, I believe, still. Oh, brand could have been installed on R&D. Oh, true. Yeah. But okay, so up to seven credits and two paladin, uh, two on paladin, so nine, nine effective credits for installing things. Uh, Fermenter taking up to three next turn with the daily cast. So, I mean, reasonable econ for Tempest, but uh, we still yet to see like uh, if uh, like if the you know top decks top decks or something and gems gems server one next turn. It's we still have yet to see like how how Tempest is going to be able to contest this. We haven't yeah, seen you're still just and we assume that. <laughs> Yeah, we assume that he must have breakers, right? Given that like the hand has been so clunky up to this mm -hmm. point, what else yeah. could he possibly have in hand? But the uh, I'm I'm liking the mind installed more and more, and thinking about it, I think it's the fact that um, you when when the court goes down to a low amount of cards, then you're less likely uh, like if if you're afraid of let's say public trail self growth to bounce them off, if you hit uh, one out of three cards in hand, then you're extremely unlikely it's extremely unlikely for them to have that combo. So if you start doing it when they're low on cards, then you get to like keep doing it and keep them away from that type of interaction. So that's kind of cool. Yes, and the, and the fact that, you know, uh, the ice R&D over HQ means that, you know, as as you keep getting these central pokes, uh, you can keep getting these access and get information on what kind of combinations that R plus has access to. And in this, at this particular board, say the answer to that question is none whatsoever. 
Yeah. We uh, have to keep in mind though, um, still any any card installed in the remote here is threatening. Uh, even even Holloman could fast advance a headline out. And it, you, if you draw an agenda here, uh, Bologna here as the corp, you could install advanced advance it, and mm -hmm. it might be really hard for the runner to actually go and get that. Yeah, contesting that sounds kind of miserable right now. Yeah. You just so, need, so need something like the, raindrops at that point. Yeah. But every every turn the game goes on, the position gets better for Leopold. Oh, this is, oh, this is a bit train. annoying, though. And we're just killing it's, the Econ, I believe. Yeah, or that's, that's a good care question. Banker. Oh. And you're trashing that's, the daily cast with eight credits, I think? No, Banker looks no, like it could be an agenda push yeah. then. It's, it is the wow. third banker. So is that... To come. Yeah. It's all three in the bin. The question is here, like... Are we are we buying it or not? Is this actually the headline? You know, because uh, one seamless is gone, so I don't th think we're playing around off-world seamless. Mm -hmm. um, this is also playing around more. It also could be like just Rashida, but even that gets decent amount of value here. Yeah. Because if you're not denying the headline here, then um, going through all that ice on the remote is going to be—it's going to feel so painful. Yeah, oh, I don't believe definitely. you can contest this yet. Not this, with not with this icon here. Like so, theoretically, if you install like Cleaver Bassaw and pop the fermenter, I don't even know if you need to pop the fermenter. But if you do, and then you go, you you can get through. All of the ice. No, no not Starlit like Night. Me actually. Yeah. It messes you, Starlit Night messes you. Yeah, so well, uh, you it's can interesting pay for because... it through Mr. Chesswell, but yeah, it's expensive as hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the one tag means that even Starlit Night on the outermost uh, is still an end run. Yeah. So, probably, so do you just not contest there? Do you say this is a bluff? Oh, this is. Oh, just calling it out. We are. Looks like we are going. Do we boomerang? I think we boomerang the outermost. Uh, is my read. If we think that innermost is ping. Yeah, interesting um, decision here. Yeah. Okay, we are boomerang the innermost. Okay. So, Starlight Knight or outermost would be pretty uh, ruinous here. Okay, it's just a VSA. VSA is annoying. But not yeah, you can not limit it. You, yeah, you can survive it. Thing is, if you've trashed enough of the cards in hand, the tags aren't that problematic anymore. Mm. You can still get your daily cast and your paladin trash, but the if the fermenter lives on, you at least have that to pop unless it gets self growth. Yes. Uh, so the uh, using taking credits of R plus importantly, not giving more value. And it's a oh, magnet. Okay. magnet. Very in this is so this is good for Leopold because he's gonna get in and make sure he, he's not losing here. It was a Rashida. Yeah, Rashid, okay. I think that very fair fair thing to go and trash. But also look at this remote now. If if you can stabilize here as the runner, you get bus saw down, this remote is only two credits to get mm -hmm. into. So that's an issue for D. Of course, Leopold has two tags. Um uh, might yeah. just get all is drip trash clear one and I th we have to ah but then D goes down to two credits yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can clear every destroy everything I think you can just pick yeah. one or, or I mean you might you might be able to get away with floating tags here because there's only one copy of the market forces in this deck and it's in the bin already yeah 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 but like self growth program still point. messes you up yeah but you can't go untagged so you might as well float I think unless you want the extra click for next turn. So you might just draw a card here or something. You might, I mean, you you could, you might even float tags for the rest of the game here. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. And you speaking. cannot really contest top of R&D and if you, they are just top decks like self-growth and everything, it's kind of hard. 
I, yeah, I think you're just hoping they don't draw the self growth uh, for yeah, a while. Do you need to go to that point yet during the game? I don't think it's like desperate I, enough. I, said, I, I think going oh. tag me and just tanking self growth is perfectly fine if you are just if you commit to just holding a bus saw in hand to install yeah. and run if they make a server one push. So up to that point, it's okay. So yeah, there we go. See a last click draw instead yeah. of clearing one. I think, yeah, floating the text for this turn is something you have to do, mm -hmm. or you could go down to one. But I think it's you're more flexible if you're keeping the money. You have a greater capacity to contest. Um, but yeah, you probably clear here if if D's playing passive, not putting anything yeah. in the remote. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. just especially, trying especially to find this the self thinking. But doesn't seem to find it. Yeah, I mean, if you find this, if you top deck yourself growth here, what do you what do you hit? You probably self growth it more and for meta. Oh, there oh, it is. Wow. Oh, there it is. And trash and trash daily cast. That's, oh, that's I believe so. An incredibly good draw. Heart of the cards paying off. Yeah. Wow. That was actually that was really unlikely to get it. Two out of yeah, was... there were two copies in twenty nine cards. I believe. Oh, it doesn't kill the two set. In... Daily casts. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, but so I think is so. So huge. you one with one self growth gone. There's only trust up and another self growth to punish tags. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, apart from just trashing resources, but D isn't that rich. So maybe here you just like install fermenter, play some econ, and and get let Toshiko flip back. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a, there is an argument maybe to just reinstall it more and kill that last card in HQ. Um, yeah, yeah. If uh, I think, yes. As long as you still have the capacity to get into the remote, I think that's that yeah. might be a good idea. Yeah, I think it's important to hold up. Um, just uh, what's it called? A bus or bus or money, which is like six credits, just yes. to install in brick brick. Yeah, so maybe you don't uh, more this time. Um, if you can just... Uh, but it is oh, nice okay. to flip back yes. too. You get the, the two credits. I could see an argument for Maw if you have like, especially if you have something like Sure Gamble, Maw, Dirty Laundry, that would be kind of sick. Oh yeah, that would be the dream. And we, ha we really haven't seen all that much econ coming out coming out from the Hoshiko yet. Just the, just these daily cars and a couple of like a raindrop strike fun. Yeah, so there should be a lot of economy still left in 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 terms of events. And also, uh, HQ is open. So if 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 uh, Leopold stabilizes, clears the tags, you can go Fenris, keep recurring econ events, and mm -hmm. kind of remote lock. Um, that's a lot of stuff that you need to get onto the board though so but uh with enough time you can get there yeah i think that is basically a win condition in this matchup yeah taking a good hard thinking uh, makes sense too yeah it's I'm, I'm thinking it's probably about do you do you need to clear the tax right now yeah just yeah just yeah i'm, I'm sure i'm sure that tempest is you know counting the tech punishment left in the deck as we've said it is just the uh, one more self growth and one trust op. There are no shipment from Vladisabur, so nothing to worry about actually. Uh, and even then, if you were, wanted to play around shipment from Vlad, you can just clear one tag and it's still perfectly fine. Yeah, but we don't even have to do that. So I, I'm, I'm really expecting no clear here. Um, but maybe, I mean, maybe if. if yeah, I'm not sure. Might depend on what's in the hand. But I don't think you're... Yeah, I don't going, think you're going in Going down to one to credit clear. just to clear doesn't feel correct here. Yes, uh, trust up is not... Trust up is not that threatening right now. Yeah, taking care yes. of the Paladin is not so, optimal. But... There's no like huge installable that you want to get on table yet. Yeah. 
like the only thing that you know would make trust up really like uh a sickeningly good uh top deck in terms of like tech punishment is if like that one random more hit which we don't know about did hit the brun <laughs> and it's some other ice that's not the brun on r d and if you hit the trust up and hit the brun on server one and like then or maybe not even server one maybe if it just goes at hq and then suddenly you, you don't get to more anything for the rest of the game uh and it gets and it gets tough when you don't get like Hoshiko value turn on turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is untimed, so I figure why not take advantage of that. <laughs> I mean, these players have played uh, this league for how many weeks? I think it was four weeks or even more. Yeah, four weeks, I believe. Up to this point. Oh, only four weeks. I thought it was. I thought it was even more. It, it feels like it has been so many it, rounds. It was like... two rounds per, or two weeks per round. So. I see. Yeah, I had to get everybody give everybody time to actually get those games in. Oh, you mean it was four weeks since last round, or oh, four we uh, two weeks since last round, or something like that? I'm not sure. But Fight Club started like way back in January, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like, this the journey to get to this final has been insane. <laughs> yeah, it's it has been and, a long uh, time coming. Yeah, and I totally understand taking the time that you need to to feel comfortable with the decision you're making here. Because um, I think I think all of the players really really want to win this. Oh, liberated the Whoa! Oh, that's a kind of not what anyone was expecting. Oh my think. god, but that's perfect. That yeah, is have fun clearing perfect. that. Like... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but with this, you can easily afford more next turn. Oh, and this yes, and this card is a turbo, and so there probably is also one in hand clogging it up. Yeah, pretty likely. Yeah. And they're not. Well, they also they are not needed yet. But it's, it's crazy that with this bad bad hand, the opponent had that the game is still this competitive. Because we're we're all expecting the hand to be something like. Turbine Buzzsaw, Mimic, and then, I don't know, another Maw or something, yeah, you know, something, something like, that. like that. Something really bad. Um, maybe at this point it's cleared up a little bit more because some stuff has been discarded. Um, but that's a, that's a really clogged hand. Yeah. I, I without think, yeah, this any marching. It's extremely bold from Tempest. I mean, uh, obviously, like a Liberated on 4 is not something you want to be spending the click and 2 credits to trash. Uh, yeah. And I don't really see any clear way for D to uh, to punish this, even with like, for example, a remote gem. I think I think D has also put Tempest on uh, on having the bus sword in hand, right? Uh, so yes. there's no there's no safe way to jam in someone without sticking another ice over top of it, and mm -hmm. there isn't really anything that's that's stopping from that credit total. You wouldn't exactly. Uh, install uh, what? Oh, install advance. Install and then ice and then credit. Okay, it's, it's not advanced. It's not what? Advanced. Is, is there any other advanceable than just agendas? No, there's just the agendas. Yeah. So it has to be an agenda. Um, so I wonder what the idea is there. I mean, if it's if it is, maybe maybe D is just saying like, I'm really hoping you don't have the bus off. Our, yeah, I, the read yeah, should think, be that their buso is there. Yeah, um, I think D is just saying, you know, show show me the buso, and yeah, yeah, and take the uh, econ like of installing either, it and running. That also yeah, cost I, I think something. this is either a an Has awful draw? or a. Oh my god! Is there no oh, buso in no there? Back. Oh no, that's wild. Surely not. Getting the anarchy. I mean, is this is it really is it? just? Dirty laundry. Oh, that's oh, so really? That's, that is oh, it's so a fly in the HQ. Okay. So I mean, really, <laughs> we're just gonna lose to Office Triple Advance. 
That's wild. No way. That's oh my God. really that's <laughs> none of us were expecting. Yeah, they're just to calling it out. Crazy. I, yeah, I think everyone was expecting a bus over there. Wow. Wow. Wait, oh, what a shame to go out that way. But well played by D, finding like the I feel like maybe one the one out in the game. So we were all thinking it it is bus off, but D was in a rough spot. So maybe this mm -hmm. was like the the one way to win. Yeah, just call it out. It's fifty fifty yeah. that you have drawn it basically. Well, I mean it's more it than that crazy, because there's it, also two boomerangs. Yeah. The, yeah, two bus or two boomerang in the list. I mean, I think yeah, the odds are like close to like to eight, the... 80 or 85 percent that you find something like that solution. It's yeah, that's wild. Oh my Incredible. god! Incredible, Incredible. So one game up, still up. That was so unexpected. And all right, so. Okay, I'm going to uh, read that. that very shortly. Yeah. And this yeah, time with it's that, going to be... We are, uh, we are four, three up for, uh, for, un, uh, for SBT, I should say, versus mm -hmm. Unbanned in this uh, Fight Club final. Uh, reminder to all that uh, this, with, this is a best of eight. Uh, and I believe there will be a randomly seeded tiebreaker yeah, if it goes to I, I four, believe it will four. be just like... In, it will be two random decks just picked up randomly. Mm. And yes. it will be and, just like uh, the final final. Yes, so uh, other than other than that, I mean, I mean, well done to both teams for making this final, of course, and you know, it coming in all the way down to the wire to the, to the, last, uh, the last game before any possible tiebreakers. Uh, and also a reminder that uh, SPT started 2-0 down. Uh, after I believe, wow, it's been so long. Uh, who was our first matchup? It was uh, it was Ziad versus Cable Carnage. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. Ziad, Ziad getting a sweep against Cable Carnage very in a very impressive uh, Lou versus Egg Infusion display uh, in a matchup that was you know uh, I think widely considered to be quite unfavorable for the Lou. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still sneaking it out with a couple of really key agenda tales. Yeah, and, and then so yeah, from two zero down, uh, having f fighting all the way back to four three up SBT, and now it comes down to this last game. If uh, if D wins this game of, uh, I believe this is I think the spiciest list we've seen so far this event, the Los, the Los versus the Jinteki PE. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody has played this matchup before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, if D manages to win uh, this game, uh, SBT Team SBT will be the winners of this uh, of this Fight Club. I believe the first ever, you know, organized Fight Club event with you know this many teams participating. Mm -hmm. And if Tempest wins, uh, we will go to uh, ninth game tiebreaker. Uh, let's call it, yeah, let's let's call it a best of nine, of course. Oh wow. What, what, how does the tiebreaker work? So it's just two random decks paired up against each other. Right, and that's going to be the decider. Oh, like, no, actually, it's maybe. It's not going to be a full I'm, match. I'm it's actually not sure. Game, it could, right? I'm actually not sure what the format is. It could be that both players just pick one of their decks that they're, they're bringing, and the side is random. Okay, interesting. I mean, I still think we should go with my idea, you know, if it gets a 4-4, four, four, we just, you know, we just make some plans, go again same time next week. <laughs> Every week until the end of time. Yeah. No, no one leaves until we find a winner, you know. <laughs> True, it's got to be, it's got to be fair, it can't be random. <laughs> okay. So... I know Leopold was a bit worried about this matchup because mm -hmm. um, the loss has a lot of tricks to mess with the expensive ice of the court. Yeah, with uh, emergency shutdown, we haven't seen that in a while. 
window of opportunity with the, I believe there are R3 CACs in this, uh, in this, and I believe Brisbane, you have been playing a bit with window, window CACs recently, haven't you? Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the backer Steve with window of opportunity is great. Um, I, I, yeah, I played a couple of games of that deck uh, in my in, in my locals, and it is a hell of a fun deck. Let me tell you what. Yeah, yeah, it's super, super fun. You just flip eyes yeah. up and down constantly, and yeah, you get money I mean, for it, and you get in and you get your Steve yeah, triggers. I think. Yeah, we we ignore the fact that the eyes I was flipping up and down was a lock gem, and it got to eleven strength in the end. But <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that's not important though. The important part is we made money <laughs> of CC. It's funny because that actually happened to me as well, and uh, it really didn't matter. Like the log jam was useless anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so um, we get a mulligan from Leopold, a keep from uh, D. So right off the bat, that it sounds good for D. But okay, so let's think about what what Leopold is trying to do. Um, you have a bunch of tiny agendas. You have a Prana Condenser. Um, I think one of the greatest things you can get with this deck is getting a House of Knives scored because that allows you to charge the Prana much more easily. Um, and then once you have a Prana and a House of Knives or just the Prana, you can install a bunch of tiny agendas and either the Corp steals them and the Prana keeps charging or... Um, you score them and the Prana keeps charging. So either way, the Prana is going to keep charging. Eventually, the Prana is super duper scary. But then when you go to trash it, there's a bunch of war trackers protecting it, trashing the runner board. Something like that is the idea. Um, so that's that's sort of the game plan. Um, however, I wonder how much board the loss actually needs to have to to be able to trash a prana, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I mean, I we do see like I mean all the usual crim suspects here. We see two diversions, uh, two missed bones, uh, in terms yeah. of like being like disruption and you know being able to uh, contest the board. And I think uh, missed bones specifically is like one of the best solutions to uh, war tracker. Uh, like that was. Like just, just the commonly accepted, uh, the commonly accepted solution, I should say. Uh, and I'm, I mean, going yeah. back, going back to war, right? I think uh, this list that uh, that Tempest has cooked up for this uh, Fight Club final is very reminiscent uh, of uh, of like the ones that we saw last year, like pre-rotation with uh, again yeah, also I... with like pranas and uh, pranas and warriors, and I can't remember what else. Uh, well, he was playing else? a very similar list that I believe also was on Keeling. So it's like, uh, oh, and, yeah. And if, believe if, it if or you... not, I would, I would have stopped oh. over here. Believe it or not, it is a, a Nancy. Uh, I feel like I felt like I had to say that. Yeah. But, but yes, uh, yeah, you, Bravado, you are getting your credits here, and uh, but you are getting four net damage to the face and probably you don't take this excess if you're a D and you and you want the game to continue. Yes. Um, so it's nice to get to fire this. Also very expensive to rest. There's only one emergency shutdown, so it's hard to get abused that way. But uh, there is a window of opportunity on Sachi to to mess with this Anansi later on. And I we 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 are very likely to see that at some point. And I think that's why this matchup is so rough. Um, mm. Because even if you're dealing damage, it might, yeah, it, it might be, um, it, it might be annoying that the crypt still gets their accesses and their money. Yeah. And just, I think, I mean, more to the point, I think with this, having exactly this one emergency shutdown, if, the you know successfully that, that if this uh shutdown successfully survives this four net damage from the Anansi and you make this successful run and hit you and don't die uh to whatever net damage uh that is in hand i think you kind of deserve to get this Anansi the rest you know that's like a, such a narrow that's such a narrow you know pinhole to thread uh, haha so, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well at least i think here if um, 
you're the crim, you don't go for the access after you pass the Sanasi, or do you? Because uh, you die to, you die to Sting, if you access it. You die to Sting. That's the only thing you die to. Do the do the Sting, yeah. if you go take three damage. Uh, well, you yeah, take you, one from a sub. Four well. damage. So you're gonna draw one. You go to five. You take four. You have one left. Oh yeah, 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 totally. Um, and Tempest is on, of course, back here programming uh, over uh, over the the more common Fuji asset retrieval that you that you see often in uh, in this PE list. But uh, anyone anyone who knows Tempest will know that he's extremely high on this back here programming yeah, agenda. Hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. With with good cause, that card is crazy. Yeah, just but decide, yeah. The only problem is seven. there's no punitives. <laughs> oh, but this card is wild. But it, it's taking, I think, uh, rearranging here, taking his time. Yeah. I I may be really feeling the the tension and the pressure of the moment because this is. A deciding game losing this means losing the match um and losing the whole tournament so, yeah and making so i think he just wants to if he goes down he, he wants to make sure that he didn't make mistakes and played it properly and uh some some nice hits wind of opportunity and sachi which are both cards you don't want to deal with as the corpse, so that is really positive. To get yeah, rid window of. of opportunity basically disabling that whole Anansi there completely for a single run. Yeah, and actually think... also hitting Earthrise is really nice because the Crim has to then spend clicks drawing. Yeah, because Criminal has no draw. Yeah, at all. There's three Earthrise in the list, so that's that's how you you compensate. And three class act as well. Okay, so it seems like decent start for the core. Um, you need to get your money back up somehow. Yeah, and probably R and D is pretty safe after that Anansi rearrange. So uh, all you have to do right now is really just focus on the econ and trying to build the board back. You see double credit. Uh, do we see another install, or is it just going to be click for credit and discard? Uh, clicking for another credit is a little bit soft to diversion. I don't know if I don't know if D is interested mm. in tanking another four damage to the face to uh, to get a diversion off, but maybe it's worth it. Yeah, it's hard on criminal to eat just eat just throw damage. You don't have anything like. Steel skin or strike fund in your hand just to assess, uh, act as a buffer. Or yeah, upgrade on HQ. Would be quite a bit interesting. So what upgrades are in the, in the list? Mavarus, Adrian, and Warroid. I so Warroid wouldn't make any sense. Mavarus. Yeah, so I believe it's probably the Adrian then. Uh, does Mavarus do anything in this matchup? It doesn't, right? There's there's no viruses. No, you would just pitch my virus. Yeah. So, so we're kind of assuming Adrian, but Adrian doesn't help against Doof because Adrian is about uh, accesses. Yeah, but you can switch it around. Okay. So you basically pre-install it on HQ. That's the least important server to run currently, and move it after you yeah. build the remote. I think that's the play. Yeah, um, probably the, the the biggest use that Mav has on HQ is probably just to uh, use it to duck a Doof. It also does a damage like, if you need it at some point. Sure. But it's like That's a discount right. discount region. Is there one neat thing uh, about getting this the, the Anansi Rust? It's like you're no longer worried about Hermes bouncing the ice on HQ. Um, mm -hmm. So it might be easier to score agendas this way. Of course, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I probably. I mean, on balance, it's probably the 
with virus. I mean, yes, of course, we we uh, we talked about that the agent being able to discard. I, I guess it could just still be the agent if Tempest really just doesn't want to discard any cards, uh, any cards from the hand. Uh, but I think in in either case, neither of those upgrades is doing all that much. Uh, if if let's say uh, we get like another window of opportunity, or D wants to D wants to send a, a diversion straight down the pipe. Yeah, I mean, I think Adrian, Adrian is is not that big of an investment, right? It's like zero to rest, I think. Yes. Um, so, if you're forcing, I think at, at the very least, if they ever want to access cards from HQ, you're kind of forcing them to to, to trash the Adrian. Mm -hmm. um, so, preserving it makes sense. I think all all you're losing is a credit. Um, so I don't I don't think that part is bad. Um, makes HQ a little bit more safe later on. Oh, any remote coming down? Interesting. But... We would expect this to be Spin Doctor, mm -hmm. or maybe he's just flooded on cards and wants to install something. Um, yeah, it could also be just like a random might, sting. It might just damage. be a naked war, right? Would be my bet. I think. Oh yeah, that I, makes yeah. Sense actually, sense. depending on the draw, it could be a bunch of things. Like it could be a front company that you don't intend to rest, a Prana, a Rashida, a Spin Doctor. Although you you you're pretty sad if they're like they drop Miss Bones and they get rid of your Prana, or maybe just if they get rid of Prana in general because it's such an important card in the deck. Yeah, it's basically your whole Econ engine in a single card. Yeah. Sometimes Leopold loves to go for wild plays. It could be like be Regenesis, and then he's trying to score something out of Archives, <laughs> but I, I don't think that's what's going on. Yeah, let's get checked. Yeah, what oh, it is a naked war. Right? Damn. Enjoy calling it correctly. Yeah. Good call, and that's also what you want in the remote for, for later. And, and probably, probably D isn't interested in trashing this at the very moment. Eight, yeah, no, it costs so much. Hermes. It's four in a Hermes or eight credits. Yeah, like, like neither of it's extremely <laughs> huge amounts of credit. I like the right now. Yeah, Warrod clearly yeah, disliked when Wizard was still in the game. Oh, and, oh it is trash. It goes. That is, I'm very surprised. Wow. Just doesn't want I to let the server set up, I guess. But yeah. that, I feel like this is, and losing the Hermes. Maybe has another one in hand, I, could be. It's still a big win for Leopold either way. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a really good trade. Yeah, yeah I, I, mean, I think in this matchup specifically, you do want to take all the positive econ trades that you can, given that, you know, it's so easy for the, for the, for the crim to deny your, to deny your econ with, you know, windows and, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, it might be that Deep just thinks that uh, they're doing fine as long as uh, there's not a position where multiple Boroids end up getting stacked behind a Prana. Um, mm -hmm. But but you can still protect the remote with eyes. Although, I mean, there there is pinhole possibilities, but yeah. If you can like score out a house of knives and stuff, that's also very good. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder what the long term plan is. Uh, was I should say for that warrant tracker? I think there was some lines where you could have like set up, uh, set up like a front company on that warrant and put an eyes on R and D, and suddenly it gets a little bit spooky to contest the board. Uh, but I mean, even even if that warrant had lived, it, I think Tempest would have needed a little bit more credits than that uh, if it wanted to threaten uh, a, Nancy, a second Anansi, for example. Seven credits yeah. is a little too few at the moment. So do you think the upgrade on HQ is actually the Adrian? Because I think the clearest play line is just to move the Adrian to protect the Varroid Tracker. Because that interaction is kind of nasty. Oh. That's a good point. Yeah, so I don't, I, it looks like I a virus to me, I believe. 
Yeah, it could just be a Mavirus to to play around Doof. Because yeah. then you can rest the Mavirus to go low on credits after they pass the Anansi. That that makes sense. Play around Doof, just deal one damage at some point. It's yeah, I think that's stuff. a better read. Yeah, clearing the Warrior Tiger it, with the Idran says on it is so much harder. Because there is no way that, that it's Warrior Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no way. No, way. you would never install that there. But yeah, Mav, Mav uh, versus Doof. Yeah, totally makes sense. That's a good call. Um, yeah, this is. I, I mean, for a matchup that Leopold um, was worried about, this this is still looking pretty even so far and pretty exciting in my opinion. Like I'm really curious to see how this will unfold. But there's like there's a lot of work left on both sides to get towards the end of the game. So I'm wondering here, is that just like <laughs> the super poisoned archives? Um, yeah, I don't think you're going to check archives anytime soon. Oh, class act here is super good. Get your draw up. Well, that's the thing. Like, because you can do this, you also have the ability to check archives. Like, they can't. Yeah. It's not a punitive deck. They can't. They can't kill you easily with bacteria. I don't think. I mean. But do you actually need to me... check archives? Though that, uh, you can basically just clear the table every time. Uh. Yeah, true, true. You, you're not really forced to do anything about it. Yeah, uh, after now. You, then you get some real points, then you can go archives, I believe. Well, one, I, well, actually, one argument for doing it is um, if they get Prana down, they can't like use that in, in conjunction with whatever's mm. in archives anymore. And also, you you get the points while you can survive the damage. Like because you're about to play uh, the class act, so yeah, that that could also be an argument. You go and like you flip them up while while you you are able to put down the class act to make sure you're not uh, dead. Yeah, and I think like Tempest probably is a person who just enjoys pitching those agendas to, into archives. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Although here it looks incredibly risky to do so because it's pretty easy for the runner to just check. And if, if it's if it is a bunch of points in there, you just lose, right? Like um, Kinda, even yeah. if it's triple sting and a bacterial, which is the maximum amount of damage you can deal, that's only seven damage. And you have no follow up kill except scoring mm -hmm. a hybrid at least. So if you have if you have more than seven cards as the runner, you definitely survive checking archives. Yeah, it's probably a bit too risky here without you know, any, any other threat on the table. Yeah. And I, I think uh, on another point relating to checking archives, I think you do want to check archives uh, before the front company goes down. Just so you know you're not punished with that two extra net damage mm -hmm. for, the, you know, for the privilege of running. Yeah, I think that's also reasonable. Right. Front company, though until yeah front company becomes a problem i guess once there's ice on r d as well that you don't want to be face checking yeah, yeah. I, I i did get the i get that get the read that uh the initial war tracker install was to set up a front company uh plus ice maybe like a vampire nasa uh on r d but it doesn't appear to be the case uh, after these couple of turns have gone by uh, and it doesn't appear that Tempest has any ice at all whatsoever. You you would imagine that uh, if any ice uh, had been drawn, it would have gone on R and D. Uh, e even uh, like even if Tempest had no intention of raising any of it, just uh, just the threat of you know just Jintaki sentries, Jintaki ice in general, uh, enough to dissuade uh, dissuade all these R and D pokes. And yeah. then when you get the front company and you get the, you know, you just get the, like the, uh, install cred cred and rest the front company and sudden, uh, suddenly the rest of the board is like 
fairly well insulated, but yeah, I think uh, given this run on R and D, um, I my read then is that D is not on Miss Bones right now because if you have Miss Bones, you probably just check remotes here. I yeah, guess all Miss Bones checks check, remotes. Check. It's really good. Here. Yeah. So. A bit unlucky, I think. The on two Miss Bones not seeing them. Okay, mutual favor for Carbon. Hmm. Uh, oh, oh, oh I, was I guess I'm totally oh. wrong. <laughs> Maybe yeah. afraid of. No, actually, I don't know. I mean, possibly, I possibly they didn't want to be discarding too many cards to just checking the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, given that, given that it was on eight cards, uh, eight cards going into the start of this turn. It might have been the mutual favor that uh, D wanted to protect, because um, if if you lose the mutual favor, your only other way of getting Carmen is actually drawing the Carmen. So it might be that uh, you, you know D didn't want to lose it to random net damage. Mm -hmm. Although in that case, yeah. So you, you, I guess for the discount, you have to run R and D first and take the risk that you lose it. Uh, look at this Warwick Tracker access is pretty interesting. I don't know if D is interested in getting this trash on this particular board. Uh, Tempest does have the option to pay into the trace if this thing does get trashed. Uh, if he pays four, he guarantees the trash on the bones, which is pretty nice. Uh, I assume. I mean, we assume at this point that you know, if it comes to it, that. Uh, D would press class act and bones as opposed to the common, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, without the Carmen, you just kind of slowly lose the game. Well, there's not. Yeah, you. I mean, there are centuries that you can kind of just run through, but you still don't want to <laughs> lose the ability to break them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and Tempest now thinking about pumping this. There are particular breakpoints where I guess it's important. Uh, pays one to... Okay, that's an interesting amount. Yeah, go uh, to five. Very specific. Mm. Yeah, probably has maybe a hedge fund in hand that he wants to play next turn. Could be. The question is, like, how important is it to get rid of this Bones? Um, there is another one in the deck. Bones is... Bones is such a Bones feels like such an unfair card when you play an asset deck because it's just they just slap it down and they gain ten credits essentially. Um, so you would really love to just get to get rid of it, um, but it looks like he doesn't think it's worth. Um, the, I guess the three extra credits he would need to spend for that. The credits are hard to come by here. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's the possibility that another Miss Bones just hits the table anyway. Yeah. I mean, D is really kind of low on credits right now. So uh, I'm wondering like, what exactly Tempest has in, uh, in mind to take advantage of this particular um, you know, window to develop, to develop his bot. I could see something yeah. like installing an ice and rem on a new remote. And pushing a new threat in there. Yeah, you are in dire need of money though. Uh, one yeah. hedge fund, one Han Sekon. Yeah, would, you can't. You would really the only ice you can like support resting is. Uh, yeah. You you can only afford to rest draft right now. Because we do as the ice we have to have we have two bots. Oh, it's have, like really big guys. <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah, exactly. The, the only tiny ice is the drafter. Um, mm. And drafter, dear, can still break after, yeah, can still break for four, even though it's not fun. Yeah. Or potentially, I mean, okay, I guess letting it fire is really bad because you can get, start getting the warroids back. So drafter is, is annoying. Um, and that's nice that, that he has to worry about. Four, four is still like a good tax, and 
even even if like a fire like resing doesn't win immediately like what you are looking to do is yeah keep them low on money mm -hmm. I think we uh, we can quite comfortably put uh, Tempest on not Hedge or Hanse in hand, given the amount of time he's been spending on this turn. Uh, I think it would have been like quite yeah. trivial to, let's say, for example, go like Hedge, Ice R and D, install Rest Fund Company, for example, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of like a lot of pressures are immediately alleviated. Yeah, I I feel like um, I don't know if this is a correct read, but I feel like I. I if there was ice, it would have been on R and D pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, that might be wrong, but uh, I feel like he's he's drawing a low amount of ice in this game, um, a very low amount. I guess you don't like really maybe, want. Maybe maybe still didn't get it. If there's something like a bow toe, you might not want it on R and D because it kind of does nothing. Um... It's it, okay. It's, it's two, damage. two damage. You know? Yeah, it's two damage still, but it's yeah. not like that I... tax you want it to be. Oh, there it is. Oh, I see the remote, not the oh, so R and D. Okay. okay. So probably yeah. that means no front company in hand. Is my read? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. No, what could well, be in server three then? Prana Prana. Maybe? Although, would you put Prana in a different server than Warren? That's the question. Yeah, that feels it might just be an agenda. Mm. Actually, it's kind of interesting leaving a card on the board. It means D is not expecting like a Regenesis score here. Uh, Leopold might be like, you know, the reason we're seeing such clunky turns is, you know, in this kind of build, you have to play a lot of one pointers. Mm -hmm. So it's it's easy for your hand to just fill up with one point agendas, and then if you don't have the prana yet, you don't have a good way to make use of them. So this is the one of the big vulnerabilities you vulnerabilities you can run into with the deck because uh, the prana, like the one pointers, aren't really doing their thing until the prana is live. Yeah, that's fair. Uh... I mean, I mean, there's no shot. This is the third uh, war tracker, right? That's the only other thing I could think of. <laughs> um, again, I feel like you would stack them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. There, oh, oh, there it is. Oh, that it is the bunker, okay, no, interesting. So. so it wasn't interesting. This is a hybrid okay, release. Okay, very it, nice. That's very cool. Preventing. One and, and it's coming from archives probably. Yep. Okay. So now you get the install. Uh, I mean, of course, the risk here is just getting pinholed. Uh, we we're really hoping that the one-off pinhole is not drawn, because uh, if this product gets to charge up a bit, Leopold gets a bunch of money and you get this must trash asset. And it's also nice doing it this way, where he starts scoring rather than the corp getting points. Because if you feed them the points one time, then the prana gets trashed. You can't repeat the prana play because the runner will get to seven. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can do it in a way where you're not feeding points, that's amazing. Right. Oh, Tempest asking for end of turn line. rewind. Uh, yeah, maybe discard. Uh, what mm -hmm. happened at the end of turn? Was there a discard? No, there wasn't a discard, which is the funny part. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Maybe. Oh, we wanted to rest the Adrian on HQ, actually, probably. Oh, that could be. Resting oh, Adrian and moving onto the Prana server? Maybe. That's interesting. Mm. Uh, how? I who's... so. Okay, the turn is being undone. Oh, it, it I'm not sure. I... It has happened, I guess, because okay. uh, he's thinking again. So I, I guess they're in the right state currently. This is yeah. So is it just uh, yeah, me or is this? This is so tense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel think like this is so tense. Yeah. I can really feel. 
like the the pressure you know yeah yeah i i don't know i mean you've, you've definitely played against tempest before you know when he's you know playing playing this kind of like thousand uh thousand cuts thousand knives or whatever whatever the current name is uh yeah. pe uh and i would say usually is quite um quite zen mode when playing this kind of when in this like game state uh there it is there's the adrian uh, adrian is uh, from okay looks like it looks like it was manually moved okay that's fine uh but yeah uh what was i saying yeah usually usually tempest is in that usually kind of like zen state when playing p i i if i had to make i guess i would i'd say that that's not the that's not the state of mind that he's in right now i think he's i think he's under a lot of pressure yeah i mean i might be reading it wrong it could just be that he is in that set mode and that's why he's going so slow it's like you know i am calm i don't need to stress this let's just take it slow um and and there's no like there is no pressure here there's no time around so i think i think that could be it as well Maybe, maybe you know, it could just be be inserting my feelings because it, it does feel tense because it feels tense to me. Yeah, yeah. But it is high stakes. We know that. Like, yeah, let, it's not yeah, like they don't care about the, the result here. Exactly. Let's not forget the gigantic the gigantic prize pool that we have for the winner of this the winner of this event. There is Wait, a prize pool, right, Axel? Yeah, around fi like 50 million euros or something. I heard. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. damn. <laughs> I hope I get a cut for the one round that I... <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just joining up for the money. <laughs> yeah. Join, join up to, you know, make sure the team gets to the finals and then take a take a cut. Uh, yo, Oxo, are we getting paid for this? For this casting gig? <laughs> no, they didn't sign anything. Sorry. With that kind of budget, I feel like we should be. And what what is happening? Is like uh, Saudi Arabia funding Netrunner tournaments now? Oh no! <laughs> the sports hosting has reached us. Yeah, yeah, we are through esports now. Nice, we finally did it. <sighs> well, I guess I can quit my job and become a pro player then. Oh shit. That's an idea actually. Yeah. If if only, right? If only. If only. You can become a pro okay. streamer a streamer already. Get I don't know, I have like uh, <laughs> three hundred and fifty uh, subs. Maybe if they all sign up for like a hundred dollars a month. Yeah, three fifty is not bad, that's about like three twenty more than I have. I think I haven't checked. Yeah, no, no, I am not complaining. It's it's nice. It's about to reach 350. It's going to be another milestone. That's, that, that's excellent. Yeah, since they're thinking, I might as well shout that out. Go check out my channel. <laughs> yeah, since we're here, Kitchen you know. Meta with Bridgman. You should, uh, what is your channel, Jai? Uh, it's just uh, at Gyroscopic on uh, both Twitch and YouTube. I just, I usually... I usually uh, stream on Twitch and then upload on YouTube. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so we we have a turn here. Spin Doctor, install, res, and install ISO another... HQ. And Still install not passing R&D, though. <laughs> I mean, this has got to be the third wall right, right? Like, I don't think you spend the click to install the Mavaris here. Yeah, um, it, it well, like maybe you. I think you actually might because at least it it might disincentivize them from from uh, going for this. Well, it looks oh. it looks like going for this anyway. Yes, and it's quite annoying because the only thing that can't be well, the thing that can't be broken is um, a teeny, but a teeny. No, actually, a teeny would be great. Because you get some, you get some prana triggers off of that. Uh, yeah, you get at least one prana trigger because uh, D can't pay for all of the two credits. Yeah, and then there's mm -hmm. still there's still an Adrian that you need to get through. 
Yeah, and then the, yeah. and then the last the the last Atini trigger, the Prana trigger of the Atini pays for the agent, which is uh, quite a nice interaction. Uh, that but looks I like think, an Atini. You would instalize it, right? I, I think Tempest might be considering the. Uh, might be considering the <laughs> whole rest. Oh, yep, call, please call I love the banter here. <laughs> Drafter would also be good here, right? Four to get through it, and then yeah, you're not would be guaranteed drafter. for the act. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, I, it I don't think Tempest is, is, is considering not resing to pay for this uh, war right rest. <laughs> Yeah, I guess if you try like at even a teeny, you can really cannot. No, uh, yeah, you can just worry if it's an teeny though. So yeah, but maybe you might if it's want a to keep enough money to to win the side game. You get four credits out of the teeny, right? Uh, actually, the actually as chat is calling out. Uh, thanks, Donald. You actually get zero because uh, from the lost ability, you will get two credits. You ah. will get two credits of the lost rest, so you can pay really through all point. the Atini stuff. Oh, so yeah, Atini, true. Atini is not working yeah, here. Then, yeah, just the Boto. Boto. Though. Oh, but it's Boto. And How Boto just that? gets... It's six credits Three. to break. I think you're happy with that. Yeah, because now the Prawn is going to be trashed for sure. And Ward is not going to be trashed. Oh, sorry. Warroid is not going to be rest, I mean. Yeah, I think... Yeah, you're just... But it might just be Mavers. Still, uh, losing the Adrian is also frustrating here. Uh, actually, the funny the funny thing is you won't lose the Adrian because the Adrian side game will protect himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, true. Because... Yeah, really good point. Yeah, it feels like a really tough decision here. Yep, there we go, and we'll see what this other upgrade is, if it's the Mav or the third Warwick. Uh Of course, that will eat the entire Miss Bones. Just the uh, and then Nice. Yeah, that is nice, because you keep the, the Warroid. So... Yeah, so the third, the third Warroid is still alive. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're, you're taxing the runner a bit. So Re Leopold saying, like, you know, I'm not afraid to take this to a long game. Yeah, but should he though? <laughs> like, you um, cannot hide that genus forever. True. Yeah. You. I mean, you're gonna. Your hand's gonna flood up, right? Um. But I guess you don't have a choice here. Your plan needs to be like. There's no plan except getting the prana, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. And it's, it's even a question as to what what is in this uh, server five. You have. Exactly four credits left on this bone, so you can go check. And the worst thing it can be is a sting. Yeah. I, I'm expecting it to be um, an agenda that he wanted to use in conjunction with Prana. Mm -hmm. That's fair. So, but, so okay. you can run it and then just click for a draw, maybe? Um, it, it can't be scored this turn, so D is opting not to check. Mm -hmm. um, the only punish for that is if you get another Prana. Yeah, right. So like that credit, true. credit install Prana Server Three is a way to sort of protect the agenda. Yeah, I, I think like just having this Boto set up is like a reasonable, uh, reasonably enough like slowdown on mm. on D. Like, uh, they do have like you know like reasonable going into the daily cast the Earth Rise Hotel coming down, uh, and you can yeah. crash one more thing of these bones, but. Like going through this big ice, even though you have the breakers that come in the group here for these uh, ice that's already been rest, it gets expensive real quick. Yeah, uh, that's that's true. But I, we should also keep in mind D has window of opportunity. Um, so there, mm. there are some really like annoying uh, tricks to get get through. I guess there's still the Adrian side games then though. Hmm. So it's it's not that easy. Leopold taking taking his time. Oh, wait. 
wonder what else can you do than click for three I mean, there is click for three, and then there's click for two, and install server three. Yeah, I mean, and which is maybe. kind of threatening, even if it, uh, even if there isn't any real. I mean, even if we don't have the second prana, I mean, uh, like just putting a Rashida in there is not bad. Uh, I guess you you don't want to ice the front company, so that's not so good. Uh, but there's still. There's still options, uh, but Tempest may just be considering the triple credit. Yeah. I mean, if you have Prana and Server 5 as an agenda, it's pretty likely you just go credit, credit, Prana. Oh, but I suddenly, okay. That's another option. Well, then ice cannot be rest. Yeah, you just can't rest it. Like, yeah, none of the ice can be rest. Yeah, move the don't even see so like it can't be rest. Yeah, the ice suite is very, very money heavy. Um, but the, yeah, the, but the deck's main source of money is prana. And and D got rid of that in time. Yeah, I didn't really have time to just start stacking up. Yeah, I know that. Um, I think uh, uh, people played a list, not this list, but something similar. Was it like? I think maybe that was actually killing, uh, but it's it's sim. Um, it was similar in that like the game mm. was very drawn out. Um, and I, they also play the finals untimed. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the game went for over an hour or something like that. Eventually... Yeah, this game is on, on track to take over an hour. Yeah. Um... Oh, did we point this out? The pinhole is gone. When was that? Oh, used? that's a. Oh, that, is that that's a, a very pinhole? Good. Yeah, it's yeah. only one pinhole. Oh, yeah, really? it was the it's very only one pinhole. It was the very first cut I got trashed in the entire game from the Anansi, the turn one Anansi race. I that totally missed that. That's a that's that's important because it means D has to get into the remote every time they want to contest a prana. Yeah, basically, or even can so like if, clear area beforehand before running. Yeah. So if you manage to get up on money, reinforce that enough, it's possible for the runner to actually run out of resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it, importantly, if like if Tempest manages to you know scrape together enough econ to set up a Prana War right Adrian uh, remote behind this boto, it gets like super, super tricky to. Uh, like to contest without you know having to burn through like so many credits to go through like the ice multiple times and the Adrian side game and then once you trash the Adrian you gotta go through the war ride and then you gotta go back etc etc yeah it starts adding up pretty quickly yeah and like final thing criminal is just rolling in money like something like Anarch would yeah. And your breaker take actual resources to get to use, so <laughs> Yeah. If um one thing that would get the crim rolling in money is like uh, the Sachi window of opportunity combo. Especially if the corp feels kind of forced to re rest the ice. Um that's when the crim can get like filthy rich to a point where you, you know, getting in basically anywhere is not a problem. Um I think but for now, it's not out of control. Yeah, hopefully there is no connection issues. Yeah, Leopold says, um, I guess D disconnected. So I think it is back in Discord though. Hopefully, manages to get back on back into the game. Yeah, that would be 
a very silly way to end this if there's a disconnect. Um, actually, is there? I guess there isn't, but they would be cool if there was like a feature in Jaina to start from a particular point in a game. So that way, you oh yeah, maybe like from never... a replay file or something. Yeah, yeah, so Jaina that you never... on it. <laughs> Yeah, that would be a, that would be a sick feature. Yeah, something like that for StarCraft too. Oh, the restart the restart from replay function. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think that's like definitely hasn't been the first time this has been suggested. I don't know like how implementable it is in JNet. Maybe maybe in JNet two we'll get that we'll get that function, but you know who knows. Uh, I can take that and my scalable UI. That's another thing I've been asking for. <laughs> nice. Okay. What buttons are you looking to scale? Just like the board size, so I don't have to zoom in and out every time. Right. Okay, I fixed it. It looks, uh, hopefully, right. D is back. Seems hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay, oh, that's a relief. <clears throat> We go twinning. Ooh. Okay, there goes. Oh. There comes the, the hubs again, and checking server five as expected. Oh, it's front company. That's okay. interesting. Uh, no, I I think JNet actually has this new feature. I, I'm not sure when this got implemented, but we, I just noticed this like uh, I think on the Sengun stream yesterday. Yeah. yeah, where when you are accessing a card, it will flip face up. Oh, really? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's 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 quite it's quite cool. I don't I don't hate it, but it's it's a little bit weird to see. Yeah, like, for the uh, first time. And yeah, I was I think, confused. I was like, why was that? <laughs> I think we I saw think this earlier all, also. <laughs> at some point. Yeah, normally it's okay. I mean, because the the asset just goes into archives uh, anyway, and it where it will live face up, you know, uh, as per mm -hmm. normal. But then it gets it gets like a bit confusing when. Uh, you're trashing Meriden campaigns, and you're like, wait, this thing flipped face up. Right? Firstly, I didn't rest this, and secondly, even if I did rest this, why is it not back in R&D? You know? <laughs> yeah. But okay, so that's front company number one down. Uh, install cred cred server three. Uh, and then we're so moving I'd be back here. Feels yeah. Surely this is a surely this is a Rashida. Surely, I feel like it can be a lot of things, right? Yeah, like could be uh, could be prana too. Could be prana. Could be uh, I guess. Could be Waroid. Could be uh, um, House of Knives. Maybe. Could be Spin Doctor. Yeah, basically like almost anything, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Every okay. Really, it could be any. Like it's the deck. Okay, okay. But yeah. Rashida, I mean, Rashida is like maybe the most desirable one. Right now. Yeah, currently I would think so. And if it if, is... if Leopold, uh, Leopold pulls this out of his hat, that's going to be wild. It is kind of significant that uh, Tempest, you know, took this was basically an instant install cred cred turn from Tempest when the rest of the game has been really in the tank for like minutes on end on the decision making, which which leads me to believe that it's uh, Rashida, you know, as opposed well, to think, anything else. I think Tempest had some time to think, think while they are disconnected, so... Oh, that's true as well. Yeah. Although, uh, D had to take their turn first. And your, your play might depend on what they're doing. Yeah. But, I mean, you're pretty limited on options, I guess, because you're, <laughs> you're super low on money. <laughs> yeah, two credits and... So D actually needs to be concerned about Drafter. So Ooh, just could about doing. actually be Drafter. Oh, if this is Drafter, that's so good. No, you can still break it. You can, yeah, because of low... Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, fair. 
<laughs> we just missed it. Oh, there's a draft. Oh, lost value. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, all the ice is going to be rest, and my boss is going to be super sad. And then you just de-rest all of the ice. Yeah. So any um, any agendas getting stolen here is bad for Leopold, I guess. Maybe not Sting. Uh, yeah, probably. And the fact that this mm, that was isn't okay. It is rising. Okay, it is a product. Mm. So any amazing the agenda yeah. still will be a bounce and three credits, which is. I don't uh, think you used a twin encounter then. No. Probably not. Resting the prana. I guess I guess D can't comfortably contest the prana this turn, and you can maybe click for three and move Adrian over on your on your on the next turn. Yeah, like the best thing you can do is going in and ending the turn on zero credits. Yeah, it's quite interesting. The game is so low of econ. For yeah. the core, they still have threats. I wonder how much money is left in the runner deck. Actually, three bravados, three gambles already. Uh, one daily cast. Uh, yeah, you have, uh, two sachi, right? And one one sachi. So, still a little bit, a little bit of gas left in the tank for for D. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Los has just generated like six credits during the game. Compare that to something like a different idea. I think it would add up pretty quickly. Oh, another relevant thing is inside job is current. Well, actually, it depends. If there was inside job now, D could go in and trash the prana before the Adrian moves over. Um, oh, that's a really good point. Yeah, so there was no, probably no inside job in hand. Because the the whole matchup revolves around trashing the prana before it gets out of hand, I think. Yeah, that's very reasonable, and I think we will probably see another. Oh, oh I said new remote. Okay, that's interesting, and probably we see the Aiden scoot over to server three now. But no, no, just leaving leaving it on HQ. Okay, hmm. interesting. That I I think maybe he just forgot about it because I I don't I don't think there's any reason to have it on HQ. What is hmm. the ice installed though? Why do you need? Is the do you want a different remote to to score from? Yeah, I think you're building one for putting the agendas into. I think that's reasonable. Um, but hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, so he doesn't want to lose the card, is, is the idea, I guess. Mm. Yeah, yeah it's, that's, that's it's best fair to enough. Have a click for some time. You do need to move the Adrian over, though, I think. I think you have to do that. Yeah, I would assume so. Oh, going after server 6 first? Once yeah. take down the spin, Doctor. Oh, yeah, take down the spin before. Letting the corp get two pranas in back in. That could be the idea. I'm not sure if Tempest lets that happen though. Um, are you probably shuffling at least one prana back and maybe a tracker or something? Depends on maybe how desperate you are for cash. I mean, I, I rather expect that Tempest is thinking about which cards to shuffle back rather than actually letting the spin 
uh, letting this pin die. Yeah, I would assume so. Uh, you just need your water trackers or prana condensers back. Um. Well, if I am, if I have to be like devil's advocate, I guess you the miss bones runs out of cash if you have to use the trash. But it looks like mm -hmm. no, he's popping it. So it, it would be a tax to for the, for the corp or sorry for the runner to trash. I gotta point out, <laughs> it's it's nice that uh, all of the uh, standard bandless team members have uh, hollow man as a, <laughs> a portrait. Oh yeah, and had, uh, I, 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 yeah the the uh, the handles accordingly as well. Yeah, uh, I, I, they definitely put uh, like a great deal of uh, thought into uh, getting this meme going, uh, and of course, greatly appreciate that uh, all of the subtypes are. Uh, in order, I believe it's an upgrade executive system academic in that order. Nice. Uh, so good, good coordination there. Very good. That's that's what we want to see. Yeah, I don't know if that just means that SBT is team Holloman or. Uh, we get uh, hedge fund and uh, Hansei shuffled back. So okay. Prana not a pri priority right now. Um, makes sense. I mean, yeah, I don't think you, you just really don't have enough money. time to get rid of that. <laughs> Leaving the miss bones on two credits and just clicking for credits is interesting. Oh well, yeah, didn't get actually to go and trash that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You still have two more spin doctors if you need to get uh, Pranas back. Oh, there is the install. Yeah, so I'm I'm sort of reading this as the ISIS drafter and the card in the remote is an agenda that you can get Prana money from unless the Prana gets trashed. Yeah, I think they're right. going after the Prana condenser first off. And still yeah, Adrian yeah, just I... sitting on say, HQ, not yeah. wanting to do yeah, any I, work. I, I think... You no, know, two oh, turns in a row. I'm starting to believe that you know this Adrian staying on HQ is a deliberate choice. Probably, probably Tempest has agendas in HQ that you know he doesn't want. He doesn't want you to get at. And there, you know, there it goes the first window of opportunity in the game. Yep. And he goes to Stacey probably on this. Okay, it's on yep. Boto. Okay. Oh, that's so sick. Yeah, it's it's actually actually nice loss being valuable. <laughs> It's uh, no, it's it's actually like really good. If you think yeah. about the money loss is making over the course of the game, it's actually pretty sick. Yeah, it actually starts that up. How much money was that in a one play? Like, uh, I mean, well, the CC get... plus loss is eight credits, and it costs one plus the window or window yeah, opportunity like one, so it's a six credit play. Yeah, for two, yeah. and then Saki still sits around. It's pretty. Sick. It's still not an agenda. <laughs> God. So agendas it's, just have to be in HQ. Amazing. Like, how many agendas in HQ? Uh, there's six agendas in HQ right now. <laughs> <Let me laughs> Feels <tell> like it. <laughs> Definitely, a hundred percent. So actually, that I I sort of was expecting it to be agendas in archives too, but it feels like a Leopold kind of play to just leave some agendas there and act like there's there's nothing in there. Mm -hmm. um, so that could be the case. Yeah, maybe. Uh, also, there is another window of opportunity. Yeah, there's one more yeah, in the yeah. deck and one more CC. So yeah. probably, uh, probably D is trying to dig for that before attempting another kind of that combination. And of course, let's not forget one emergency shutdown. Yeah. So this draft attack is nice, but it's not enough to like keep the runner out, but maybe if D feels like it's not worth paying the four just to check, this could be like a House of Knives core. Oh, Boomerang oh, instead. No, boomerang, yeah. Spending those around Yeah, I guess money. if you... Yeah, as soon as the Prana is gone, getting the steals is actually good. Just gotta make sure you don't die to damage. Um, 
if you commit and you spend two counters. Ooh, it's a prana. Oh, it a is a prana. prana. Okay. Oh my god. So, <laughs> hoping to miss the sting right now. Zero additional cards. Oh, again, missing the <laughs> agendas during the prana digs. If, uh... Yeah, probably D should... Actually, it's eight credits to go in and get rid of this prana. Yeah, so... End but up that on might one. still be correct. Because if, One, let's say Leopold gets another hybrid release score here, that would be really nice. You get yeah, one card start back. Add, adding up. Yeah, I mean it's still a long way to go, but wow, that's 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 very nice. I I think it's it's extremely critical in this matchup that you only you commit to using twin encounters after you breach, which is like you know after the prana gets rest or not rest depending on whether it's on the board. Yeah. So. Uh, I think True. Uh, D is very correctly identifying in this matchup that uh, you know you have to you have to clear the board first, get rid of all the plants mm -hmm. before you commit to multi access, just in just in case. You know, I mean, you spend then this entire game keeping the cop keeping the cop down low on credits and then just gaining six or nine, uh, six or nine in a single in a single R and D multi access is like you know just undone all your hard work. Yeah. But okay, Tempest is you know uh, back in the uh, classic Jinteki PE mode, aka uh, install cred cred for turns on end. <laughs> and the interaction um, moving it's also, now. So, sorry, what were you saying, uh, Axel? The moving servers to server three instead of just sitting on HQ again. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so something is like important enough for the maybe an agenda push. Realizing yeah. that you cannot sit around the whole game. Yeah, and I guess uh, Leopold might he might be trying to stay low to avoid uh, getting into doof range. So if you score, you go down to one again. The, the only problem is like if you yeah if you stay low, you can't really rest the ice either. You also risk getting hit with uh, emergency shutdown. But what I was going to say is um, if the runner spends enough cards you eventually can get into a territory where the amount of cards left matters it's still i think he is still comfortably has enough cards to close the game out especially because there's bacterials not fujis mm -hmm. um, but something to keep in mind i guess yeah if you yeah, hit like 19 stings. hp left between stack and grip yeah uh, you know what the, the sickest thing would be because D's not checking archives is like if this is like the regenesis and gets a bacterial scored or something crazy like that. Totally uh, Leopold-esque play. Yeah, I mean, I that imagine... might explain the movement of Adrian too. Yeah, I, I mean, I imagine that D is thinking about checking, checking archives like right about now, actually, you know. Uh, there hasn't really been a regenesis threat uh, in, like, throughout the entire game until this exact moment, because and specifically because the agents moved off of HQ, right? Uh, but yeah, okay. Uh, so again, going after this prana, committing uh, eight eight of their twelve credits for it. Yeah, the sensible play might be something like trash this, check archives. Mm. Like very safe. Your your own the risk you're taking is uh, Leopold getting a house of time scored, but that it it's annoying, but it doesn't end the game. Um, three pranas yeah, will be in the bin, so you will need to start spinning. Yeah, exactly. Around. Yeah, then the the, the prana is the, the the house of knives is defanged a lot because uh, because of the uh, because all three pranas are gone. Yeah. The drafters are doing work here. So I guess uh, Leopold is, is currently AFK. I'll oh, also yeah. BRB. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Can I just say like next Fight, next fight Club final is going to be timed or something? One hour per <laughs> game. <laughs> Yeah, 
in it for the long haul, you know? Yeah, calling, calling it right now. Oh, encounter something happening. <laughs> yeah, looks like... Okay, so... Find out trash and daily casts. And there we go. So saying, you know, you can have this House of Knives. Alternatively, uh, alternatively a, a Regenesis, although that's a much bolder score, I would say. Yeah, I think my prediction would be something like a Sting, maybe, that adds up pretty quickly in damage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so... Yeah, like with all of the Pranas going, I just... How do you get the E, gonna Like... It's lucky that loss is so, like, criminal is so poor in general. <laughs> if it I mean, like you say that. I think the I, I think loss the loss ID has come in quite handy in. Yeah, but at imagine least if you're like a sheik or something and just farm credits. Uh, so this is Fight Club. Not every <laughs> not every deck can be Hoshiko. I hope you understand this. <laughs> I mean, speaking. Okay, well, speaking of poor, uh, we are back in install credit credit territory. <laughs> yeah, <unfortunately. laughs> The boss players just clean for credits, like classic FFG 2014 Netrunner. Only the basic we're action only card. missing the Cutty Jones install at some point. Okay, I mean, what Econ is actually left in this mm -hmm. uh, in this runner deck? Uh, we have one more uh, CC and Window of Opportunity combination, which I assume that D is going to save for this Boto, which is, uh, I mean, honestly, it's a hell of a lot of crits. Uh, I mean, it takes other than that, two Bravados cards. are gone, Gambos are gone. That's the last daily casts. Uh, yeah, like, you're just actually running out of credits yeah. with this lost deck, especially if you cannot play everything anymore with you having yeah. to save some cards. It just yeah, I mean, I guess there is a mis there's a Miss Bones left, which is not so bad. Yeah, Miss Bones is good, uh, like, Econ, but like every other card is just basically same as clicking for credits here. Okay, we're going R and D uh, now. R &D. Uh, Maybe I'm able, able to access a bit more cards this time. Yeah, now that we know that all pranas are gone. Yeah. We're going commit. Still having to pay, spend four credits here. Oh, I the four. <laughs> I the fourth <laughs> prana card. <laughs> <laughs> Game loss. <laughs> yeah. Well, what what would you be thinking about here as the corp? Is there something you can rest that changes the logic here? I mean, spin doctor possibly, but it's random cards, right? Yeah, I don't think there's anything you rest. No. How many access do we get? Two extras. Oh, Regenesis is pretty good. Okay, Regenesis is a good, it's a good start. Yeah. Oh, inside job gets hit. That's pretty huge. Uh, so it's two extras. So it's, it was only a single, uh, only a single one pointer. And that was click one. So click two was draw. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we see we we see the loss like on like low credits right now. But I think once once we hit the second CC window combination or the the third technically since the first got trashed, uh, I mean, we are just going to see like a massive credit burst. Uh, we install the CC, the second CC on Boto, for example, and then mm -hmm. get the duress for six credits. And then re-rest for uh, eight credits, uh, so that's like net twelve credits of a single click after paying after paying your install costs and such. So that uh, so that's a good you know that's a good econ uh, a good econ pump, uh, but that is probably the last uh, that's probably the last burst that uh, these gonna get for the rest of the game. I guess you know paladin paladin boomerang goes. Uh, some some decent way. 
Yeah, but and when your deck starts running out the boomerang, just losing losing it to damage becomes a more just like a re reality. Mm. Also, <clears throat> on on the second window of opportunity with Sachi, uh, you you might not even re-rest the ice, even if it's free as the core, depending on the situation. Because you could still get hit with emergency shutdown later. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. Maybe given the fact that there's only one more de-rest card and you want to keep your eyes, I'm not sure. Can Dier just run like HQ with two twin encounters and win the game? Um, I feel like that's likely. <laughs> but you have to... Wait, so Anansi is five, and there's another ice. Yeah, it, so you might not. Inside Jobit or something. Although I don't know if there's two in the deck. Yeah, two inside jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Third album. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is like um. This is like watching the chess world championship and, and that's not a diss like i like watching that um but that's that's kind of the pace we're having they're they're really really making making sure to take their time yeah it's fair Now, now we're just going off tangents. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I guess Leopold wants to shuffle back. Pranas. Whoa, we get an overinstall. Maybe a spin doctor. Overinstall. Yeah, it could be a spin, and, and maybe that was an agenda. Or this is like a regenesis, and the trashed card is like, I don't know, no, another agenda. Or something. Yeah, because D has been so hesitant to to check archives. This would and be I'm... a really sick regenerative over install. I'm just gonna say. Yeah. Interesting, because uh, Leopold can choose if if he wants to be on the Bota server or the Drafter server. So the downside with the Bota server is you have the weakness to win up opportunity. Um. But yeah, interesting. <clears throat> this game is is crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's been extremely deliberate so far from both sides. Uh, yeah. I, I suspect that Tempest, you know, I mean, having the choice between servers three and seven uh, made the call that uh, because of this Adrian, because of this Adrian, uh, he is able to you know survive uh, uh, another window run, uh, window CC, and window CC is like another going to be another two cards out of you know uh, these rapidly dwindling uh, health pool, and he, they are only on one point at the moment. Oh, but yeah. we are going for another R and D dig, all right. Oh. The health is, is starting to become relevant, like the number of cards is starting to become relevant. Yeah. Okay, I think I think I, I think this is a valid option as well, pushing like pushing R and D multi access just to get like Hermes Hermes bounces, but no, no. Yeah. Okay. No action on this one is is wild. Yeah, like all of the agendas it... are on HQ, so <laughs> running out <of> does <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I mean, what's the what's the over under on number of points in HQ? Is it like seven? I think it might be like five it or seven. It might be seven because there's just seven one pointers there. But I think it's I, I, I think it's I actually over seven Regenesis points in agendas. Now. I think it's actually seven, up more than seven points in HQ. How many points in archives though? Five. I think like two or three. <laughs> Because, <laughs> um, yeah, I I was thinking about what if this this play was Leopold scoring a Regenesis and getting a, a Bacterial into um, score area, but then the Ice on HQ gets bounced, 
maybe you get doofed and you're oh it's happening. Oh this was okay. the yeah, this is happening. Okay. <laughs> okay, amazing. What did he hit the doof? He hits the doof, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is oh. what I thought it was then. Okay. Oh my god. But uh still that doesn't mean I'm not worried because the ice on HQ gets get bounced and you can see three cards out of out of HQ and I feel like it has to be the case that you see a lot of points there, but maybe not. Maybe it's not enough. Uh, and getting to five is a big deal. It still means Leopold still needs two scores. Yeah, to, I think Dier can now go HQ. Game. I think even yeah. even if there isn't a even if there isn't a doof and it is going to be like a HQ triple access, don't forget that Adrian can still move back onto HQ. Oh, now. yeah, Adrian just goes home chilling. True. Back to uh, there is another doof. That's that's something to point out. Um, yeah, maybe next turn could be something but like yeah, this, and then, then uh, run. Because of Adrian. Yeah, I mean, no matter how you slice it, this is. I, I feel like this is still positive for the corp, given how. I mean, it, it just felt like the corp needs like, kind of, it needs to kind of. Be, uh, Pull a fast one, you know. Pull a trick to to win, and that's exactly what we just saw. Yeah, and and then I, th I think importantly also just removing these points from the game, you know, so that they can't be Hermes uh, like Hermes food is uh, also like a really massive in terms of just you know maintaining some some semblance of a board. Yeah, that's just just wild to me that this happened. <laughs> it's crazy. But it's still hard to get the last two points. I guess yeah. you can fast advance out a hybrid release and score another agenda off the board. And it's not unrealistic, but you're very low on money. So we'll see how well the the runner can control the corp here, I guess. Because something that can happen now is doof into emergency shutdown and then HQ is like wide open. I don't know if that's that is the line, but yeah. Mm, I mean is really thinking about this discard right now. Uh I mean that's probably extremely indicative that there are agendas in HQ. But I, yeah there we go. I, I I would be shocked if Adrian didn't move over. Yeah there we go. Adrian back on uh back on HQ uh, honestly, just the fact that this little guy can move around, uh, I think, has been extremely, uh, extremely relevant in this matchup. Yeah, it's been it's been really good. I am a little bit surprised that Dean never did check archives because I feel like it's one of the few outs here. Yeah. And yeah, we have been talking about you know you have to run our fast before the before the front company gets set up. But you know, we as we've seen the front company never really did get a chance to get set up, and they got trashed or still unrest. So I mean, you might as well do it now, right? Yeah, we see draw, draw, and probably we'll see some kind of central run this turn. Whether it's R and D or archives, probably archives. Oh, okay, no, it's not a window of opportunity, and here comes another boomerang. Are we? Oh, we are not running though. Okay. Yeah, I think D is waiting for the last scene card to leave R and D before committing twin encounters. Because uh, uh, Leopold only drew one, and one was trashed. So now that um, he's seeing right. the last card that was seen. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I think that makes sense. And this is still, this is still difficult. I think, um, but you you can start doing things like, and it gets tricky because I mean Hermes can bounce stuff, but you could just like put one agenda in server three and one in server seven, and if you score either one of them, it's good. Sure, but uh, I mean because of these Hermes, in theory, all uh, all that D needs is to check one of them, and the others will solve itself. Uh, and I mean I have yes. to. I mean, you have to imagine that uh, 
they have access to the third uh, Windows AC combination uh, by this point. So that's going to be like another, you know, 10-ish credits in the bank for, uh, is it 10-ish? It's actually just 12 credits. Uh, 12 credits in the bank for for, for B right now. Um, so I will estimate that, you know, there is about 20-ish, uh, 20 plus credits left uh, in the tank uh, for the crim on this board state. So that's just a, that's a very limited number of times that you can break uh, this HQ Anansi. Uh, yes, but uh, you have the infinite money to break the draft or an R and D. Uh, something to remember. And also, it's possible that this Anansi gets derest. So, yeah, maybe it's going to be more a question of how many cards do you need to spend to to be able to break all the ice. Mm. But again, yeah, no Fuji means that 15 cards left is still a lot of cards. Yeah, 15 cards, I mean, one agenda point. We've seen zero things, just a little bit spooky, honestly. Uh, okay, hedge getting played, but there's just... I feel like this has been the first hedge fund we've seen this game, uh, other than like turn one. <laughs> uh, I think I, th I think I one think got shuffled is. back. One got shuffled back for sure. Yeah. So yeah, this is like the second hedge fund in eighteen turns. It's absurd, actually. Yeah. Now the question is, if you if you try to jam something here. If you're defending a server more, you might want to reinforce R and D. Not sure, or you just uh, maybe, maybe just have to gamble that they don't see anything. I think you definitely want to ice A central, right? Just because, just because uh, there's still one more doof in the game, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> well, in that case, uh, I, I guess you're arguing for icing HQ. Yeah. I think you ice HQ because, like, uh, we've talked we've talked about like you know how many credits that this loss has realistically speaking. Uh, oh, and we're just taking another credit. Okay. So this is basically saying that you know uh, you're okay to get uh, R and D another time. Yeah. Uh, and at this point, I am wondering like how many bacterials how many bacterials there are in, in, in HQ right about now. Yeah, it could be that Leopold knows something we don't. Like, there's two bacterials in HQ, and R&D is not that worrisome. Still, um, if you rack up enough one-pointers, that still gets you to seven. But yeah. Oh, and yeah, Unity, this is sort of like a forced install, because otherwise you end up not being able to break code gates. But that's another card that is gone out of your 15 cards. Still yeah. plenty, I think. Yeah, and even then, like a teeny is a little bit of a, a little bit annoying to break, uh, but okay. So boomerang going through this drafter. See, single access on HQ only, actually. Yeah. Okay, sting, mystic and inside job. Uh, <clears throat> I guess you're not too bummed about losing, uh, inside job at this point, considering the, uh, considering the full breaker street is down already with boomerangs, etc. Oh, Leopold says they thought the inside job was gone, but it's two. Oh, that is a good, that is a good um, point. Uh, there are that yes, is two nice. inside jobs. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no one is getting a game lost here. Don't <laughs> worry about it. So one interesting thing here is um, uh, you have to bounce a card with Hermes, but the ice on Arcus is probably not doing anything right now, so that's probably a good thing for Leopold. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, there would be a sick uh, line to give your opponent a game loss for invalid decklist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> and minute like, 85 and you play for of the yeah. game of Five Nights. Of and Five you're just Nights. like, oh, it looks like your list is wrong. GG. <laughs> Oh God! I would give it. So tragedy, give it honestly. I mean, it wouldn't it be really ironic if you know you go to all this trouble to create like you know matching Smurfs for your entire team, and then you somehow <laughs> you know see, seeing as you have to upload the decks into your Smurfs, and you get it wrong anyway. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> you lose track of the Smurfs, and you upload the wrong deck to the wrong Smurf. Oh no. I think that has happened before. But okay. okay. Finally, we see double ice on servers. Uh, well, not that we haven't seen before, but it just, it just got bounced. And now, uh, I mean, I think finally we're at that point where front company is a playable card. Yeah, this is the point where it turns into a PE grinder match. Like. Yeah, this is actually. Yeah, front company might start to get useful here. That's wild. And uh, worth noting that we are on threat four. So other than the Atini, uh, Boto is now six strength. It is a real, a real bastard to get through with this cool Pira. I mean, just for context, I think Leopold said in practice. He won one out of six games versus this, or something like oh, that. Oh wow, that's a that is a statistic. He's really turning this into a game right now. Over like with much much effort, it's it's turned into a game. But yeah, all it, like we've been sitting here for a while. The amount of stuff you needed to do to get to this point is crazy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just going to go back to the stats after this game is over and look at how many times the cop click for credits, you know? It's going to be it's going to be a, a number. <laughs> it's going to be a new record. It's gonna, off <laughs> any, the charts. Any predictions on what this ending minute will be for the game? Um good question. I feel uh, like we have Max, I'm not, well, I shouldn't say max, around 20 minutes left. I think it's going to be like 110 minutes or 107 before we end. Yeah. That, that Wait, would be around on. 20 minutes from now. Sad. Wait, this isn't supposed to happen. Is Are we, are we supposed to be getting Wait, a Stacey Hunt install as opposed to a window run? That's... Yeah, that is surprising, I must say. I um, wonder what the uh, IP is. Because this, this Sachi is only going to net you two credits unless this gets derest, so maybe a window of opportunity is, to, is going to follow afterwards. So this is a way to... You make the regular run, to get the Sachi trigger on the first time it reses, and then you do a window of opportunity run. So this is essentially creating like a uh, R and D lock, right? Sure. Yeah, and uh, I mean, worth noting that uh, I mean, even if there isn't the window of opportunity in hand, uh, like this this Sachi install means that you are credit neutral to break Anansi, which I think is the. Uh, the biggest threat right now. Uh, I guess you still need five. Yeah, it's five to break uh, Atini fully on this board. So it's this. Uh, so it's still credit neutral. I guess the biggest thing right now is the second boat hole. The crazy thing is, like, even with all this um, work that has been done by the corp, it still feels feels runner favored in my opinion. Like, you're gonna get six more accesses on R&D over the next couple of turns, I feel like. Yeah. And the remotes are still not safe. And there's tricks like window of opportunity and emerge to shut down still around the corner. Um, so, yeah, it's still, it, it's still very much a game, I think. And the corpse still needs to do a lot of work, I think.
So it is a teeny. Okay, so this is a credit neutral, uh, credit neutral brick as uh, as discussed. There we go, five credits and another four for drafter. Yeah. And three accesses in all likelihood. One, oh, just one uh, extra. Two. One, two, house of knives. All right. Yep. Uh, twinning is the trash. That's perfectly fine. Uh, and yeah, Doof is still around. Corp is low on credits again. There's no recursion. Yeah, no. Might be I mean, to think about what cards we have not seen. Uh, so diversion, one of the diversions. Yes, yeah, there's one doof left. Uh, one, uh, one doof left. One, one career fair. Career fair. One emergency shutdown. Um, and the third window? The third window, there's a boomerang in there somewhere. Uh, one more class X. Actually, two boomerangs, right? One more yes, class two boomerangs. X. Wake implant, which is probably never getting installed. And yeah, something like that. <laughs> I miss uh, bones. Yes, uh, the second bones. Yeah. And the, yeah. Yeah, so this is the Regenesis, <laughs> Regenesis install for the bacterial <laughs> that's in archives, the second one. Uh, I mean, we've run archives a grand total of zero times all game. I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure if these going to start now on, on minute 92 and turn 20. I think, I think, I honestly think you should check archives here, and D does, finally. This might, this might actually be game if, if I know Nathan Leopold, but no, it's... It's just luckily, a mess. All right. Luckily, it's been cleared out. So all three front companies are out, notably. Um, there's still one row right left somehow. And, and I don't know how <clears throat> there's still two Rashidas left as well. So the threat here, I think, is this is an agenda, and it gets scored. Oh, oh there we go. Gonna, That's a window. Probably run the remote with this. Oh, we're installing something with this window. It's probably a boomerang. Yeah, there, yeah. There we go. Oh, we're boomeranging drafter, but then we're running server three. Okay, that's very nice. Wow. <laughs> so my uh, my earphones are getting <laughs> low, so I might drop soon, <laughs> just so you guys know. Yeah, fair. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's the last window of opportunity, and I, I think uh, that's the last econ burst that uh, that we're going to see this game uh, out of the lost deck. So I think very soon D will be joining will, will be joining Tempest in the click for credits, the click for credits uh, battle. Uh, oh, not click oh, for no, never credits. mind. We have a review. review. That's abort, cool. Abort. <laughs> oh. The corpus is soon going to be richer than the runner. <laughs> Just you wait. And Losh has been yeah, generating so a huge 10 credits during this 90 minutes. Nine cards left in total as well. Okay, here we go again. Running r and I'm honestly not sure like how many accesses we want to be taking here. Is it going to be the fourth? Is it going to be the full? I think three? the full. Three. If you take the full access yeah. of the game. Oh, bacteria! Yeah, all, oh, that's oh, a bacteria. Oh, okay, that's, that's critical. <laughs> and now we'll take another seven minutes for Tempest to figure out the bacterial score. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if if it's sensible here to rest the uh, the Warroid before this happens. 
Uh, why would you rest the war rider? Uh, to not have it. Oh yeah, bounced. no, not bounce. Yeah. Oh, I guess the ice on HQ got bounced, so it doesn't. Yeah, that makes sense. No, never mind. Uh, yes, to confirm that this was the first, uh, this was the first access of the three card winning access. So uh, I think odds of uh, odds of the winning off of this multi access is exactly zero, uh, just because yeah. uh, how it works is because when R and D is reordered, you restart from the top. So uh, so Tempest can just stack it in such a way as to uh, you know put all the non agendas on the top. So you have two more, you have two the dead accesses. That being said, uh, I mean, the score is now 6-5. to five. Uh, yeah. There's nine points left in the game. Some number of them are in HU. I, you know, at this point, I'm just going to call that the third back here was in HU with the way that Tempest has been playing all game. Probably, but, yes. Yeah. And, uh, and also, the, the bacterial getting stolen means this... this is probably a really, really bad spot. Because you, you don't really have the... Yeah, I'm not sure. You kind of have to bait the runner through ice enough times so that they can't contest the score or have yeah. them not contest an agenda. And I don't think the cards are few enough that that's going to be a factor here. The runner can even afford to play one or two cards. Like if a house of knives gets scored, that's essentially uh, the runner losing four cards. But yeah, that's, that's still four cards left. So yeah, and then you just you just you, you need basically zero cards to win, uh, zero more cards to win this game, just because uh, there isn't anything that. Uh, I mean, as long as you clear the remotes, of course, right? Because there isn't there isn't anything that uh, punishes you on access. There isn't uh, uh, there's no snare, as we've said, and uh, the list the deck isn't running anemone, so there's absolutely nothing okay. to be worried about. So we are assuming there's a bunch of agendas left in HQ. If the runner gets to a point where they can get into HQ have the money to trash Adrian and go back in one more time, the game is probably over at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that's very correct. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, we, we have talked about how, you know, how we can stack this bacteria so that, you know, you don't lose off this off this multi-access, but then there are have got to be a genet somewhere in these seven cards, and then, you know, another multi-access at some point further down the road will, will might see it as well. <clears throat> yeah. So Leopold can decide if he wants those agendas to be in R&D or HQ. But HQ is probably already <laughs> pretty stacked with agendas. No, I mean, there, there technically still is a line for Tempest to win this game, but it, as, as you say, it does involve uh, having to drag, having to drag the through like remote ice and or central's ice multiple times, and that's uh, getting tricky to do. Yeah, you got a pretty big clock on you here, because um, what announces is five to break. Adrian would be two to trash. So if, if the runner ever gets to 12 credits, you can see three cards in HQ. And I I am assuming that will be game. Yeah, um, now almost, almost certainly. May, I mean, I guess it could be the case that that still whips, but I don't think so. Um, and it's, I mean, if you're, if you're going for baiting uh, the runner, I guess it's, it is possible that you can like install another ice in a remote and then get a score out of the remote. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, I, said, I guess the, the issue is that, uh, uh, as you said, the net damage doesn't really matter anymore. All that matters is just having the credits to break ice. Yeah. 
because there isn't any there isn't any net damage threat that you aren't going to be pre prepared for. Yeah, what I'm thinking is essentially your goal would be to get to six so that you can then score the hybrid from hand. But um, I think I think that probably just doesn't doesn't work, right? Because the, the the runner will have enough time to run somewhere else and pick up the last points. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess the question becomes if uh, like is there is there a way for as you say uh, tempest to you know, put put eyes on a remote and you know I mean is there is there a world where you where you install you I server seven put something in the server seven and like and D doesn't run it uh, or maybe you um, just install you install in the Boto server. Uh, because that is like a bitch to a bitch to have to go through with uh, with yeah. Kurupira. Yeah, you can do that. Um, question is, how many decoys do you have? Um, I guess there's still two Rashidas left. There's one Spin Doctor, uh, but all the front company's Pranas are gone. Um, yeah, that's and we know what the one robot tracker is. It's right there, and it probably isn't going to be doing anything for the rest of the game, unfortunately. Yeah. So you have you have three cards you have three cards to bait with and that's it. Um, but the boto is what is it six to break? That's still pretty big. Uh, boto eight to break actually. Uh, eight. Yeah, because it's threat four is strength six now. Oh oh, never mind. Okay, that that definitely changes things because the remote might actually be really hard to to get into. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, th uh, never mind. I mean, there is some amount of play then. You need the runner to like, because if they're going in there, there's no inside job. There's no tricks, right? There's no window of opportunity. There is emergency shutdown. But even uh, you can even uh, you could even like put a boat on HQ potentially, and then try to slow roll. It. Well, no, actually, I guess if you score that agenda, then the eyes on HQ is bounced, and then they can run HQ after you score. Mm. Um, yeah. But um, since Boto is eight, unless uh, the sub that forces you to trash a card to end the run um, forces you to you know trash an agenda from your hand, because you only have agendas, it should yeah, which be is okay. entirely plausible. It is possible, yeah. Uh, but there is no way for the runners to get through two botos. Like that's just not enough money. Uh, so if you force them, actually, yeah, even forcing them through boto one time and whiffing the access means they don't have the money to contest the next one. Um, I guess the question is, do they even have to? I guess they don't have to run the remote. They just money up and then go for the HQ access. Yeah, yeah. And then if you ice HQ, they just wait for you to try to score out of the remote. Because as soon as you score, they bounce the ice on HQ. Yeah, I, I, there may be a line to, for example, um, let's say install another ice on the Boto, uh, then install Advanta card. That kind of plays around Hermes a little bit. Uh, and then you're just gambling on the Adrian, because uh, I mean, um, I, let's not forget that you know uh, D has still two clicks after this uh, to try and contest something, right? Or you know, even take credits going up to nine. Uh, I get Paladin. It, you don't really care that Paladin is going to eat something. Uh, you can just trash the class act for all you care, right? Um. Yes, um, although the Adrian, it might not matter because <coughs> um, there you could run. So if you click and get go to nine, you don't have the 12 to force your way through an Anzi and Adrian um, twice. But um, you could go in and then E shut down the Anansi and then run back in, perhaps. Or, or a Doof and then E shut down or something. Yeah, yeah. So if you if uh, yeah, install advancing runs the risk of running into doof into e shutdown on the photo. 
which loses oh. imme uh, immediately. Okay, I'm happy to report that we have movement. We have uh, two. Oh. We have Tempest is drawing two cards. Oh. And we already have five cards. All right. Uh, okay, I have to wait. How long? I, I just, I'm just curious how, out of sheer morbid curiosity, how long? I, I think we started this, uh, this bacterial, this, this bacterial got stolen, I believe, like 93 minutes or something like that. I'm not sure. <laughs> and then uh, 105 minutes, okay. I think we it was like five minutes for a bacterial resolve. Oh, was it five minutes? Okay, I thought it was closer to 10. But okay. Yeah, a bit, maybe a bit over five. The game is, okay. uh, is closing in on two hours now, I think. Right? 105 minutes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> an, hour for, an hour 45. I yeah. think my call for an hour, hour 17 is getting more realistic. Yeah. Don't mind me, y'all. I'm just gonna just gonna order, order my dinner on my phone real quick. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, fair. <laughs> oh, going HQ totally next turn, maybe. Okay, so oh, we have Boomerang, the Nazi, all right. Yeah, so the idea might be to money up Ice HQ, then make this the, the remote in uncontestable, so that you are able to go like install advance. Advance the best score, install something else, or something like that. Uh, we need a lot of money to support that play. But maybe maybe with the cards you got from Bacterial, you, you get high enough on money. It's really hard, though, to get around the fact that Doof E shutdown is still a threat here. Because if you put an, another Ice on HQ, then you also have to res it. Then after the doof, you, you probably reach like zero crash. Yeah, okay. So that is the line. Um, interesting. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. For for, for those, I, I do think I was I was uh, counting, and it probably was around eleven or twelve uh, eleven or twelve minute uh, bacterial fire. So good good to get some confirmation on that. Okay. Uh, In happier news, I've gotten, uh, I've gotten free delivery on my burrito, so thanks, thanks for all the concern. <laughs> nice. So ice HQ meaning that you can't even get there twice. To actually break the Adrian? Um, no, but I don't. I don't think you have to be aggressive here as the runner. I think you you wait until you have Doof and E shut down in hand, and you only mm -hmm. you, you go for that once you have to. Because um, Doof E shut down, I think always gets you into the remote. I guess no. I guess if Adrian is moved, it doesn't. But if Adrian is moved, I think HQ is compromised. Yeah, so uh, the only consideration, because this movement has been committed on HQ, uh, so, I mean, if, for example, uh, if, for example, server 3 is double boat hole, uh, you know, there is the option of uh, leaving Adrian on HQ and just saying that, you know, I don't believe you can get in here through my two barriers. Yeah. Yeah, the the taking it easy makes sense. The more time that passes, the more likely it is that an HQ twinning run is lethal. Yeah, uh, I mean there is every possibility. Okay, wait. Uh, we have so I believe the top card of R and D is still known. Yes. Uh, oh no. 
Oh no, the, uh, well, af not after this. So R and D is completely fresh after this. Uh, after this, after this mandatory draw. So uh, he has the option to just run back for uh, nine credits. Uh, and honestly, you you may be allowed to take some net damage on the way in. And I do I, I do wonder about this boomerang install though because uh, of all the eyes to put it on, a Nazi seems like the most suspect. Uh, I feel yeah, like just I, either just saving saving the boomerang or just letting like I mean I think it's perfectly fine to let Paladin trash class act at this point, right? Yeah, I hear what you're saying. It might be. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I feel it. I guess you, you could put it on the Boto. Yeah, you can but put it on the Boto and just yeah, completely lock up the need, option. Yeah, you might need to break all the subs on the Boto. So then you're saving two credits by having the boomerang. Hmm. And that's it. And you're on Anansi, you're also just saving two credits. So I guess it signals that you're not planning to go R and D anytime soon. <clears throat> okay, I I think Tempest. Uh, I mean, considering considering this next um, this next turn, because it, there is like a very strong possibility that you know. Uh, that he just kicks for credit and makes the makes the next R&D run. You know, you pay nine credits, but you know, three cards, three three fresh cards off of a uh, off of a bacterial stack. It's like overwhelmingly likely you see one point there, uh, and you kind of have to play around that somehow. There's nine points <laughs> left, and we I, I feel like we're expecting like five, six, seven. How many? I guess. He has like at least five points to be in HQ. Yeah, so I would... if it's I mean it's possibly well, possibly more, we expect that another yeah, bacteria. Maybe the full hand. If it's the full hand, then you only have two one pointers in R and D. You still got good odds of hitting one of those though on on a, on an R and D run. Yeah, exactly. But the problem is, it's not free to to get through the Satini and the Drafter. So I feel like maybe you're just chilling as the runner until you need to act. Uh, so I mean, possibly. Uh, okay, well there we go. There's another hedge fund. Uh, I mean, do you think oh, we so are clicking for credits here? Oh, another. Oh, yes. I, I was I thinking said. maybe it was gonna be uh, hedge install advanced in the remote. And then it's like two photos that where you can't get through both of them, something like that. Yeah, I, I do. I do like the as you say the install advanced play. Uh, yeah. So because... oh, oh, actually, wait. Can it be photo? Yeah, there, it could be photo. The other eyes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there isn't much that uh, we care about that. Uh, that much I'll except for this bolt hole. Uh, I mean, what's okay? So let's calculate what uh, what are the odds of being able to get through uh, R and D? Sorry, not R and D. Uh, HQ, the H this HQ and Nancy with uh, with this Adrian and random ice protecting it. Uh, are we tanking this Anansi once? I, su I assume that's the idea given that this boomerang has been pre-installed. You still have to... Or do you? I figured you would still break fully. Um, I'm not sure. You could. I mean, you could take three damage if you don't care about the cards. It seems like you, you would care. Um, mm, yeah... Yeah, it's it, yeah. That's 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 exactly the thing. It it is very confusing. It's very curious to me, like as if, uh, why, of all things, it was this announcement that got boomeranged, right? Because uh, you would expect 
the drafter or even even the boto is like a better better um, a better in, uh, boomerang install. But here we go. It is a click one run HQ or click two run HQ. And it's another a teeny. Hmm. All right. Okay, no Sachi. No Sachi. Uh, it, no. I mean, it feels like we're just gonna tank this Anansi. Am I wrong here? I mean, I don't. Yes. Because if you if you pump brick, if you pump brick, you go to three credits. Uh, like Adrian is uh, no longer a guaranteed trash, right? Yeah. Okay, but okay, we are just we are just breaking. Okay, now now this is probably the most. I, th I think the first time Adrian has triggered this game, and it might be like the most the most critical side game of the entire Fight Club so far. Yeah, this is uh, huh? Thinking. Okay, but did the the, the thing that confusing to me is like I, I don't feel like they had to let this come down to sign game but maybe it doesn't maybe you just I don't know do you go back in and just take the damage and roll the twinning uh, I mean it's possible but you, you'd have to spend at least two credits to trash this Adrian so it's going to be a lot of damage you're eating like damn it's a lot of damage <clears throat> yeah and I don't think there's anything you can simul that helps you here, right? Uh, Unless I mean, you is a regenesis score, you're you're sort of fine to let this happen, like to not do anything else this turn, I guess. Oh, so Tempest Shh. played paid two. Okay, we uh. Are... Oh, this is interesting. Oh, oh shut down. Ah, all right. And this is so, this gives the credits for yeah. You uh, check archives because the only way to lose here is regenesis score. That's very interesting, but oh, I guess no, that's not true. Oh, wait, I, I can't, don't okay, you so lose... here's the thing: if you score the one pointer here, you're threatening to win with a hybrid release score. So exactly, and, and like, for example, get back into HQ next turn. Um, with with the twinning and I, I don't think you can stop it if you if you score the hybrid release they just go for the remotes instead i think so i, I guess the uh the issue here is if let's say server three is a sting and you score out this thing right you go to one card uh are you able to break both atini and anansi oh good question yeah um well Anansi is five. Oh my god, sick. Okay, it is a okay, thing. Let's okay, let's think we... about this now. So Anansi is five. You have to break it. On a teeny, you can let one sub fire. Uh, so you would you would pay one two. You would pay two to boost and two to break. So four plus five. That's nine. Nine. So, so you have I'm enough afraid, credit credit yeah, run. You could just credit credit run and you're. I mean, I would be, I would be shocked that that's I mean, not game. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. All, all really likely to win on the, on that triple access. So I, I mean, that has to be the play, right? Yeah. Uh, but I, well, no, yeah. I mean, you only need to see one, and we're expecting there to be like three agendas in HQ, I think, or more. And but Hermes is gonna bounce one card, so let's say. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. So if you. If you do have, let, let's say you have two non-stealables at this point, you have at least a theoretical chance to survive at this point. Yeah, you have but, it's like um, ten percent or something, but yes, it yeah, is possible. You have, yeah, you have like really bad odds, but it's still possible. I feel so bad for Leopold because he's working so hard. I tried so hard, <laughs> you know. And got so far. In the end, I still got hit by twinning. Yeah, it's, 
And this is, um, yeah, there's so much work involved to just getting to these six points, but this, I, yeah. Yeah. I don't see how the runner could possibly whip this access. And I think, um, I think it's critical that, uh, that D found this line of simul chipping the second safety onto the bottle. Uh, even without the intent to run uh, to run the remote, just I think that's the only line in which you have enough credits to tank, uh, you know, to uh, to go through HQ. Uh, you had to have exactly exactly simul chip shut down, I believe, to get enough credits. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, so of course, uh, okay. So the thing is, uh, we have, we've been talking about this HQ, this HQ multi-access, but there is still the option of uh, running R and D if that's if cable thinks or not cable. Sorry, if D thinks that it's uh, still better odds for uh, for triple access on R and D uh, of like the bottom few cuts of this back hero rather than uh, this this HQ which has been cooking for basically the entire game. Uh, I don't yeah. know what the read is on that. Uh, but either way, start with clicking for at least a couple of credits. I, th I feel like the read has to be that there's a lot of agendas in HQ. Uh, but even if like, even if there is, even if there is four agendas in HQ, that still leaves four in R&D. So like your odds of winning on both servers is extremely high. Yes. Uh, okay, we're gonna click one draw. Oh, actually, sorry, I'm I'm miscalculating that. It's bacterial yes. picks up lots, so it's it's gonna be five agendas left in total. Okay. Yeah. So if there if there is actually four in HQ, that means there's only one left in R and D. Yeah, there are six agendas. Uh, wait, my math is right. There are six agendas here somewhere. Wait on the uh -huh. Nazi? on hmm. a Nazi. Wait, hold up. Well, uh, it's, it's I guess it's the same logic. It's just. Worth yeah, two yeah. credits, and then you just go HQ, and this is unbelievably likely to close. Yeah, so this is four credits to pump. And it is credit perfect to go in. Uh, is that right? Oh no, it's not credit perfect. You you do take one net damage, but it's fine. And we'll see, we'll see, like if Tempest luck uh, to get to this point. <laughs> if it does whiff, it would be a score up and a flat line at once. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, vanishingly unlikely, but who knows at this point? Yeah, this, is, this will be the first HQ access all game. Seeing oh, three cards, oh, that's, oh, that's the first yeah. back to you. There we go. G G. Oh, one hundred and twenty-three minutes exactly. I was counting that. I was looking yeah. at the timer. It's absolutely crazy. I, I like that looked so rough for the core of like all game. But shout out to Leopold for turning it into uh, a real game. Yeah, and, extremely uh, competitive. Yeah, but also really well played to to D. Um, yeah, not not uh, not letting this one uh, slip uh, through their fingers. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And wow, wow okay. What Congratulations. A game. <laughs> Congratulations to SBT for taking down the first Fight Club. Uh, commiserations, of course, to Unbend and uh, Unbend and Company. Uh, yeah, this has been a. This was a pretty incredible finals. I can't wait for the vote to come up of this uh, for this one. Uh, yeah, congrats to to SPT. Really well played. Really well prepared. Yeah, uh, yeah excellent, excellent, uh, excellent match for sure. Uh, and yeah, I think. Uh, it's just about time. I hope Axu is. I hope Axu is still around because uh, someone's <laughs> gonna close the stream. It ain't gonna be me. No, I went to sleep yeah. already. <laughs> well, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna peace out. It was. It was nice. Uh, it was really nice to join for for the commentary. Uh, yeah. yeah. So thanks for letting me join. Yeah. And, uh, thanks uh, for saying ex uh, excellent commentary, of course. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you, thanks you, for you your boss holding them, holding the fort down. <laughs> I guess I, I don't know my ADHD kicked in at some point. 
and you but, started yeah. running ads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. Yeah, it was a pleasure uh, commentating with you guys. So, um, uh, of course. Yeah. See you around. Yeah, take, take care. Yeah, see take you care. all. I think we're still getting both of the players, uh, both of the captains of both teams, still on the mic at some point. All right, we're going to get interviews. Oh, yeah. So don't go in anywhere yet. I can. I am not going anywhere. My uh, my food is still on the way. Don't worry about it. I just how, how do I fill the time between this? I think. Yeah. Anybody in chat uh, have good interview questions I can ask? Like, how did you prepare? How do, how does it feel? I, I I don't know. I don't know if uh, it's. We should be discussing interview questions on stream when they're probably listening to us. You know, uh, I, I, how, I, it depends on how like spontaneous you want it to be. And uh, so, just to confirm, we will be getting uh, interviews with both uh, both team captains. Is that correct? Yeah, it should be at the same time. At, at the same time, or just or like in order? I think. I guess it makes more sense to do a group interview. Yeah, I think Jan Tuna and Tempest are joining the chat soonish at least. All right. That seems yeah, it seems pretty hype. All right, so uh, it just give us one moment to confirm that uh, both players will be joining chat. Uh, let me see. Mm. I think both players have the commenter role at least in the Discord. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I can take this small moment here and thank thank everybody from bottom of, my, bottom of my heart from actually joining and playing and watching and helping me commentate and everything it's pretty <laughs> so sick to be able to do stuff like this and organize things i think at the start of the thing i really did not expect this to turn into such a big thing uh, like i thought that there would be like maximum eight teams joining us like yeah but we ended up having like what 20 something almost 30 almost 30 teams correct yeah, like huge. 29. Yeah, 29 teams. Yeah, 20, 20, to be exact, yes. Uh, yeah. Axwell over here, uh, I don't know if I have anything more to say that I, I also exist, but <laughs> thank you so much for everybody. It has been a blast, and this hasn't been the best or easiest spring of my life, but uh, running the Fight Club and uh, staying connected with all the great people of Netrunner community has definitely been one of the supporting things uh, this year. So, yeah, it has been a blast and thanks for the, from the bottom of my heart as well. Or how did you say it, Axel? <laughs> Something uh, like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I, I hope uh, we'll uh, see each other uh, online and hopefully also live uh, going forward. I need to hop off from uh, the Discord now, but all the best and uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, I basically couldn't have done this without the actual PS. He did like such a. Yeah, huge I mean, amazing. especially the first few rounds, I think uh, was a little bit rough when you know we didn't really. I mean, nobody could have you know, anticipated the scale of this event, and I mean, there were so many matchups and so many lists to compile, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think. Uh, so yeah, huge, huge props, you know, for coordinating all of that, and I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of paperwork, but you know. Uh, you all got it done and you know eventually figured out the system and I think us as the players as well uh, figured out you know what's the best way to to do it in like the most convenient fashion so as not to uh, not to put any like unnecessary stress uh, on the organizers as well uh, yeah and I, I think uh while while i'm while i'm here while we're here mm -hmm. i guess we should uh, i i do want to shout out specifically as well to game of game of droids uh who uh who was running who ran two rounds of the lower bracket as well oh yeah 
yeah, I, I don't know uh, if SBT or Adman is aware of this because te <laughs> technically it's a secret lower bracket, the Valhalla bracket, which you're only supposed to have access to if you uh, if you lose. Uh, but yeah, Game of Thrones uh, ran two, ro two rounds of the lower bracket and uh, I guess thanks to everyone, uh, like all the teams who decided to keep on playing even after losing in the, losing in the main event, uh, that was uh, good fun as well. Like just getting more of the, getting to experience more of the, the, um, this particular to team tournament format, just being able to, you know, pick different factions and different decks and going through like the deck selection and deck dropping process is um, was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I say, I mean, I think I speak for everyone, but I, I think me personally as well, since I, uh, I did play like two rounds of it, as I, as I said, and uh, I mean, thanks to all my opponents, uh, specifically, uh, it was uh, PSI Gang as well as Free Drago. Uh, shout out, uh, shout out to y'all. Uh, those were excellent matches. Yeah, I really hope that I can organize the, this again sometime in the yeah. future. I feel like this is a thing that I really want there to exist, something like this. Yeah, I mean, uh, now it's, I mean, we are going into April right now. Uh, yeah, and of course, it will, R, be a while. R, R, it will be a while before yeah, it happens again. It's dropped, Continental's coming up in a couple of months. Uh, do you see? Do you foresee anything going on like in between that, or do you think like the next, the next like coordinated, uh, big event will be, uh, like after Continuals, maybe sometime in July? Is that is that more realistic? Yeah, I can I can't promise anything. I thought like maybe making it a yearly thing, maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. I I, I think, think it's, it's it's important like not to get people to burn out too quickly. Yeah, I think it's better like. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, or something like that. Oh yeah, I can totally see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not pr uh, promising anything, but I'm hoping that I can organize this again. Maybe next time have a like real group round or like pools, and not have like just double elimination and communicate better with like just casual watchers and. There are things I can work on, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think. Yeah. I think everyone. I mean. I mean. Uh, Fifty million euro price pool aside, I think everyone is very happy with, uh, with the way this went down. You know. But let's see here. Uh... Now, do we? Yes. So let us see if we can get ahead with this alleged interview. Uh, do we have people here in chat? Yeah, I, think... I think Tuno was ready, but Tempest had something to check uh, up on. Uh, I mean, we can probably just get started uh, with the winner interview first. Uh, if you want to start that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, is that saying yes? Some summer is national season, so yes. Um, people will probably be uh, doing some traveling, I expect. Uh, so maybe, maybe not the best timing. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, if anyone has uh, any uh, cool ideas for cool ideas for like new tournament formats or like some team stuff, uh, I'm sure that. Uh, well, some. Well, I was going to say I, I was going to say myself, but that's def definitely not myself. Someone is going to be more than happy to uh, to get it organized. And who do we have here? Hello. Hello. Hey. <laughs> hey. Congrats! Uh, I mean, first off, uh, congratulations on winning uh, Fight Club Twenty Twenty Four. Thank uh, you. It wasn't really me. Well, you did go. You did go one one in event. I split. Yes. Yeah, you, you helped. You helped. <laughs> Splitting is enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I Thank guess you. first off, um, I guess we should ask, how does it feel winning uh, such a long multi month event? Winning such a well, it uh, it feels nice. Uh, I feel like we had our strokes of luck. 
during the, the whole tournament. We had a buy in round one, and then we we got some a couple of quite lucky games. And I think among like lucky and unlucky occurrences, uh, we also maybe got uh, a bit of luck during the finals as well. But uh, it was really good. Like uh, we decided to form as. SBT for Fight Club kind of as a meme, at least <laughs> when I when I suggested this to other members of SBT, it was meant to be kind of a meme on my part. And then I saw that others, especially D, were te- like decided to take it a lot more seriously. So ultimately, we ended up, uh, especially for the finals, preparing quite seriously. So that was fun. Yeah. All what right. Was, all what right. was your preparation like for that round? Did you actually like? Test together or like brew decks together, or did any, everybody bring uh, we, what they liked? Kind we of? tested a fair bit. We didn't test much uh, within each other, but of course we like we also had our separate testing groups to mm-hmm. test with. So we did some of that, but mostly together we did like for each round we did like a, a, a voice call where we would look at who the opponents were, what they had played in previous rounds, what they played in general, and whether there's some kind of pattern to what they played that we can exploit. Because that's a, that's a thing you can do for Fight Club that can, you can't really do in other kinds of tournaments. So, for example, in our first round, we were like, it looks our opponents tend to play like Rashi scoring decks. So I put Doofy, my Arisana, and it worked. Um, and yeah, we just sat like for an hour or two, like looking at lists and and debating lots a little bit. Um, it ended up working. For, for these finals, it was a bit more difficult it was very different because it was a new meta like previously we were like oh we know what the good decks are like uh we're going to try and make the right meta calls and pick things that we can think we can play well and for this one it was just like okay what has what does everyone have that they can bring to the table Mm -hmm. um and so it was a bunch of different things that different people had developed oh that's very cool um okay so I guess uh, my next question is: uh, You did have quite a journey to get here, even through, uh, even after considering the first round by. Uh, are there any particular moments that stood out to you uh, over your three? I believe it was three rounds against uh, other teams, or uh, yes. what was like a particularly uh, difficult match for you? It's been so long. Uh, <laughs> uh... Yeah, like, I, I prepared so intensely for this round that I actually have to go and look. Like, n- no offense to any of my previous opponents, but I literally don't remember any of the matches I played. I think I played the, the Arisana um, against our Plus game that I played with um, the one with Doof. That was really fun, actually. Because um, I thought it was a pretty disadvantaged matchup. And then I had to take some very weird lines during the game and ended up in a situation where like the, I, I was able to like the, I was I like one credit perfect or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I think I do recall casting that match. Um, yeah, I, I don't I did, can't remember what cards I played really. I think I forgot. Sorry, I, I it, it's all kind of a blur to me because it's it's all in the past meta, and so I mentally file it away when rotation happens. Yeah, that's uh, that's 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 entirely fair. Uh, and I guess uh, one more question I have is: so you did have a uh, you did have. Uh, a, a little bit of a thing with the rest of SBT in your last round where uh, you all uh, put in, uh, went, went under uh, Holoman's Smurfs. So uh, get to, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Whose idea was it? And uh, like, uh, what was like the what was like the thinking behind it? And does this mean we're going to get a Holoman ban? Uh, let me, let me see who, who had this idea. Uh, I think it. I think it was uh, the like we we had like we we developed like three decks and both of them had Oloman in them and they were pretty strong and I think at the point we were looking for the fourth deck and we kind of just went with at this point to let let's play Oloman in one of our decks and and yeah, it we, seems to have worked out yeah. Uh, yeah, let's let's not play a completely meme deck just to put Holoman in it, but 
Uh, let's just find something that is true. Let's, let's not play Grudge, let's play like Rush Up. Um, and then, yeah, uh, someone decided that we had to have like theme Smurfs. And uh, this seemed to be a good idea. Yeah, it ended up working out. Yeah. And so, is uh, what so what what does this tell us about you know Holoman's longevity going oh, into right. the rest of? I mean, I cannot really Holo make I cannot really make official much much yeah, very in the way of now. official statements right now. Uh, I can tell you that there is no balance coming out in like the next two weeks. Like, ah, uh, and there is no imminent, <laughs> there is no imminent balance. Uh, my personal opinion, which is not the opinion of the rest of SBT, is that Holoman is very strong. Um, and like, I would be surprised if he survived for the rest of his natural lifespan. Okay. But also okay. we have a lot of time to see like if people slot more pinholes, uh, like it, it's a card that if the opponent has counter play for it, can like, they can put you in really, really awkward spots. Um, like, I, I think that it's a card that has a lot of counter play against it. And also one thing I am liking a lot about it is that even though it's really strong, it hasn't really homogenized the meta towards specific direction because it is still in the tier where like it's flashable in multiple factions and also it's being played in kind of like all core archetypes. So you have core you have corp kill, like combo kills. You have Assas, you have Rush, you have Midrange and Glacier. And normally you will think, oh, if this card is played everywhere. Um, that's terrible. But to me, it's more like... It's like Rashida. Yeah, it's the mark of a well-designed card, right? I guess, yes. Like, it, it doesn't really make it a Glacier meta because it printed a strong Glacier card or something. It actually mm -hmm. does go everywhere. The, the only thing I'm still waiting for, like, to happen is some, for someone to build a strong Isuak deck. I think Tempest may be the one who to is, make is it a whack work. or is a crack you know, of which... find out next week yeah so yeah next um, week. Well, yeah, welcome tempest uh hello thanks, uh, thanks for agreeing to this interview as well um My... how are you feeling i'm so tired Whew, two two hours who who allowed this like who said it's okay to play for no I'm... thank you all for being so patient with that game i want to say gg and well played because the standard bandless mm -hmm. team brought it. These games were amazing. They were I had so much fun in my last game. Um mm. and it was really it was great, but also like I am exhausted. Like I I didn't get quite enough sleep <laughs> last night. So you know it's a classic Netrunner event, post event fatigue, I think. But yeah, I, think it's, I think it's the mark of a very good game where after playing it for an appropriate amount of time, you're actually tired and you don't want to play anymore. Like, yeah, it, um, it, it kind of shows that you don't you put all your head into it, right? Yeah, it really took it really took all you have to give to it. Uh, it was completely yeah. like engrossing and, and captivating, but, and then but, but you're that's done with it for a it's moment. a it's a kind of game that rewards that dedication. I think, right? Yeah. Like that's why we're all here today. Uh, very well played on that last game. Uh, I I had the feeling that you had kind of an awkward draw starting off because you didn't really get like your big guys uh, from company board. So my guess was you're keeping um, Adrian on HQ a lot because you you were flooded early or something like that, and then you kind of start trying to claw back from it. I don't know I, if that's I, I, I want to explain that. But I also want to say, I didn't really draw poorly. D just played it extremely well. Like, mm -hmm. we played eight it games with of this matchup, and I lost seven of them. <clears throat> the one game that I won against Augustus was when I didn't Augustus Caesar him, but I did score two Regenesis into Bacterial. That's like Camilla found that line. It was a very good line. Um, that was the only way. <laughs> I won. I think if I had been a bit better rested, like I made like one or two mistakes where I made a move and then afterwards, like in my game against D where I realized like this was not correct. Like some of the second remote plays and stuff like that. So I think if I had played it a little tighter, it really came down to like 
a one credit difference at the end of the game, right? So like one slight, you know, and that's why what, what I kind of loved about this as well is like he had to go for it at the end there, and it made sense to go for it, you know. But I think it did felt feel tense until the very end. Yeah, like because if they don't go for that, like I am winning the turn after, right? So it was just a, mm. a test of bravery at the very end of the game. Um. But no, so why I kept uh, Adrian on HQ is actually for a very specific purpose, which is one blowout the low stack has, you may notice, is you can window of opportunity on ice, turn it face down, make a run, steal an agenda, bounce the ice that you turn face down mm -hmm. with Hermes. And I did not want that to happen to my Anansi, which is why I kept the Adrian on HQ understandably yeah. on the turns where i wasn't pushing something in the remote and then like towards like the later points like, i was kind of like i prefer playing the never advanced game in the remote like actually like the one war with tracker that you know forced like the last window of opportunity to be used mm -hmm. on the boto in the remote uh even though it conferred no actual benefit of being a war with tracker it was still something they had to run yeah Yeah, I, I think I, uh, I, mean, I think uh, understandably a lot of people will be uh, will, are, are still thinking about that last game. But I mean, can we talk a little bit about your your first game, your runner game against the? Uh, oh, the oh. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's talk about it. I mean, uh, I think I think everyone was pretty shocked. Uh, I mean, in the, I mean ourselves in the commentary booth included. Uh, when I mean, we were all ex we were all so certain, you know. I mean. Uh, Tempest has uh, has the has the bus all in hand, uh, just wait, just waiting for agenda push, right? Or I mean, anything push in the remote, and then, ah, right. and then on that on that on that turn on that turn when he went in full <laughs> advance, and he just went draw, 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 okay. and oh no, oh no, he no, doesn't have it. No. Right, I I did I did not have it, and I think yeah, because like before, I thought pretty long about whether to discard a bank car or one of the two turbines in hand. Because I had a bank car on the board, right? And I was like, I discarded the bank car because I was like, if the bank car hits one of the turbines, like I want to have the other one. So I can still go for the boomerang bank car, the remote play, which would have been better if the ping had been Atomos, but, you know, uh, works the same way, I guess. Um, I think that boomerang play, the, the boomerang play you made was. Uh, pre pretty good. Uh, I mean, getting getting the read that the innermost was the code gate. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, were you su were you surprised that the like the op the opening from D going for the install and double ice? The the opening hard telegraph that the outer ice had to be a ping or a VSA, right? Because like this is yeah. like preparing for the late game when the bank card is down. So it's kind of awkward when the VSA is like further in, and it's much better when it's outside. So actually reflecting on that, like that hard telegraphs VSA rather than ping. Someone said like I played like in in the replay, like someone said I played the Hoshiko game really well. I think actually D played it amazingly. Like that was a incredible conversion of what looked like a bit of a sketchy hand into a win. Uh, my mm -hmm. my opening was absolutely horrible and I mulliganed into like an okay hand, but I didn't get the game plan online. And then like I went for a bit of a greedy play by installing the mob. And then I lost uh, like 20% chance of defining the self-growth program while I was tagged. So Yeah, I mean that was a that was a really spicy uh, click one draw into Click one draw into self growth, uh, <laughs> and, we, and we did uh, we did comment on that in the booth as well. I I, I think the odds were not amazing uh, for D to top to top deck uh, to top deck a self growth at that point, especially considering that uh, you had been getting more hits before that. But I mean, it's, if they go for a draw draw, they have a twenty percent chance to find it. I think, which again was a risk I was willing to take. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, and if you, I want to... Uh, ah, yes. Mm -hmm. I would like to make a shout out, actually. Um, I would like to shout out Jiat because he swept the first round. And we were, like, internally, we were ready to lose the Lu into Ag. Like, I was, I was like, 
you know, like this matchup is really bad. And so the fact, like, the fact I saw it live, and I was just like, I think that got me pumped, because going into this, I kind of thought like we might, we're probably gonna lose the whole thing. Did you really and think it was like, that bad? Yeah, we had a lot of bad matchups. Like we knew that S uh, R plus was awful. I knew the P E loss was really bad. The, the Hoshiko R plus I actually thought was my big favorite. So like I, you know, D just played better. I think that that's what happened there. But um, we had like three really bad matchups, I think, and like not really many actually good ones. So I just figured like on average. A three five is probably gonna happen. But like maybe if we get lucky, like we're gonna manage to tie, and then like we have a chance in the tiebreaker because that's a new matchup. However, Jiat winning the Lu Ag changed the math on all of that because like suddenly like we had one one of the absolutely horrible matchups. So yeah, I'm just I'm really proud of him. Yeah, uh, I mean, could you could you talk could you talk us a bit uh, talk us a bit through the process uh, of like how uh, you managed to get Ziad to uh, to play for you guys on? Uh, I mean, for the for the final because I understand you had some um, yeah. scheduling issues with some of your team, so, team members. So it it begins with Brandon being well. It begins with wanting to play a four person finals, which I think at the time we just weren't sure about. Like. <laughs> The plan was to get an unbanned finals, so like we could just decide what we wanted to do, but like you know, that didn't happen. So um, we we needed to field four players, and out of the five people in unbanned Neurofire, we could only field two. That is myself and Kikai, because um, Richmond said like he didn't like the stress. Like I had to ask him very nicely to go up against NWE, and he obliged me. But like overall, like from the get go, like I, I managed to get him into the Fight Night team. But he was kind of like, I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna play. Odol actually hasn't played since Worlds. I think there was a there was a particularly bad interaction with like an Essa deck that like kind of there was like an angle shooting moment with like sabotage or something, and that and and then the fact that like D lost. The game against Odo by like a deck list error because someone had like missleaved their cards and it wasn't actually D's fault. Like all of that just left. I I'm just like theorizing, you know, it might have been for other reasons. But essentially, Odo hasn't actually played. And so Brandon, the king around whom our entire team has been clustering, is now on vacation. He actually met up with Kikai in the UK yesterday. And oh, yeah. he, because he is traveling, like he wasn't available either. And so uh, we, well, initially we were actually like, maybe we just conceived the whole thing immediately or like let NWE have a shot at it instead. But then I, had a, I was on the phone call with Kikai and he said, no, like, let's do this, you know? And I was like, yeah, like, I, I, love, I love QTM. I have to say it here. Uh, they are an amazing group. All of the groups we're up against are really cool. And so, so we wanted to give them like a good challenge, I think. And Jet has been in the unbound recruitment process for a while anyways. So it was like a good moment to, to bring him on. And so we're like, we asked him if it's okay. And they very nicely obliged us in adding Koga and Jiat to our roster. Okay, that's, that's very nice. Uh, I guess you, I mean, since, since you mentioned it, uh, can you talk a little bit about your matchups, like, uh, going, like leading, uh, leading up to the finals? I mean, you did have to play, uh, all of your rounds. You didn't get any buys. So are there any particular moments that, um, or opponents that, uh, stood out to you? I'll, I'll pass it to Tuno first, maybe, and then I'll, I'll come in cause I'll actually have to think about that. Um, I, I already answered that I, ah, okay. that basically okay, got everything it. that happened um, during my, there's what what stood out the loss is awesome i don't know what everyone's smoking but like these criminal decks i love them like i'm not playing any other decks for the rest of the season like the I, think, looks I think it's fun. really cool ours is very fun but like the window of opportunity blowouts with hermes are actually super cool too like i think yes. i think that was cool and i was happy to go out that way because criminal genteki is my favorite matchup 
Um, what else? Mostly uh, we're just deeply aware of how bad the Lou Aga Fusion matchup is, I think. Uh, although, like, we, we, did, we started finding stuff, like, as time went on. But otherwise, I don't know. Yeah, all right. I mean, uh, just looking at the path that you had to take to get to this point, uh, you all played, uh, of course, in the semifinals against NWE. That was pretty mm -hmm. epic. Uh, and then previously it was uh, Virginia Biotech, uh, Sebastian Case, Ooh. Sebastian Case Tech, who, uh, who I can't remember how that exactly went down, but I do, as you, of course, of course, you all won that. that uh, and then that a few went more down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, how I mean, how was it like? How was it like? Uh, taking out your, team, your teammate. I was so proud of Sebastian. Like, because, like, he managed to tie with, like, in the last meta, like, Anarch was your premium runner slot. Like, you really had to be, like, you know, thoughtful about how you used that, I think. Like, do you play Mulch? Do you play Lu? Do you play Rekoshiko? Playing Essa, like, as cool as this identity is, um, became kind of tricky, for example. Um, and what Sebastian managed to do is he managed to tie Brandon, like even going into it, the King was like, and the King is our ace, like, you know, throughout. So it's a shame we weren't able to bring him on today, but he's been very helpful in the process nonetheless. So, um, Sebastian managed to tie the King, like even the matchup expectations, and he used Shaper instead of Anarch to do that while also making sure that his teammates were up to speed and like able to contest us because these were relatively newer players or inexperienced players. So I think he's doing amazing. I love his creativity as always. Um, it's an unfortunate thing that Isuak died turn two to the Doom Blade that is the version of Funs as a one-off, but like, what can you do? Um, what can you yeah. <laughs> it was, it was good. We, I earned a lot of respect for Sebastian because he's been kind of my student and now he's kind of your student, Jai, right? Like he's now over at tiebreakers. So like, uh, come Sebastian, on Sebastian's kind of saying he's nobody's student at this point, you know, like he will, he will <laughs> concoct the perfect 74 card of and ruin people, <laughs> but more power to him. I mean, I mean, all I wanted to say was, well, th thanks for, thanks for avenging uh, my team's ignominious uh, round one <laughs> defeat against Sebastian. I thought you were gonna win that. Like I was like, they have Kira, I, they have Jai, they have Iron Fox. Like these people are good, you know. Like I was. Yeah, I, I know we we destroyed a lot of bracket predictions just from the round one. Just, you know, apologies for that. Yeah, you were definitely uh, one of my most hyped uh, teams for for Fight Club. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes you know, sometimes we are not just just not feeling it, and you know. Uh, I mean, not everyone. Not everyone can be uh, at their help, like you know, career high point forever. Uh, so it's just that's just how it goes. And I think uh, it's important, you know, to take uh, to take the time off that you need uh, to I don't know, recharge your recharge your batteries and then get uh, get back, uh, you know, get back into shape in time for like the important things in this season. And I mean, as fun as. As fun as Fight Club is, I mean, there's no real stakes involved other than bragging rights, right? And uh, going there into big bragging rights. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is true. That is and, true, and, that's and not... banning rights, banning rights too. Yes, we, and... yeah, we have managed to keep our ability to ban cards <laughs> for one still. <laughs> yes, and and let's not forget the 50 million euro prize pool. Uh, very important. That, that's gonna happen when, when I start doing the Olympic Netrunner Championships. You know, you're gonna have to wait a little bit for that. But um, I have one more reflection actually, which is a deep gratitude to QTM as our first round opponents as well. Which is a oh, shame, yeah. like they, they got knocked out, but they got really close. Like it, it came down to you know, it's it was a free two, yeah. And exactly. in fact, uh, I saw Cord Gang was just expressing. Uh, we're just expressing their, you know, their gratitude to, uh, to D for beating you. Nice. Because there was still like a lot of, there were a lot of revengeful feelings in the air. Still. Oh, the, this was this was and grudge just... loss. This is this is loss. Very good. I love it. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I, I think there was still. 
<laughs> I think we, we finally may have gotten a moment of closure with this match. Yeah, and it, it also almost marks like the end of unbound dominance, I think. Like the, the last two world championships were like, you know, kind of affected by us. But I think now like these all these new testing groups are bubbling up and we're about to like we have already entered a very exciting time, but really I think like this is where Netrunner historians will say like this is where Unbound stopped for a bit, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, it's a moment of restructuring, from what I understand. And I'm very curious to see, like, whether the focus of the, like, whether the way the group works changes, whether you start exploring new things you hadn't before, whether you mm -hmm. stop playing prison. I, I'm not sure that will ever happen. Like, we have a way of looking at this game. Um, you know, we we aren't actually trying to win, like ever. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I, I'm not. I'm not at liberty to to talk any more about this. For, for You're trying to technical, technical difficulties. You know, for people that <laughs> claim to not be not be trying to win, you are kind of pretty good at it. Uh, no, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. That, listen, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not saying whatever. Don't worry about. It. Don't worry. About it. <laughs> Cut You're the trying video. to make your opponent's ability to win vanish. Um, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not allowed to say it yet. But one day, I would love to share our internal documents with the whole world. I think. That would be so great. Yes. And no, I, I just also wanted to say thank you to KTM because like getting the challenge in the first round meant like we had to hit the ground running, which I think like some teams might have had an easier round one. And then like going into the next round or like some of them even had a buy and then like, you know, they may not be fully familiar with the fight club format and everything yet. And like being like challenged in that way, uh, my game against court gang, like I really had to learn how to pilot Chinteki like I had never done before. I think. Wait, so are you saying it's court gang we have to blame for having this two hour final game? Um, no, not at all. No, it's a different was, kind of it, it was an Atea game, you know, okay, it's okay. different. Wholesome Jinteki Glacier, like, like tributary ag infusion, you know? This is an amazing uh, PE list, by the way. Um, I, I, I was a bit sad, I guess, to not see front company ever being rezzed. Do you think yeah. it's because the matchup just doesn't lend itself to it? Or precisely, is it just... precisely. Okay. This, this loss has a lot of good tools to deal with the threats we're putting out. Um, front company is a, it's a prison card, right? Like once once we get going, like we really like use front company to make everything worse because like who wants to trash a front company that has a Warwick tracker on it? Um, but it's also a bit of a relic because like I, I initially started with a very acid PE list um, and then I cut a lot of the assets like cohort guidance protocol and federal fundraising. And I think, and I added some economy in the form of like hedge fund and Hansei review. And I probably should have tested that a bit more because this list might have been a bit undercooked, but it was still a really fun like game and matchup. And it seems like D was also saying they were memeing. So like, you know, it all worked out in there. Uh, just I, and I don't to... think they were memeing, what was no, memeing no. There, that hard? Like... I right. think we, we were like, all creams are bad right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to try and find something that oh. has one losing matchup, but at least can do really well sometimes. Yeah. Um, what, what was the losing matchup for loss? I think most asset attacks. Got it. I, yeah. Well, you have the two doof, two miss bones, but that may not be enough, right? Like you're playing off of the ice. That makes sense. Um, so mm -hmm. I should have, I should have played more assets. Is what you're telling me. Damn. Uh, you you couldn't have known, but maybe, yeah. No, of course. Although I did have a hard read that D was gonna play two hammer, actually. So like that, at least I was very aware of. I didn't really let that affect my my decision much. I think. Mm -hmm. But I did know that. And you knew there was going to be molds around, so Hammer was going to be a good card, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that just makes sense. But 
in terms of the deck building process, like I fell in love with the Steve list Koga builds. I think like the, the asset matchup is tougher than we thought, but like the Glacier matchup is usually not mm. very good for Glacier. Like the, that list is extremely cool. Yeah, it needs I, to th get I think Crew Charm is very bad for Glacier. Yeah, Crew Charm, but like five Crew, right? Like, like Steve has five copies mm -hmm. of Crew. Yeah. Um, uh, when I saw the list, I was like, this doesn't make a lot of sense to me. <laughs> right. But I, it's, it's like th there is this thing with Koga where he will always build decks that only he can play yeah. optimally. Yeah. Um, and they're often very good, but also I, I think after playing with him for years, sometimes the list, like, it, it, it's not 100% guaranteed that it would actually be good. Like, sometimes he tries something that is very passionate about it, and he will keep trying with yeah. it, even though it doesn't really pan out in the end. And so we tried it, we tested the matchup, and we were like, this is not working. Like, this, this team just <laughs> doesn't get an economy yeah. online. And I was a bit scared going into this match, because I didn't know what kind of place it was. Like, I didn't know if it was going to work in a way that we didn't really foresee. Um, yeah, so that, that was scary. Uh, but I I kind of had a plan. Like, my the, the way I could conceptualize the deck is this deck works if it can clear HQ and run HQ repeatedly. So I'm just going to put Skunk on HQ and keep HQ double ice as much as I can. And that seems to kind of work. I think that's very correct. Um, and that's a very good like synthesis, I think, of what the deck is trying to do as well. Just if you can take that away, I think that is probably what helped you win. Because I love the, the way you kept like using the Gatekeeper and the Ablative and the Mavirus and the Skunk. And uh, yeah, Ablative Mavirus was very silly. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, 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 the Compilation Mavirus was, was quite cute. Right. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think we've taken uh, more than enough of both of your time, and uh, of course, thank you all, thank you to both of you for you know uh, agreeing to this like post Wait. post event interview and uh, sharing so many of your thoughts with us. Uh, I guess uh, yes. Come to come to Bergamo. Come to EMEA. Come EA. to Bergamo. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I'm, yes. I'm so going, going to EMEA. Nice yes. going. Tempest is going. Yeah. I think everybody cool yeah, so, in Europe will be there. Yeah, so, I mean, I guess uh, the, 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 final, the, the, the final thing that we have to ask is, do you have any, do you have any predictions for like, the rest or you know, the upcoming weeks of this RWR season going into uh, going to the next few events, going into... Uh, continental season in a few months? That's a good question. Uh, I'll start. I, I think um, people are going to play more Hammer. Uh -huh. uh, there's going to be more pinholes because people are going to find out that Hollow Man is really good and you need to have something against it. And I'm not sure what kind of solution players will find to um, Crew plus Devil Charm because we have played some games with that kind of deck. It's still, it's still not exactly clear to us exactly how you should solve the matchup, like what, what kind of thing hates it. And I'm sure Tempus will say that Warrior Tracker is very good and maybe that's the way. Oh, I didn't even think of it. If there are, if there I didn't are more. even think of it. But now that you mentioned it, like that could be hard. Like we should try that. Um, um, no, I think actually one angle of attack on crew is that it does cost four credits to fully realize. Like you have to install it for two and then use it for two. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think I was thinking of playing like a pure asset, like two list, I think, where I just don't have any eyes. So like, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Awesome. I'll leave that up. I'll leave that to the, to the Netrunner heroes of tomorrow, you know, I am now. I think we've gotten to a place where there's not enough loot dominant that players just don't play assets out of principle. Yeah. So that's possible. It's something people could do. But competitive players might still shy away from a deck that will just outright lose to another deck in the middle. Mm hmm. We'll see. We have yeah. a bunch of CEOs coming up. There's an 
and a NPC Toronto, if I'm not mistaken, this like next week. We have a CEO in Turin where there's going to be me and Koga and a bunch of other very good players. Um, and then I don't know what's next, but a bunch of stuff continuing to happen until uh, continental season in June. Yeah, and I think everyone's going to be looking forward to that as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to national season as well. Like, I think that's going to be very fun this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I think uh, I've taken up more than enough of your time. Uh, thanks, both of you, for uh, uh, staying and talking so long. And I think um, purely coincidentally, uh, my burrito my burrito has just um, just arrived, so uh, uh, I will not be going hungry tonight. Thanks to everybody. Stay hydrated. <laughs> But I have just one more an announcement to make on the actual winner of Fight Club. Congratulations to Sauce for actually calling out 65 points on Cold Lava's li prediction list for the Fight Club tournament. Wow. Oh, good job, Sauce. Sauce winning it. Right. Axwell wow. second, Xiat third. And. <laughs> I was so close. If Anban just wins, I'm second. Wait, you were second? Yeah, sorry, sorry, Axel. Axel Wheeler was <laughs> second. No 50 million for you this year. Yeah, almost. But congratulations uh, so, for Sauce for actually winning Fight Club. Mm -hmm. All right. See, you, see well, you everybody in future. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Play Netrunner. Always Play be running or something. Yeah, maybe <laughs> always, running. Yeah. always be running. Yeah. Bye bye. Thanks, all. Uh, thank you for joining. <laughs>